Welcome back to your WEC 23 regionals. We've got... Um, oh, my mic's... Uh, my um, camera's just gone. Nevertheless, we've got a, a Cyclops Tiddler uh, in uh, as I'll work this out. Don't worry about it, guys. Yeah, just... Okay. Uh, that, that's good timing, right? Amazing way to start yeah, the show. Great timing. Okay, we have, here we have I go. Back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Sh should I do that all over again? Welcome back to your WEC 23 regionals, everybody. Uh, we've got uh, four potential best of ones and best of threes here today. Uh, we start off in this female division. Yeah, interesting enough. But uh, I think the first opening games, of course, we're going to see a lot of disparity between the two. Yesterday was the first day. Uh, I, of course, wasn't there for it. But, you know, I'm familiar with these individual players. But when it comes to this first game, Portugal versus Iceland. Uh, I feel like this is just going to be a stomp considering uh, what the results were yesterday. Yeah, Portugal haven't really been challenged yet. They uh, played a best of one yesterday on Mirage, and we really didn't get a flavor for how good they really were. They 16 won in that particular map. It was looking like a 16-0 from the very start. They, uh, their opponents just able to steal one round away almost miraculously. Um, and we don't think that they're going to be necessarily challenged in, in, in this map on Vertigo either. They're obviously the much better team. They've got loads of experience coming into this tournament. They're one of the favorites. Uh, three particular players, I'm sure that We'll see the rosters in just a minute um, who are used to playing in ESL Impact, having a real big impact in that tournament and in that series of tournaments even. And, and in this one as well, they're, they're kind of one of the favorites. That being said, we've only got one spot um, for the female division to actually give away here, here this week. Yeah, that's the part that's pretty hard because a lot of the talent is spread around the teams because most of these you know, ESL Impact squads that compete internationally are like spread across or like are mostly international teams. So when we see the talent here in Europe, the players are really spread across. Like we have, you know, the former teammates of the Portuguese core that play for uh, Big Equipa. You know, they're in the Spanish squad and of course they played uh, each other yesterday and it was a 16-13 uh, victory out from Portugal. A game of pretty fine margins, uh, if you'd ask me. And then we look at, you know, the squads like Sweden, you know, Denmark, you have the Copenhagen Flame Shield Maidens, but then they had a bit of a roster change. So you have players moving to Gitoya. It's really hectic. You know, this is the first time, you know, we've really seen an international, you know, female tournament like this with uh, such a high, high, such a high, you know, you know, range and high quality amount of players. But here's the Portugal lineup, A to D7 and Zana. Of course, that's your... Um, Big Akipa, you know, core, but then the other players, Lel player and Dali, they're just there, you know, to fill in the void because the rest of the Big Akipa squad, you know, you know, they have a Brazilian player and they have a Spanish player. So, you know, I don't think it's really too much of a problem. It doesn't make much of a difference here because Portugal, we saw it yesterday, they know what to do and there's nothing much more to say. You know, they're miles above, you know, the squad of Iceland, in my opinion. Yeah, they're able to really easily beat down these underdog teams. Uh, and, and that's just what we're expecting in teeing up here for this Iceland series. Uh, that Portugal team yesterday um, definitely showed some promise on Mirage, right? Like, like they're a good team. They know how to hit their shots. They're good when uh, the maps actually go really scrimmy. Um, but I don't know if this is necessarily going to be uh, too much of an, uh, an interesting series. We haven't seen Iceland uh, here on the mainstream yet, though. Yeah, we haven't, but you know, we can really judge because, you know, they've both shared a common opponent in that sense. And it was like 16-1. So in that sense, we can basically predict it. And also, you know, this lineup, Enika, Tanya, the Coffee Queen, Jiva, Katzen, you know, these aren't players that really compete often. You know, Iceland is just one of those isolated regions, like we were saying. They have lots of LAN experience because they can't really play with anyone outside of Iceland. Uh, the servers, you know, they're in between North America and Europe. Can't really do much. And it seems like they've done a bit of homework. They instantly banned out Ancient knowing, well, I don't know if it was, you know, on purpose, but, you know, banning out Ancient was probably their best move because Portugal are really good lineup on Ancient. They've done damage and it's one of their maps that they take pretty well, even up against your Navi Javelins, your, uh, your Nigma Galaxy who have been winning all uh, ESL Impact Finals. They've been able to beat them consistently on that map. So... Probably the best course of action, though, in my opinion, for Iceland was to play Mirage. Just to lessen that damage. Because I feel like going into Vertigo, that's also a really good map that this uh, big Keeper lineup play. And what I see here is, 
just a slower and more painful death rather than Mirage, where the rounds would just be done really quickly. Yeah, I'm almost feeling like it doesn't even really matter what map they, they come into uh, this series playing, right? Like, this is the best of one, and they're playing one of the favorites here in this tournament. Obviously, beating uh, one of the favorites yesterday, having that um that that really sort of close matchup and i don't know if it necessarily matters whether they go to an inferno a mirage a vertigo i feel like it's all going to be the same spice on the server right yeah that's what i was saying you know mirage will just be like i said they could do some damage on it if they're trying to win i would say they would go for Mirage, unless vertigo is a map that they play pretty well it's their most confident map but you know when we see the fact that portugal are just miles ahead that the common opponent, you know, Spain beating them 16 to 1. It doesn't really look that great. That's what I was saying. Like, if you wanted to go win yeah. and you don't really care about map, we'll just go for Mirage. Because I feel like Vertigo is a map control heavy map. And the only difference that I'll be expecting is that these rounds will start off slower, but ultimately end in the same result, which is going to be, a, you know, Portugal victory. Maybe a few rounds here from Ice, from Ice and if they're able to catch them off, but like I said, I'm not going to see anything different. But, you know, this always... I don't think their goal here is really to win out, you know, get the qualification spot. Even even some of the upper echelon of teams here in this tournament, you know, I don't think they'll be vying for that spot. There's so many different teams that could easily take it, but there's only one spot in between them. And I think Aizen are completely aware of that. They're probably just here to have some fun, play some high-level Counter-Strike, and uh, see what they can do in the server. Yeah, get some experience right against some of the best teams in the field, some of the best players in the field. It's Portugal starting on the CT side here, and Zanath already behind the sandbags where she might not get checked here. Everybody back turned, so um, kills could come through really readily. Yeah, but look at this position, and sandbags is completely overlooked. And Zana, she doesn't even have to do much, you know, it's just an absolute destruction here. They did plenty of damage, but not enough to warrant the frags. And Portugal just out of the gates, holding it down. The A bomb site closed. Not able to be taken by Iceland. They got there, but completely dismantled. Yeah, no, nothing really interesting whatsoever. The bomb plant means that they're forced onto pistols in this one. Uh, we've seen a lot of force buying. Uh, less in the female division, more in the male division. Uh, nevertheless, that's not the case here in round number two. Team Iceland eating the full eco. And I don't think this is going to be too much of an interesting round either. They walk into these SMGs. There's a Famous in the mix as well. And even the Incense just to hold them at bay. So Portugal playing this one really safely, really confidently. Deciding they don't want to lose early players to these pistols. They know how weird these rounds can be. A little bit of team damage there on no player. But it's not going to matter nonetheless. Easy round, Portugal. Yeah, like we said here, we're going to see a technical pause actually out here from Ison, I'm assuming, because it's 15 minutes. But um, yeah, it's just Portugal really are just levels above Ison clearly when they start, even on an eco. A lot of teams wouldn't do that. We've seen ecos in other tournaments in more level, in more level matchups, and we never really see teams dismantle egos like that there's always going to be one or two or even if they make it clean there's going to be a bit of damage but portugal they just ran in get got every single frag and they seem to know every position that i said we're going to take uh, so they're, so they're just off to the races here they're they're playing a confident game and they want to uh they want to make things you know fast it seems playing a really safe game of kind of strike as well uh, deciding that they don't want to lose any players, no rifles dropping, all five surviving means the money is building here on the T side, in the CT side. Um, yeah, on this terraced half, uh, they're able to respond back with this Mac 10 rush. This is something that we don't see often. Uh, maybe um, a bit of a telltale sign of what we're about to see this map. Five Mac 10s. I can't remember the last time that I first saw a team save into. Uh, trying this tactic. It's been uh, dismantled though. The first three and four kills going Portugal's way is they take them all down. But that's a, a very different round, Tiddler. That wasn't even that bad for Iceland. That was pretty good. You know, they executed pretty well into the bomb side. It's just that they weren't hitting their shots. You could see dancing around, the damage was there, but they spent way too long trying to get those kills. And 
I don't think they even got any at the end. Maybe one, but yeah, one. Uh, it was just, uh, but but yeah. once those smokes go down, right? Like you need to plant the bomb behind it. Otherwise, um, those smokes are going to be gone. Um, they're not going to be there anymore to provide you the cover to get that C4 down. I have AKs no. in this one. This would ordinarily be like a force buy, a half buy. Not this time. They obviously had the the, the really weird, wacky, wild round three investment. There is a severe lack of a ramp control. They're spending way too much time towards B, and it allows Portugal to really lock down A, and then kind of hedge rotates over towards B. Azana holds down the a ramp side. They're not taking active control of it. That's a bit of a problem. Level player is even going to push on forward, try and get this kill. I feel like this AK is going to be good for this frag. Oh my oh goodness. No. Not, had to get the headshot there. Now it's going to be a lot of pressure here on towards the B bomb side, but I would say more so for the ice inside, running and gunning with the AK, trying to find something. But before you know it, she's left up against three, and uh, I don't see her getting out of this situation. Good angle, M4 should be able to finish after doing the majority of the damage, but the flank is there nonetheless to clean things up there for Portugal. Felt like um, Jiva going down on mid, uh, missing that shot with the AK-47, one that you absolutely have to hit. It's non-negotiable. Uh, that felt like the moment that whole round just fell apart for Iceland. Uh, they no longer had any map presence anywhere, really. That allowed the flank to come through on top of that. And they effectively just got sandwiched there on B. It's 4-0 Portugal. A good confident start, as we spoke about. They don't seem under pressure whatsoever here in the map. No pressure at all. Just pushing on forward. I didn't, you know, there's a few kills that they could have gotten that would shift it around into their favor. But like, he, like we saw, you know, Lel player pushing mid with the MP9 and that AK player. Not even being able to find that frag. It's things like that that are really separating themselves from Portugal as well, even further. So, because, you know, it doesn't even grant them a few kills. And it's just a huge struggle so far. I'm looking to see how they set up into this round. It seems like, again, they completely don't want to go towards the A-Ramp side. Look at how heavy it is towards mid. We all know how A-Ramp is so important on this map, and they just continue to avoid that section of the map. Portugal just lock it down. The rotates are so fast, and... They can't execute onto any bomb sites because they have no control at all. It seems like they put all their forces into one section of the map at a time. Vertigo is the map that you have to have a really solid default towards ramp. It's not happening. Instead, the AK-47 doing the damage and the M4s coming in to clean up the rest. Just chirpy alive. Uh, she's going to fall back into the T-spawn, so staying alive and preserving uh, this round for a couple more moments. They walk into this MAC-10, feed her just one more kill. Have the C4, though, and Portugal haven't been too antsy about getting kills. They haven't been making mistakes. You know that they're the better team in this scenario and just being... Um, yeah, really confident all over the map. Iceland's not doing anything to force any respect either. Last kill comes through. Portugal 5-0. Yeah, these rounds haven't really been close, right? Like, you see the uh, the, the scoreboards. Um, two players, actually, on this Iceland side with zero kills. Everybody else between one and three. Yeah, it's a real struggle. You can see that sometimes they don't even know what to do. You can see Chirpy just holding outside mid as well kind of caught in between two minds is she aggress does she not finally has to give in because obviously saving a mac 10 when your economy isn't all too great isn't the best choice but maybe zana can get overwhelmed through that nade look at the utility usage out from portugal it just stops them in their tracks at least they're able to get two that might be an opening for them the round but heavy damage already inflicted onto this t side and again the flank just not locking down the flank as well. No lurk. There's no lurk present. It's such a struggle. And that is just a distraction for Dali to get both kills and Ada to find absolute closure in the end. It's just a, a severe lack of map control at this point. It, it's not even the frags anymore because, you know, they overwhelmed. They got two Tech 9 kills. They had one player holding the flank that might have been able to get that advantage and sort of overwhelm the rest of the players on A bomb site. Yeah, these sort of non-negotiable Vertigo basics uh, not being followed, the rulebook uh, being kind of thrown out of the window and Portugal are punishing that. 
Uh, I I just l love the the sort of heads up play uh, Portugal are making as well. Like as soon as the flank comes through from one side, Dali's able to peek from the other, and they seem uh, really confident just to wrap up all of these kills. And Iceland only have seven cumulative kills. Make that eight. This Cadvin's gonna find just one more, but still an Empre One S here on ramp to contend with, as this is a bit more of a spread attack. Uh, Portugal have been pushing, peaking, basically at will. Uh, that might no longer be the case, as there is presence elsewhere. Oh, that's a good shot to hit. And uh, to get that kill to Zana as well, but again, the flank already coming through. We'll see if she's fast on the trigger here. Finds the no scope. Now I said have a have found a path here, possibly into the B bomb site. And this is a good playoff from Jiva. She's gonna try and split the rotate and provide a flank. So a double pronged attack here onto the B bomb site. Oh, oh, holding. And there goes Jiva taking her down. Now Dolly in a one versus three. And Jiva has done it. I said getting themselves around here on the T side. And that was a perfectly executed round. You know, the lack of utility towards a ram side. No problem. They got those kills. That up activated they didn't you know pounce upon that first kill they slowed it down got the map control the mid player lurked through and they punished portugal completely that's the big change right they they had map control in that round they had players towards a b and mid uh, and they're able to put heavy pressure on portugal off the back of that maybe portugal just not being aware they, they've not seen uh multi-pronged attacks uh, in the first six rounds it, you have to wait until round seven to see one in this time she is at the bottom of ramp i want to see what what this orp can do here on this t side if it can change any of the momentum at all uh, for the time being enka is held out by the pretty advanced smoke grenade of d7 more spread across the map it seems like they've made a bit of a change but look at this proactive holdout here from the opera and the rifler for portugal and that's the flag spotted as well tana Hit a little bit far off the angle, so she's not going to hit that shot. Going to reposition. Now Molotov going to be good to force them off. But D7 playing a nice off angle that maybe Isa won't expect. They're clearing the wrong angle at the wrong time. I feel like you had to peek together for that situation like you'd usually see. And they're kind of just handing these individual gunfights. And once more, we just see Portugal mowing them down once again. Taking the round by storm, it seems. And uh, yeah, not a single real bit of utility being thrown by Isa. And they don't really know smokes, it seems, on this map. And that's going to be a real problem as we progress because Portugal are going to punish that every single time. D7 also in a really advanced position here to try and clean them up. And they peak in a really isolated fashion, unable to trade onto her. Portugal back to winning ways. It's 7-1 here. They've got the AWP rolling as well. Not that we've really seen much CT AWP presence here in the first sort of six or seven rounds. Uh, but yeah, just look at how D7's playing these, this, this uh, stairs position. Uh, really flawlessly. Remember, if she doesn't spot any presence towards that side of the map, uh, she's going to be pushing uh, from those uh, T stairs. Just give her another sort of 15, 20 seconds. She'll be right behind the ramp. 7 1, though. We'll see here, there's no response from these Molotovs at all by Iceland. They kind of just wait for this sort of utility barrage to subside and then they make their play they make their foot into or they step their foot into the a ramp side you get ready to throw a flash but i don't see this flashing xana at all it's to our right as well easy as ever that bomb also dropped in the middle of the open so xana that's information for her. she's just gonna back away onto the bomb site just burn a bit of time and that smoke gonna be dropped that they're gonna think that she's pushed back onto the a bomb site with that smoke down there jiva has been damaged though. Her mid play isn't going to do that much. It seems like Portugal on lockdown that position. They're going to be so aggressive here. Sana has gotten that first kill. No scopes for the second. And Lel player gets her pick in as well. Jiva, her position is known. She was seen over towards mid. And it seems like she has this on lockdown. I think she was spotted as well. Ada relaying that information here. And it's going to be eight in just a few moments here for Portugal. A slow round, Iceland stuck in the mud on the ramp. They were waiting for an opening pick uh, before they could pounce there, but the rotated already came through. Portugal had just way too many defensive members there. D7 surely is about to climb these stairs and 
uh, finish Jiva off. She's looking the wrong way as well. So side of the head exposed. And oh no, that's awkward. D7 is going to find it regardless. Portugal, another round here. Eight, as you mentioned. Just a just overall good heads up play of that of that A bomb site there. In the AWP to use, I did like the thought process behind throwing down that smoke. Partially a fake uh, to make Iceland think that she had fallen back. Uh, and also to give her an exit route if she misses just one AWP shot. She can jump back through that smoke and uh, back onto A and have a chance of surviving. I see a switch up here from Iceland. Yeah, we talked about this AWP so much. Yeah. Can go again for the peak. This battle, that's a foot spotted as well. D7, that's more information. She's gonna drop a grenade in there. Not quite gonna hit the mark. It's the very bottom right of that pillar. D7 opening up, taking out Katsin, pushing forward. Jiva now, her mid presence gone. And that's a few areas of the map completely taken away from Iceland. So there's only a very few amount of positions that Iceland can really take. So Enik has been taken down and, well, giving her position away here, Tanya, just spraying through wildly. And now it is going to be a bit of a struggle here. Plenty of utility. I've been seeing, you know, Iceland have spent a lot of time, you know, in the early rounds, yet a lot of these players are still brimming with utility. And that's not really a good sight to see. I feel like they need to use it more. You might as well just not bite at that point. You see yeah, her exactly. left all yeah. alone with three bits of utility here, and she's still in towards T spawn, and she's just going to end up dying with it. Yeah, it doesn't feel like they've got a game plan for that utility, right? Like, uh, usually you're going to be using a lot of it towards the A bomb site, even if that's not where your round uh, finishes off. Uh, you're going to be trying to smoke off the AWP being one of those key members, right? Like, we just saw how long a sight line that ct or pad right down into your territory and domain only one flashbang thrown and she was able to dodge it and one portugal a dominant lead here on vertigo basically uh playing to script right like this is how we imagine this map would go yeah and i don't think it was going to go any other way let's just be real here you know uh, like i said i sent like, realistically, their goal here isn't to head to the finals because, like I said, even these teams with some really good players aren't going to be able to get that spot. It's just that the talent in this sort of, you know, bit of Counter-Strike is so sparse that the talent is really spread across all these international teams so that at this point, any team can qualify, you know, at this point. And especially when Iceland don't have... You know, that background that, you know, you're like some Portugal, Spain, Sweden, Denmark have. I don't think it's really realistic to expect anything more than maybe a win or two from from them. Uh, it's just way too difficult. But at least they're able to get started with a frag. They're just going to take proactive control here. They're going to make their way on four. And, and I feel like I predicted this, you know. It's a 9-1 to scoreline, yet, you know, Iceland have started off these rounds pretty slow here, only to just walk into their death after a few moments. They momentarily check the flag. D7 is still here, but no HP on the player who's actually checking, so it's an easy spray down for two. Uh, damage dealt, and Enika finds it, but two more players are actually on the top of the ramp anyway, so they peeked on through and just got in uh, a pretty easy frag in the end here. So double digits found by Portugal, looking to close out the first half uh, in the past few rounds with a bang. Yeah, again, really uh, intelligent from them, right? Like, they're able to respond right off the back of that flank. It gives them all of the information that they require to peek from both angles. And Iceland don't really know where to look. They're getting stuck in these choke points. Uh, that's kind of the big problem of this T side. When they do decide to go uh, towards A, uh, most of the time they're just stuck on ramp. Like, how many times have we even seen them get a bomb down uh, in this half? It's been pretty infrequent. This time... Three pistols heading towards the middle of the map, and they're actually watching the flanks. But this is not a good, um, not not a good fight to take. If you've got um, a Mac 10 or an MP9, uh, you do not want to be holding these really long distance engagements. Yeah, you. If you're gonna hold the flank, you might as well hold it up closer. If you're not even gonna take proactive A ramp control, and if you're not even gonna go peek it. You know, it's just sort of those small you hide around the corner, that, right? Yeah, you hide around the corner. You don't do that. Like like this with the Mac 10. This is sort of angle you want to hold. 
you know, she's not going to get more than one there. But if you want to hold the flank down where there's only going to be one player, you want to hold a nice off angle like how Tanya was holding for Iceland there. But, you know, it's these small little things that Portugal do that Iceland don't that really separate them mostly. And that utility usage. Once we see Portugal flip over to that T side, I know it's going to be for a short time. I don't even know if they're going to if we're going to even see a gun round out for them with plenty of utility. But if we ever do, uh, you'll just see the difference you'll see executes you'll see lots of smokes the only smoke i saw thrown by iceland was towards that b site the second generator smoke which wasn't even thrown with a first left side generator smoke so it ended up just being no use actually onto the bomb site jiva though able to get that first kill off to a good start here but as per usual portugal comes swim swinging right back here with a kill of their own yeah that's right over the smoke and there's heavy CT presence now upon the ramp. They're pressing the issue. An incend placed. And D7 loses her head in the meantime. So B momentarily was completely clear. But Iceland maybe a little slow on the information there. They actually knew that Xanath Sorp was back on A. Um, and Enika knows that there's further presence happening. They've not got the bomb. I've actually only just noticed that. That it's... Uh, dropped at the bottom of a ramp. It's actually being held by Dali. There's a, another nade to go down on this T bridge. And Dali oh, actually gets the crossover as well. This is really hard to predict. Enika misses that shot with the AWP. And Jiva, she is a million miles away from this C4. So it's all nice to have the B site, but you need a bomb to plant on it. Yeah. And she's way He's going to run out of time as well. Yeah, if, she's if way she too far. this entire way. Does she even realize? Maybe I don't see what the point is here of slow walking this. You have to barrel it down. Probably someone she doesn't even realize. And maybe someone's going to call it out to her. And then she'll start running in. That, that does happen to people in, uh, in real situations. Especially like the likes of Virtus Pro. We see that often. But uh, I don't know what the play is here. And. Like I've been saying, look at her. She's on full utility. It's not good that she's here. Last one alive with full utility, full armor. And she's just going to save it, though, which is probably the right decision here because she does have the full kit anyway, so she doesn't have to spend anything. And probably help out a teammate, maybe drop something, maybe a MAC-10 or something so that they can get something out here in this, for, in this penultimate round of first half. But again, yeah, Portugal... That was, you know, we're seeing close enough rounds out from Iceland, but not enough to get over the line at the end. They haven't even really gotten a bomb plant. If I don't even know if they have gotten a bomb plant yet. Maybe what? I, I can't remember any, in fact, uh, the yeah, entire I half. I feel like the one round that they did win was just on kills. Kills. Everybody towards B this time, though, and they're going to double boost up. So if you're going to catch Portugal off guard, it might be with a tactic like this. No, D7's just a little too quick for that. And even looks the second side as well towards uh, that that grill area. But the flank is is here again, Tiddler. <laughs> it's going to move them apart. Dali ooh, does actually give up the back. So Iceland able to wrap away and maybe fast towards A. They're at a one play a disadvantage and there's more flanks coming there's no way that they're going to be expecting a player she's actually running uh, and it's just not been calmed over she gets a full sight up ramp and heavy damage onto jeeva as well so this round is a is a non-starter 13 to 1 a guarantee she's about to walk into the awp instead the emperor when s cleans her up and it's yeah portugal on on 13 here yeah, they're the, just the way better team, right? We'll probably see them throw more utility in their T pistol than we've seen all half from this Iceland T side. Yeah, they have all these sets of utility, but I've never seen anything really used other than a flashbang. And those flashbangs have been, you know, not supported by players and not peaked upon a lot of the time. You see that flash going to come in over. And we'll hey, blind up there. Yeah, that, that's good that time around. But it, it still goes in a two for one trade for, for Portugal. We'll see here. That flash to push themselves forward. This is a nice, you know, amount of utility usage. That's why the op is in the open because they're not used to this amount of utility. It gets a bit of a leg shot on and that Mac 10 pushing forward. But the Tech 9 just about holds it down. They've just been decimated here. Zana 
Flicking down with that off, not gonna connect. Danica holding it down, not gonna be able to flick of her own, and that's gonna be it in the end. A pretty easy 14 to 1 scoreline at the end of the first half. And Squid, we can't really say much more than this. We can't expect this from the start. You know, Portugal, the better yeah, team. Yeah, very one sided, right? Like, like, like yeah. everybody in, in double digits uh, on the scoreboard on Team Portugal, nobody in double digits for Iceland. A very polarized uh, first half there. And I would have really liked to see more of Portugal's T side. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to get to see much of it at all, as this pistol round might decide all. Um, no, well, one diffuse kit actually on uh, Tanya. He's got that towards mid. Uh, but here come the Glocks, a fast approach. <laughs> we'll see how this one pans out, whether or not Ice are going to be able to the shots, but the damage already is so heavy. You even hold it down, that's the bomb drop. Now they can try and hold this one down, but it's picked up immediately by Dali and Zana. They want to find two right back. And that's the information that both players towards B, so they can just go back towards A as well, split off the rotates. Shiva has been pretty sharp with her shots, considering the scoreline that we have here. She's been one of the few fraggers out from Iceland. That's been doing a lot of work. But the thing about Portugal here in this case is they've taken so much control. They have the ramp side. They have the CT side. D7 right in the forward position. I don't know if Ison will realize that she's here. Seems like they heard, they heard it. They gave a glance at the position, but she's oh, repositioned. No. Not hitting her shot. So it doesn't even matter in the end because she does get one in the second anyway. Oh, that, it, it, that was a wild round pushing up the mid side. But ultimately, they got it. And yeah, we, we might just end up seeing a very short-lived T side out for Portugal. Yeah, I don't think that we're going to see much of it whatsoever. Uh, you mentioned Shiva's been sharp. Uh, she certainly has, um, especially with these pistols on her T-Pistol as well. Um, doing some good work here on Vertigo, but it's not going to uh, remedy the scoreline whatsoever. Uh, we see a shotgun picked up by Katzen and what might be the final round of this map. Uh, they're going to walk right into the blender. Uh, everybody sacrificing themselves to those AK-47s. And yeah, it will be Portugal taking uh, our first best of one of the day. This is kind of what we expected, right? Like we thought that this was going to be a very one-sided map. Uh, I think you even said 16-1. Yeah, it did was. Did you say that out loud? Yeah, I did. Uh, I, I don't know if it was in the green room or something, but yeah. <laughs> I did say it was going to be something like that because of the Spanish result. I didn't explicitly say it, but I did hint towards it. It, it was to be, you know, expected, I feel like. We, we just kind of just couldn't really say for sure, maybe, because they were able to bring something to the table. But, yeah, it was Portugal 61 in it. It's our, I think it's our fourth 16-1 here in this Group B matchup. Uh, really one-sided, it seems. It, Spain and Portugal, yeah, Spain and Portugal have, are just obviously just miles ahead here. Uh... I wonder what match we have. We have A1 versus B2, so that would probably mean France versus either Spain or Iceland. I'm not too sure. I think it's We've got to decrypt the schedule. Yeah, we do. Uh, it's very, it's very uh, weird right now. But I think that's also best of one. And then after that, we're moving to Israel versus Serbia, which is going to be a really good matchup here. Now, I'm excited for that one, but we're still here in the CS:GO uh, female championships here. But uh, yeah, we have another game up soon. Uh, I don't know how I'm feeling about that one. Will it be another stomp? I hope it's not, because I kind of want to see some closer Counter-Strike. Uh, we'll call up Alan Turing to decrypt the schedule and see you after a quick break. One purpose. One dream. One rhythm. One step closer to glory. Enemy they say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong.
join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy they say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion?
one purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. They say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. think you've got what it takes. The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. 
This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy they say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. ISF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy they say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future?
the halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believe. that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. think you've got what it takes. The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 
2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? Fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. ISF brings heart stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. think you've got what it takes. The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? Hundred. 
hundred nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy spotted. They say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Welcome back to your WEC 23 regionals, everybody. Uh, one very uh, decisive, quick 16-1 bait out of the way. And we're into our second series of the day. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting. France versus Spain, I believe, is what's up next on the docket. Um, a more level playing field, I guess, for both sides. A few players that we might know. That's why you know, I feel like this one's going to be a little bit more interesting because France topped their group taking three games. And they took down the Netherlands, who have some pretty big names there, having some uh, 
of the ninjas in pajamas. I forgot what their female division is called, but they're representing NIP and they also have um one representing the Aces. So three players that are in ESL Impact, while France only have one, uh, yet they were able to take that group three to zero with a plus 32 round differential. Pretty good so far, while Spain, on the other end of the spectrum, haven't really been doing a lot here. You know, they got, well, they played Wales and they played Iceland pretty nicely that was going to be an easy game for portugal as well anyway uh, they did fall to portugal in a pretty close affair but other than that they haven't really been tested aside from portugal and here in this best of three this is their first you know real chance to show what they're made of and we actually saw the Netherlands play in two consecutive best of ones yesterday. Obviously a very competent team. Um, so to take wins off teams like that is uh, a big statement here in this in this group stage. Let's see what they can do as we get later on into this tournament. The one key theme that I want to take from sort of match one up until the time that we finish is... We're only giving away one spot here to this female division. So obviously we've got last last year's winners and then the host nation as well. But then you've only got one spot amongst this whole qualifier. So this is going to be very hard fought for uh, between these uh, top couple of teams. Yeah, that's really the unfortunate part here. Like I've been saying, you know, in the pregame, if you just only just tuned in, I've been saying, you know, we have a lot of talent here in the female division, a lot more than, you know, in the previous seasons that we've had international events for this. But the thing is, as a result, because most of those squads are the best players that, get, that they can possibly get their hands on, a lot of these squads are international squads. So it's kind of spread around here, you know, all the talent. But here we have the French a lineup. We have Monkey D. Julie. She's been around the scene for a long time, but really hasn't been able to get on a stable roster that was competing competing in the top events marion as well is a player that's also been around pretty pretty you know a lot and then you have astra miss and emerald as well astra being part of that uh nip squad that was able to take down you know their teammates in the netherlands which was pretty interesting uh but yeah this french lineup has a, a lot in store considering that they went three three and zero in their group yeah, we saw France play yesterday. We actually watched them on the mainstream play Overpass. And I've got to say, just a really painfully slow T side. Um, so I'm hoping to see something a little more spicy and fiery and flary here today. Um, it was actually when they went onto the CT side where we saw most of the, um, the, the depth of their tactics really come into effect. Uh, nevertheless, this is Spain. Uh, we haven't seen them on the main stage yet. The yeah, AD and Mariam are probably the players to look out for they were the former Official. teammates of that big equipa core they were the former teammates oh you have mommy patata and quiet who kind of fill in those gaps that are created by their former teammates that's where things get interesting i feel you know they have you know this firepower but you know they're currently not really doing too much outside of the server so i don't know what they're really made of they of course lost to portugal in a close affair on nuke which is interesting. Uh, they did have a really good T side on Nuke, but they lost out on their CT side, uh, surprisingly enough. They were 9-6 up and they lost to Portugal in the end. So I feel like that could have went either way. They're able to do a little bit better on their CT side. But other than that, they've only played Wales in a 16-1 victory and, uh, you know, Iceland as well. It doesn't look, you know, it's not, it's not too you know, impressive. We haven't seen what they're made of, even though on paper, they are a pretty good team here. But France, though, on the other hand, they've shown a lot here. You know, they have that big round dif differential, 32, uh, beating Netherlands, beating, you know, Austria. And this is going to be a very interesting game here as we get started on this map of Nuke. And, well, I didn't even know the veto. And we actually get started on this map. Yeah, we actually saw Wales play yesterday. I feel like you get matched up against that team and kind of just treat it as a bye. Minute 40. There's um, the T side. It's going to be France to start on that one. And Astra opens up the engagements with the fragging on that block. Actually baits the Zangyu downstairs. Oh. And Quiet's able to silence her early. Four versus four. Yeah, but down to the ramp they go. They flanked all the way around. Huge gaping hole in the defense of Spain. Even though they've already got the fast rotates in, uh, there's plenty of presence all around these CT players. They're just going to have to try and deny that bomb, which isn't even, you know, 
good for their position to deny. So AD's able to get one Marion Emerald and all those kills in at the same time. Like I said, clustered, already surrounded. So France could overwhelm them and a pretty nice pistol round from France. Spain just having a big hole in that defense that France exploited perfectly in that round. Yeah, we watched Marion yesterday uh, on this T side, obviously. We've got a Mariam and a Marion. Um, Marion was um, probably the MVP of yesterday for me. Uh, an ace, a quad kill, really big plays on that T side. Just like pulling France back into that overpass game. Pistol Ryan victory here on Nuke. They find themselves 1-0 and they'll have the rifles in hand first against Eagles. That single MP9. Pretty standard game of Nuke. No, no, nothing that we've seen that's out of the ordinary just yet. Not at all. Pushing out forward. Marion is able to get that first kill pretty nicely. Spain are going to try and press the issue here to try and find their numbers right back. They forced into this, now mind you. So they will be vying to get that advantage back or rather some neutrality. They're going to crunch into the lobby side, it seems, from the ramp players, but they called it clear. And as Astra hears those footsteps running away, she's going to reclaim control. So that information play really went down to absolutely nothing. You know, they really just took a glance at it. And now, since they heard them run away, France now are going to take control of it themselves and Spain might be in for a, a bit of a shock. Got to respond to this, and without any information, how are you expected to do exactly that? Now losing another player, Astra, fishing inside ramp room, able to eviscerate these pistols. That MP9 outside was dropped earlier and is unrecoverable. Marion could actually get hold of that herself. Don't know if she wants to carry an SMG or to round uh, number three. Should be an easy round to take over the top. And this is what I talked about the pace uh, yesterday uh, from France. Really, really slow rounds, even against pistols, um, using every single second of that clock. Sometimes it does bite them, uh, but sometimes they take a really conclusive, convincing round like this. Marion with the only kill here for the CT side as Spain will go down 0-2 to two early on Nuke. I like it. I like this France slow play. You know, it kind of irritates that CT side. They get a bit antsy. They're just going to push on forward. And that's exactly what France want to play here. That's why this round was so decisive. You know, you had Spain going in for the information. But France played so slow that Spain didn't end up clearing it early. And that gap was created. You could see how, he walk or how she walked up the ramp side. And they didn't expect that at all. Because they thought lobby was clear. That lobby crunch, you know, because you had uh, Astra holding it down and she was able to get that kill pretty easily. Uh, I'm liking the slow play out from France. I do see, like you said, how it would be, you know, possible for for it to bite them in the back. But that would really come with everything. Like you have your Virtus Pros, your your former yeah. Gambit, your Cloud Nines. It, it will always bite them in the back, but you know, most of the time it will work if it's executed properly. And Spain have it the red remedy for it. It's one of the harder play styles to play is because it kind of gets on your nerves a little bit. You kind of get antsy and start making a bit of mindless plays. I, I feel like it's one of those type of play styles. I would say that patience is probably one of the most underrated virtues um, currently in CSGO. You just need it to beat a team like France. And if you don't have the firepower to, to really back it up, then it can be really difficult to contain, to contend with. It's time they're able to trade one for one against the AK-47. France burst right off the back of that into the A site. They know that there's limited presence from the pistols here. So maybe Mami will just keep hold of this AK-47. No use in just giving it away, considering she doesn't have full armor. Again, they're just sneaking onto the bomb sites at this point. This round is so silent. The only you know, sounds of guns you hear are really from the actual gun battles itself. You're not hearing people, you know, break windows, spam through smokes. It's just waiting and waiting for the CT players to push on through. You know, it's very methodical out from France. It really is a slow play and 4x3, a flick behind actually. So Marion gets that kill anyway. Mami to hold it down, but it doesn't look like she's going to be good for much more as Astra just perforates her skull from the side. So France taking another, and that has been the slowest three rounds that I've ever experienced this entire qualifier from the men's region and the women's region.
Yeah, you're going to see a lot more of this map as well, because France starting on this T side, they're going to totally control the pace of this map. This is something that's kind of a symptom uh, of their of their T halves. See some slow counter strike here. See the Molotovs trying to stop them early on uh, from the French side so that they can't advance forward. It seems like they're going to burst here onto the A bomb site. The spacing not all too great, but that flash is perfect for that frag. That trade kill right back, so a one for one. But AD is able to get one back, and Emerald holds the flank as well from the lobby side. So the advantage comes back in the hands of France, but not for long because AD. Again, activating onto the A bomb site, the upper bomb site, holding it down. A crossfire established here, but they've had right down to the B bomb site, and this is where the information has to come in through for Spain. Really important round to win. AD is snuck. Wow, almost stomped in behind. And Marion can now ro uh, relay all of that information over. She's got the AK-47 in a key position. And now they have to unburrow these T's Emerald. Great swing, awesome timing. And Marion's able to capitalize off it. They play just as a perfect unit there on the B-bomb site. Or zero France. And they can step into life uh, just when they feel confident, when they feel comfortable, when they know how the setup is poised. Uh, they can actually play a really coordinated game in France. And I would say that that's probably their biggest um, their, their biggest sort of positive here on their team. Uh, certainly the reason why they're 3-0 here in the group stage. They would have uh, certainly lost their best of one against the Netherlands uh, if, they, if their team play hadn't been uh, nearly as good. Because I would say that Netherlands probably had the better individual aimers uh, on the server. Ninja pace is always going to be such a dangerous asset to have and France executed it perfectly in that last round. It's an asset in any sport. Look at football, basketball, anything. A change of pace just surprises and shocks the opponent, especially when you've been playing so slow for so long. And um, yeah, France able to get that round pretty nicely and back down to a half by for Spain. Again, France just playing this methodical, slow counter-strike. Missa outside, and she might be good for two here, and she will. Waiting for that aggression. Again, Spain feeding to what France want, and that is just that aggression. Walking to their crosshairs. There's going to be numbers there. Mami will back away here, and that's a huge, you know, hole for the ramp side. And, oh, that's way too difficult to try and recover from now. This is looking like a France round. It's a France round written all over at this point. Yeah, it's, it's essentially unretrievable. Zero to four as well. These rounds starting to slip away fast. And now Vent's getting mollied. One of those pistols at least forced back. Not letting up on the utility. Something that we didn't see in our previous series here today. But this one, considering we do have France on the server, they certainly know how to use it. Dealing with these pistols perfectly. Only AD with the AK-47. That was retrieved from just a little earlier here in the round. Easy one for France, really. They're able to combine, keeping four players alive as well. And these have been pretty uh, one-sided rounds as well. So they're really building up a bank here on the T side. Spain will have a buy responding back into this one. It'll be full utility on all five members also. Yeah, I like how France have variety into their tactics as well. You can see they have the wide variation of the outside smokes, the Astralis style smokes, where it gives them access to way more parts of the map. And they can also shorten it so that it's just a normal outside smokes. They have a lot of, you know, you know, tactics in their, uh, in their strap book. And I'm liking it because Spain haven't been able to handle either of them so far. And all they've been able to do is aggress forward, which hasn't worked out at all for them. And France have been doing coordinated, you know, ramp attacks, lobby crunches, upper bomb side takes, lower bomb side takes. They've ha they have the whole, you know, strap book available to them. And that's what makes things so dangerous. If Spain's not able to counter this France offense right now, you might just see them running away with this game. Yeah, one of the key weaknesses that we've seen from multiple teams here in this specific tournament is just a lack of map control, right? That's a problem that you're not going to see France have. They've always got players all over the server, all over the map. Uh, they're able to take uh, really assertive control, get the maximum amount of information, and, and just use that to target one of these bomb sites, pinpoint where the weakness is on the CT side. The CT side that right now, as of round six, isn't finding many kills at all. 
Alba yet to kill everybody else between two and three frags here on the CT side. Maybe having rifles in hand alongside that AWP might change things. They've got all the utility that they could ever want and throwing some of it towards the lobby. And Molotov, that will trickle down. And AD really needs to stand up here. She's lost a teammate. That's a huge problem. Look at the amount of utility being dropped in by France. They're just taking a bomb set by storm. This is so refreshing to see. We didn't see a whole lot of utility dropped in uh, Vertigo. And um, on an intricate map like uh, Nuke, we're seeing such a perfect start out here from France on Nuke. It's really nice to see. You know, Typically, we don't get to see our Nukes all too often, but they're playing this pretty nicely. You know, this Nuke map, you know, we know it for, you know, like we've been saying all the time, calm, heavy, intricate. Tactics heavy, but France have not failed to show their strap book. You saw they knew all the smokes for the upper bomb site, a coordinated upper bomb site take, and they got the round pretty easily. And France almost play every single round like it's their last, right? Like like every single round that they play feels like a round thirty where you're 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 scraping for every single tiny edge. You don't want to lose a player early. Uh, yet calculated aggression, yet a, a game plan. Oh, it's out to the A side again. Astra even getting that kill before she gets down the vent. And you see these wide variation of smokes. You know, Astralis style, you can see it provides access into a lot more parts of the map. And they'll run through AD, he's able to get it. The abundance of players jumping through the smoke. That's a rifle retrieve. Now they're going to challenge for this. AD leading the charge here. And actually, that Malta separates them. mariam has got another here with the 5-7. That makes things a little bit interesting in this round. Those pistols will charge on in, and then the dilemma is, do the AK-47s do the same? That's C4 yet to go down, and a one-player advantage here on this CT side. They're going to double-peak Astra inside the vent. She decides it's optimal to go elsewhere, slips back, uses that ladder to create a diversion. But nobody's over-peaking this. Mariam finally takes the swing. Oh, no. so, though, oh, she finds such a gap here in the defense. Able to sweep away two and bring us back to even pegging. It seems like Spain don't know what to do as well. They're both together congregated so that, you know, they can kind of get a trade on at least. They don't know what France are going to do and they're going to be here for the rotate. And what France have done perfectly is the fact that they rotated and they've done it with such little time on the clock. So that it's very difficult for Spain to tell whether or not they'll head back to the upper bomb site. And this rotate will come in so late. There'll be time for one player to just hold it down. It's going to be the player in heaven. And they're both separated as well. This heaven player is going to be so crucial in this round. And with Emerald, with that AWP wrapping around lobby. Oh, this might just be the round done here for France. And Emerald's got in the first. Now a one on two. Alba has taken a lot of damage. And Mesa closes it out in the end. A very, very close round. But France again taking it. They didn't know that they were heading up towards A, and France is going to call a tactical pause upon that. I'm sure this is a water break. There's no way that you'd be taking a tactical timeout 7-0 up. I've got to say, fantastic play from Emerald. Really heads up play to head back to A. She's been hitting the key AWP shots in a lot of these clutch situations. Sometimes you see an AWP on Nuke especially, that Nuke T side. It can be really hard to get it rolling if you're not just relying on playing outside. This time Quiet will have an AWP of her own. Elba's still yet to get on the scoreboard. A 1v2 clutch attempt just a couple of moments ago not going her way. France just looking dominant. We thought this would be a, a close series. Still could be. They actually took a 7-0 lead on overpass yesterday against the Netherlands, and then it started to fall apart. But there's no signs of it happening right now because France have just been so good. Spain just haven't had a single answer to anything. They've had Mariam in 80 fragging out, but just where's the support behind it? You still have Alba on zero kills, and that's the main problem. We'll see Julie drop down on the top of main. Maybe a Twists-esque style play, just dropping down surprisingly. Again, that change of pace being weird. And with the outside smokes being dropped, again, it might provide a little bit of uncertainty for the defense of Spain. It really is difficult to tell what they're going to do. Mariam going to wrap around with the A1S. I think she might be able to catch one off guard. Astra has already pushed up, but 
knowing France, she probably thinks they're not there. And it seems like she she thinks that probably not expecting her to be, you know, under hot already. Very difficult round to play. And again, 50 seconds remaining. They've not really taken a bomb site just yet. They're just going to storm in when the time is right. That timing was extraordinarily awkward for Mariam. She doesn't know that there's a player towards the left side, but as soon as a gunfight occurs on A, she'll be right behind, ready for this flank, and there's the Molotovs to come through. Mariam should be able to spot this one, and yes, the C4 should drop. Emerald, key shot has to hit it, but won't check the angle. Why would you? There goes the C4, and based off how France plays, there's not much time. 20 seconds. Now there's two players running through AD, disrespecting it quite there to find the kill with that AWP. And it's crucial, but they're lining up almost now down to a one-on-one. -on -one, but there's simply no time for it. France have conceded this round. But as you said, it's going to be by time. But in all honesty, that will just happen. With, you know, that will happen sometimes with this play style. So I, I feel like, sure, Spain get this round. But the real question is, are they able to replicate it? And I don't fault Misa there for just holding heaven. She had 22 points of health. You've got to put your faith in your teammates to grab that bomb and wrap back out. It can be really hard to do so. Spain were right on top of it as soon as it fell onto the ground, putting their first one on the board. And honestly, that's a bit of a gimmicky round to win. You, you catch the bomb in no man's land. Uh, you're able to get every single player there to defend it basically instantaneously on a map where... Rotating into lobby can sometimes be a, a really long journey, a long endeavor. 7-1 here. It's where France battles back so much of the time. We wanted to see utility earlier, but that red box smoke, not a not one that we're used to seeing. It isn't. You want to teach me that, that smoke tiddler? <laughs> Might have to. Probably not that bad. Like, that lineup... Probably was just missed by a few millimeters, so like a couple of pixels, I, right? And it all goes. I think it was frame. a run throw. Yeah, I think it's a run throw as well. Quiet, grabbing two, but again, any sort of foothold that Spain getting around just been immediately destroyed by France with the trades. MP9 not going to be favored in that battle. Mariam though trying to re peek and maybe get a trader. Steps are going to be heard, and ball is going to go down a one on three. I don't see this one happening. Uh, Mariam's lost. She's nowhere near this one and about to be caught between a pretty awkward crossfire as well. Both Astra and Misa combine. A quick headshot for France to take number eight. And this is what we saw them do uh, yesterday. Uh, as soon as they lose just one round, they're right back onto the scoreboard. And this is a pretty dire situation for Spain. They've barely got any money into this one. Likely to concede double digits on their CT side here on Nuke. Alba still yet to touch the scoreboard. Zero in nine. Tough start. It is, especially when, you know, some of the teammates are, or her teammates in general have been able to do some pretty good stuff so far. That's a beautiful flick up out from Emerald. And she's looking for more oh, in the no. no scope. Why don't you go for another peek in? And she gets a third. I know it's just an eco, but in such a weird situation like that where she was looking to be overwhelmed, She's able to just coolly just destroy them in the end, going for all three. And now it's a, just a two on four. Oh, you can't do much here, can you? You really can't. Now, it's all about damage, right? Albeit, how impactful is that going to be in the story of this uh, first half? France just have so much money built up from multiple consecutive really dominant rounds. That C4 is going to go down. Probably the earliest bomb plant I've ever seen France get here on Nuke. Almost a minute was left on that clock. And now, can this Steagle do any damage? AD has been able to steal an AK-47 and maneuver upwards in the meantime, but that Deagle's not going to do anything, and this is the round firmly over. AD, is she going to find this one? Yep, back turns. Quick kill onto Julie. We won't see any more action here in round 10, though, Tiddler. So I can stop talking. You know it all. Save. Looking to come in. France, plenty of money to go for the hunt. Rounds have just been so good for them. Like I said, that one round Spain have won. It's simply not repeatable. You know, it's just a matter of France not spending their time 
correctly. Just a mismanagement of time. That's kind of the hard part about this slow playstyle is that you have to manage your time right. And um, it's just obviously you're, they're human. They're not. They're gonna make a few mistakes there. And that was really the only round Spain got. So they were kind of just given that round from a few mistakes by France. You know that bomb being dropped as well. They were on course to recovering it. But uh, yeah, round number 11, we'll see what it will be this time around. It's going to be an A-site flash, an early one that will blind the whole bomb site so that the vent player can go right down. It seems like it might be a split here towards the ramp and secret side, possibly. No outside presence, so it seems like it's going to be the former. Quiet needs to hit this first shot here. They're going to be conclusive and comprehensive about this angle. And Quiet forced right back, only trades one for one, and that's just not good enough against Marion. It goes the Molotov to gain them all of the map control that they desire down all the way to the B site. And there is just the solo defender. It's just right behind, but no sign cues. And oh, that one gets tapped. Astra is able to find one in the meantime. That C4 gone. And now Emerald has all of the info. That's such an awkward molly as well. It stops any rotations. At least slows it down. And Mariam has given away the sign cue for Astra to just rail everybody. Three kills up to 13 here on the T side of Nuke. The only player out fragging her on the server right now is Emerald, who's had just a cataclysmic 14 and 2 with the AWP. She just hasn't slowed down at all. All day. She's been given the fight that she wants as well. And that's yeah, like yeah, the yeah. worst part. It's it's not even just the fragging ability that she has. It's just Spain are giving it to her at the same time. They're going to call a tactical pause here, but I don't know what you really talk about here. Maybe you'd be wanting to look forward to that T side possibly, but the way France have been playing on a map that's pretty CT heavy, leaning towards that CT side a little bit more than your usual maps, especially with how you have that, you know, how the map is pretty laid out. You even have that outside section. The worrying part is just that Spain haven't been able to lock down any part of the map at all. France just been toying with them. Uh, it's looking good for them to even go further than this ten. these 10 rounds. 10 rounds are already pretty good here for that T side, but uh, it's looking like it might just be quite a few more. Yeah, taking attack this late in the map as well is kind of a puzzling. Maybe just getting the lunch order in. 10-1 here. Here on Nuke. Just a very dominant performance all around from, from France. Uh, very similar to what the way they played the their T side and overpass yesterday. I think this is kind of the flavor of their T-side on every single map that you'd see. And I think Nuke kind of benefits this. They've been able to sneak their way into really advanced positions. Marion's just hasn't been noted yet by the defense. They have no idea that she's this close to heaven. And he'll be able to silently sneak up right behind onto this A-site. Easy kill for Alva. Getting her hand in finally with Marianne's a killer the road. main player we need to be looking at here. She actually finds a headshot. She's thing all is, the way up in heaven. I wonder how the utility usage will be utilized here from the Spanish side. Maybe they're going to be able to buy a bit of time so they can focus on this angle, but uh, they're, they, they're just completely in the way. She slipped right through completely. But she's checking behind, though, and AD is aware of this. But will they be too fixated on this angle to the point it might just deceive them? Marion finally activates. Alba gets out of that garage section. Oh, the MP9 get to a battle switch in the AK. Now things can get hot and heavy here for Spain. It's now a two on two as ensued. MP9 finally getting that kill from the same position, but Spain hold it out completely. You know, stacked onto the A bomb side, and France can't do anything about it that time around. That's a better round out from Spain, finding themselves a second. And maybe the slowness in the France side might have deceived them once more. Two thirds of Emerald's deaths have been being flanked by Ramp as you rotate into the A site. Uh, kind of unfortunate there. Yeah, that rhymed all down to Marion, really. Like, she, she created so much chaos and confusion. It's actually surprising that Spain are able to deal with that one in particular because it looks like one of the more fiery uh, T sided rounds so unpredictable when you've got a T player just inside the heaven it diverts everyone's attention splits it between two polar opposite angles on the A site this time it's the M4 finding a trade outside and Emerald oh that's such a fast flick she's hit a couple of those today very sharp that up she's not missing and that's a real thorn in the side here for Spain 
not only right now, but when they move on to the CT side. If she's going to get her hands up that up, she's going to pull down that outside section. There's no doubt about it. Uh, single amount advantage now here for France. Uh, the positions here for Spain. They're going to try and wrap around, maybe catch them off guard here by wrapping around towards secret. They're not really looking towards this section. They're kind of focused and fixated on outside. Yeah, and Mami is able to get that kill into Missa. Down to a three on three here. Mami is r the real linchpin of this B site. Solo defense. And she's made her way all the way onto ramp. Astra has basically been flanking her, tailing her for so long. This window's open, so they've actually got a silent avenue onto this B site, which at least Astra is going to take, and she'll be right behind this defense once again. There's no way that Mummy's going to be ready for this one. She's moving all the way up. Astra's in such an advanced position here. And when they finally hear that bomb going down, does Mami check this left-hand corner? I, I cannot see her ever doing it. Oh. And Astra, oh, she looks the wrong way. That's such a mistake. No, that timing couldn't have been worse. You got CS code. Like... <laughs> I feel like you kind of just have to stay there, especially when Marion was there to support. She might have heard something. I don't know, but... Now it's out to Marion, but it's Emerald actually to find that first kill from the backside. There's that trade to come in. It's now down to a one on one, though, but that bomb is planted so far in the open here. Marion doesn't have to full commit to the peak here. She's not even on the bomb, and she finds a headshot, a quick burst as well. It could have went astray there for France, but ultimately cleaned up in the end here as they find legs 11. Yeah, that's a, a pretty unfortunate timing for Astra, right? I think that you're probably correct that she heard a sound cue elsewhere and decided to uh, flick aside. Maybe she heard the door open, those double doors, of course, make loads of noise all over the map. 11 to 2, though. Uh, France able to survive the scare and back onto pistols for Team Spain. The a lot of Deagles. They've been highly unsuccessful in these eco rounds, these half buy rounds. We'll see likely 12 to 2. A 10 round lead for France. Feels like the map is already over here on Nuke. We need to go deeper into this series to see if Spain's going to really take any real initiative. Yes, Molotov, they'll flush out a possible angle here of two players as well. The flash to drop in. No, they're going to stay right there. There might be... Uh... Very unexpected of this position. Amaltov does drop into secret rather. Mario cleans it up. Player in the heaven side, pistols here, and they have uh, they've made pretty light work out from this. Emerald with that op getting that frag and now Mami just left alone here. Uh, just a bit of a save here so that they can get money into the next round, the final round here, but possibly a 13 to 2 at this point. It's a very dangerous prospect here, and you kind of might be looking already towards the second map here if you're Spain, possibly. You know, if it gets a little bit far, you might just want to start talking about the other map rather than kind of chasing this map that kind of will just end up being like a sort of sunk cost fallacy at the, at, the, at that point. We often talk about Zonic's Law, right? And the difference between a 9-6 and a 10-5 yeah. and 11-4. There's no real difference between a 12-3 and a 13-2. They're both as sort of decisive and dominant as one another. One gives you just slightly more breathing space, but it feels like this map is just already done. 12 T rank, like this would just be such a comeback. And Spain haven't really done anything on this CT side to give us any hope once at all. This defense gets torn apart again going to be a 13th round i can absolutely confirm that in this one oh mommy has other ideas but um no i can confirm that ladies and gentlemen it will be a 13 to 2 half thing is i'm actually pretty scared for the second map for spain as well it is a map that they are good at as well this uh former duo of big keeper it was a map that they could play as well as this 13 to 2 comes in if France are able to put such a dominant T-side on a map like Ancient, where it's also pretty CT-sided, we might just see the same situation again. So, Spain will really need to step up here. Maybe use these, you know, rounds if they're not going to come back. Maybe get a few on the board, possibly. Get a bit warmed up, because Ancient will be a pain for them, I feel, if they aren't able to even get going, you know, mechanically. Yeah, this on is server. such a one-sided veto because Overpass is also yeah, just such a strong map for France. Like we saw them play. Like I've talked about it so much over the course of the last sort of half an hour or so. 
like every single map every single round of every map is going to be just such a huge challenge for team spain and they do anything in this pistol to give them a bit of confidence going into the the future maps that we'll see let's find out they're gathering outside this a bomb site but a non-committal approach squeaky door still not open and they seem to have made their mind up on a Just gonna be a storm on today. Bomb site. Complete juxtaposition of what France brought to the table in the first half in their pistol round. Bomb does go down. Retake utility gonna be dropped on in with two players up in heaven. Gonna be followed by a player in main as well to chime in, possibly with a bit. One way smoke as well. The typical one at that. You can see the utility usage of France plenty. But it's all about hitting their shots at this point. Missa, good for one, but quiet holds down two Mami as well. And it is way too difficult. They've already gotten that control. The shots aren't being hit as well. They're trying to find absolute closure in the end of Spain. They fight right back. They get the piss around on the board. They provide some sort of substance, at least here, for a possible recovery in this uh, first map. Yeah, I feel like France almost did that to themselves. You can't give away the entire A bomb site. That was a, a a five versus five retake scenario. Something that we just never see in Counter Strike. So having no presence on that upper bomb site, Spain able to take control. That's an easy pistol round to win. Once you've got that C4 down, you can lock it away really easily. France will respond with a force buy here in round number 17. This map could be over at any moment. Let's see. What they do here in a non-equal buy scenario. It's the first time they've had less money than their opponents. Literally all map. Yeah. I think they can still get something done here with this force buy. Especially if they're not going to check their corners. Leave no stone unturned. And that is been, or that is a bit of a problem that we might see. But they're playing this slow. They're clearing things out. Mami to open up with the MAC-10. But Astra, what a strong Deagle play. Almost lining up that collateral as well. Could have went really, really different there. She was able to line up those two. Just a fast play. A fast peek from Spain to sort of neutralize her immediately before she could do any more damage. Now looking at this one on or this two on three now. Especially one on three as Marion's just dipping her toes in the water as misses quite far back. Just freshly up the stairs, a secret. But considering the HPs are low, doesn't seem like Spain are going to show face. Push in. 5-7, go for the headshot. Looking for another. Picks up a MAC-10 and probably wants to get out of there. Probably doesn't really have the information that these players are low HP. Yeah, um, good heroic attempt by Astra with the Desert Eagle. Uh, but... It's not going to be a round for Team France. They'll have to wait a little longer to close out Nuke. A first map of this best of three series. Still a massive 13 to 4 lead. They won't have a buy here in round number 18. This will be um, a, basically a full eco. We'll not even see a, a flashbang picked up. Yeah. Finally down to an eco here, France. It's been a uh, first eco the first for them. Eco of the map. Series, yeah. So, uh, we'll see how this one pans out. It's probably just going to be a Spain victory. But when we get back to the guns here, when Emerald possibly is going to be able to get that off in her hands, that's when things get interesting, like I said. But they overwhelm this lobby side, getting another few frags down to a 2-1-2. Two -two, but Mami closes it out in the end. Getting a 4K in the round there. Bit of a confidence booster. And themselves riled up in the server. And now, France, this is where things get hard, but... No, actually, there is an AWP this time around. Now, this is where the real tests start for Spain. Yeah, Emerald's been so key here in this first map of the series. That AWP on the T side, just going above and beyond to break open bomb sites. Now she's got to close some down. She'll be sending that AWP, uh, usually outside, but instead elects to go towards the A bomb site. That means that she can have presence inside the heaven as well. Um, for a quick rotate outside. It's all smoked off for the time being. So she'll wrap back to ramp. It's a much more standard position for a dominant AWP. Let's 
So play here so far from Spain. They're just poking and prodding. Kind of doing what France were doing in their half. Their T-side half. Waiting for aggression. But France, considering it's their game, it's what they play often. It seems like they'll probably know how to counter this one well. Kind of just imagine what it'd be like in their shoes on the T-side right now. Flash to be dropped on in. Do they expect this off? This could be good for a few. Good for the first. Going to drop down to the lower side. Good you know, choice to just drop down. Play a different position, a different angle. To play the advantage. Has players pouncing from different angles. And now that's going to be the B site now falling. As there's support here onto the bomb side itself. A 3 on 3 situation. Alba on low HP. Now Astra and her teammate in Missa are going to try and head down this ramp side. And try and retake this B bomb site. We've seen Astra retake bomb sites all week. Let's see if she can do it one more time with the Emperor A1S. Creeping in, there's so many corners to check right now. And she does have the diffuse kit in addition to that. So creeping through, AD is able to eliminate me, sir. So that's one more player they know the exact location of, but just delaying the time. There's no more on the clock. This bomb's going to explode and give Spain number six before the wipeout. It's actually staying alive as well. Uh, yeah, just a little slow on the approach uh, there for Team France. Uh, not getting into the site, being delayed as well uh, never really helps. I feel like they were expecting the kills to present themselves. That didn't happen. I love that opening from Alba as well. Had such a slow start here on Nuke. Really picking things up now. France need to switch up a little bit because Spain are actually here to play on their T side. It feels like they weren't expecting that at all. Like you said, expecting the gunfights to present itself kind of feels like because that was the case on the other half, might be thinking that's the case in this half, but it's not the same. It really isn't. Molotov, Marion to force her off the angle, damage delta, and she's able to wall bang Marion and put away all her damage until she dies. This is in an aggressive position, but no one's here on outside to possibly take this. Maybe Mario McQuaid do take this side. But they're only going to drop a nade here and head back and congregate and reconvene outside uh, lobby with their teammates. Yeah, maybe uh, a new storyline starting to adapt in this series. Very T-sided approach from both teams. Lots of T-sided success. We've only seen one round total here on Nuke go the way of the CT uh, two rounds total actually go the way of any CT side. Ants yet to pick one up. Do so right now though against the A approach. Astra holding the backside. She's gonna pivot. Look for more Astra. Again peeking through as the support of her teammates, and this is a cleaner round now from France. Getting themselves here on the board here in the second half. No bomb in her control in the middle of the bomb site. We'll have to isolate these gunfights, which is definitely possible. A back to drop in Julian, such a potent position, but misses the one to get that kill in the end. France find themselves here. Like I said here, first round, the second half, and maybe this is the start of the end here for Spain. And France will call a tactical pause upon it as well. Maybe looking to secure 15. Yeah, a couple of tactical pauses from them. Um, this map, despite being just so, so ahead. Uh, they'll have all five rifles, Emerald, without the AWP, though. Um, good openings from Spain. Uh, it felt like they were really close to just breaking down this bomb site in its entirety. Astra staying alive for much too long there. And the counter flashes from France uh, being really effective. Without those, I feel like Spain just overwhelmed the bomb site. C4 goes down and we see them put an, a seventh on the board. Oh, this is such a dilemma. What do you go for? Do you actually eco and allow France onto app point? Yeah, giving them nine map points as well. I feel like your hands are tied. That's basically what you have to do. The exception of maybe just pick up one rifle. I don't know. That's why they call it a dilemma. But 14 6 and Spain. Are they going to do something more speedy here with just pistols? Emerald already getting a kill within the first 15 seconds of the round. A four on five situation to get started. They're going to walk into this rifle as they hear it reload. Marion will have her hands full here. Good for two. And a bit of a labored spray in the end. Kind of limits her. And that's the bomb drop. Separated as well. Mami has gotten down. The information is there. She'll have to go back up for that bomb. 
miss up. The view model was covering her. The view model covered her, but uh, she was able to realize. Anyway, oh, that's it. So nine half points. From it the does. observer POV, right? Uh, when yeah. you see something like that, she finally jumps into life. 15 to 6 here. You had nine chances to close for Team France. A uh, great map uh, of Nuke from them. I think they'll be feeling yeah. really confident going further into this series, knowing that they go onto familiar territory. They've got lots of experience across the entire map pool as well. And I imagine that we're going to see, uh, yeah, just very similar scenes uh, throughout this entire series. We'll have to see how they play on the CT side first. Uh, in map number two as well. That's a bit of a change of pace, but we need to get there first. Uh, nine in a row is what Spain need here, uh, just to get to overtime. Yeah, the worst part is, I believe, you know, France just are just so ready for everything that's gonna be there in that second map, which is a bit of a scary prospect. Marion gonna drop a uh, molotov so that she could possibly stop these ramp players but it's actually emerald who helps out they're just not expecting of it you know they're just so fixated on that one player in ramp that they all turn their heads to that position now astra and emerald here it's a pincer a three-pronged attack at this point 80 there to get two of the kills though to keep things honest and there's more players right here and mommy gets that kill so they have the advantage here and possibly could take the B side. And if they overwhelm this locker room player, this could be this could be scary. But Missa holds one down. Julie now in a one on two. Peaks through oh, and ends no. it. What a clutch. It was uh, pretty good at some point there for Spain. But uh, just France able to recover it. And, you know, it, it was a really... And that's where we've seen the individual plays from France really sort of step up to another level, right? Um, a 1v3, actually, to close out the map there. We we kind of saw that uh, from Astra as well a little earlier there on Nuke. Uh, but yeah, really powerful map. Um, all coming down to that T side uh, start. It's very hard. You've got to almost be trying uh, to blunder a 13 to 2 first half to like get into overtime to actually lose the map in its entirety. Uh, it's actually pretty difficult to do. So a uh, great T side from France. They're sort of vintage, uh, slow style. Uh, and then um, they, they go into the next map with a 1-0 lead. Yeah, if you've just... Um, we didn't really get to go through the veto. We do have Ancient up next. That's the map pick of Spain and our decider is overpass. So CT sided maps all across the board here, which is going to be scary considering we have the danger that is the French T side. But that's going to be uh, the next map. And uh, that's going to be coming in just a few moments. We'll take a short break. And when we're back, we'll bring you guys the action of map number two, so don't go anywhere. One purpose. One dream. One rhythm. One step closer to glory. Enemy spotted. They say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. Ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. 
Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital.
In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy spotted. They say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one 
step closer to glory. Enemy spotted. They say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. I think you've got what it takes. The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy spotted. They say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, 
strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy spotted. They say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. ISF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The ISF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. think you've got what it takes. The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy spotted. They say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The 
ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy they say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. 
over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy spotted. They say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy spotted. They say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong.
join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy spotted. They say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One person.
purpose. One dream. One rhythm. One step closer to glory. They say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. Ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy they say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. 
This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy they say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy they say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future?
the halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believe. that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Challenge. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy spotted. They say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Challenge. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 
In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy spotted. They say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy spotted. They say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't 
be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy they say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One person.
purpose. One dream. One rhythm. One step closer to glory. They say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. Welcome back to your WEC, everybody. An extended break, but we are back with more Counter Strike action as we're about to get into map number two of this series. Yeah, we had a pretty one sided affair on Nuke. If you hopefully didn't, you know, if, if you didn't forget. Uh, we actually had a bit of a center break due to some technical issues, but uh, yeah, pretty one-sided map on Nuke. We move over to Ancient. Uh, I believe it's the map pick of Spain this time around. I feel like the two players that we're talking about that did play for Big Equip, uh, when they were on the lineup, Ancient was their forte, Ancient was their map, but uh, considering that they have a different three players along supporting them, I don't know how this one's going to go, and especially it being a CT-sided map and with France always bringing a really good T-side to the CT-sided maps, uh, I feel like this is going to be really difficult, especially when overpass it is cider, even if Spain are able to take it. France are a proven team on overpass and I feel like that's going to be a, a very dangerous prospect for the Spanish side. Yeah, and if you pick the, the map, your opponent picks the, the side. So France will be starting on the CT side. So not able to control the pace as much as we've seen in these other series. And when they've got off to these stonking starts, it's generally been because they started on the T side. They're able to control the momentum from very early on. And Ancient, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to do that from the CT side. And honestly, I'm excited because I've seen France play two maps now both starting on that terrorist side however i've got to say that i felt like their better half on overpass was actually their ct side they took less rounds the percentage of rounds were, were actually less as well on nuke there seemed to be gaps as well but they were taking map control they were taking initiative away from the netherlands and the other opponents that they've been playing in these series so i'm really interested because this is the first time that i will see their counter terrorist side get tested and also on their T side as well, considering, you know, it kind of is a B heavy map, especially you'll see it in the piss around probably, it's probably just going to be a B rush. Um, just the fact that they might have to play a little bit faster than per usual. That's why we kind of see Virtus Pro bomb out of the RMR previously. They are, of course, known to be a very slow team. You know, they kind of spent way too much time. And in the current state of Ancient, I don't think you can really afford to do that, especially when mid control is heavy. You can't be slow into taking, you know, different areas of the map because the CT side, as you said, like, as we've said, it's a CT side of the map. They all, all they have to do is drop a bit of utility and playing slow won't work out. You kind of have to play burst of aggression, faster paced Counter-Strike. But considering France gets started on the CT side and you said that, you know, their CT side is arguably better on a map like Overpass possibly. I don't really know what to expect here, actually. Uh, we'll just have to see when we get to the server because on the other end of the spectrum, Spain are a little bit of an unknown quantity right now. We kind of have a bit of a few bits of information here or there, but not quite enough to paint the full picture. Yeah, when, when I watched them previously on Overpass, I was kind of left wanting more, wanting to see what the CT side was made of. If they, if that map had have gone any longer, it would have been because they lose more CT sided rounds, so it wouldn't have shown any promise. But here on Ancient, they start obviously on that counter terrorist side so we'll get to see a bit of a change of flair here in this particular series and obviously the first time that we've seen it on overpass then that's all thrown into uh, throwing a spanner in the works yet again and maybe they start on the t side that time uh, but yeah I, I i would say that france are probably the, the the favorites coming into this second map i didn't see anything from spain that really uh, gave me any any real hope 
and we are already into the action. I say already, we did have a, a long technical pause, and mid seems to be the approach. Uh, in through Donut, the A site's the target. I have a bit of a different lineup here. It's Reyna on the server this time around. So, will that affect the squad? I don't know, because it does replace AD as well, and it's a complete decimation on the A bomb site. CT swarming around and doing so much here and miss it to close it out. Four players saying hi for France, and that round was done in a matter of moments. And we're going to see a technical pause right back on the server. And yeah, the key moment there, France getting the rotates in so fast, being really proactive on the map, getting that information and having all five players towards the A bomb site uh, before Spain can even think about getting the C4 down. All of their players are just eliminated in its entirety. This, though, is worrying because we just had a very long technical delay and now players exiting the server. Seems like it could be a player issue because Reyna Maybe is they played playing. a best of one round. Maybe. Maybe the game's over. <laughs> Not too sure what's happening here. You know, they had a, a bit of a different lineup here. We had Reyna in. She's back in the server. We'll probably need a rollback as well because of that. Yeah, because uh, we have players on minus one kills and stuff like that. Yeah, not looking all too great here. Seems like uh, we've been played by technical issues like yesterday. Uh, but it's all good. At least they got it resolved last time around. Yeah, maybe we're fine without the rollback. Like, they, they've got the standard amount of money, right? feel like that might be all that matters. Oh, right back into the action. Feels no yeah. rollback needed. That's what we love to see here in the WEC. France 1-0 then. Uh, they'll have rifles first. And Spain, not too much to talk of. Not going for a force buy in this one. Uh, after a technical issue as well, you can actually just use this round to decide whether those issues have subsided. Uh, potentially they have. Expecting anything all too quick. And work out if we're... And play even more Counter Strike after this round. I hope so. I want to see some Counter Strike. That's what I'm getting paid for, right? Kind of what we bought into as well. Counter Strike action. France have not failed to show some Counter Strike action so far. And this is what I was talking about. Kind of that B lean. You know, it doesn't really work an A side take on a pistol round. That's why we kind of saw Spain get destroyed. The B side is really the best side to take for such a basic execute because it's just that the cts can really hold from you know different angles and hold down is like two different choke points we're gonna get challenged in a she'll take alba down who's just pestering but while that's all happening the flash is on to the b bomb side astra to find the first second things stop looking for another runs out of bullets which is out for the usp there's a team kill by reyna and uh, that's it in the end not too good there and i'm um, not going to be good for the economy at all that team kill uh, in there as well, not finding a single frag, nor the bomb plant as well, as, fan, uh, as France strike a second. That's actually a problem because France went heavy into the rifles, um, only the one SMG picked up, so what would ordinarily look like a bonus round with a couple of MP9s, Rainer is actually down to minus two kills now. Sneaking underground, below the scoreboard. He's got to try really hard. If she has an amazing round here, she might end up on the zero kills after the round's done. See this. This mommy gets that first kill. Julie, very aggressive up on the smoke. Like I said, aggressive plays. We're going to be able to see that throughout this entire map of ancient bursts of aggression. And she actually <laughs> she gets alive? away scot free. Not for long, though. Marion peeks through from the mid ramp side, takes that frag as well but they've been lingering here in cave they kind of have to make a move here don't know who's gonna make the move though that smoke does subside and fade away astra spawn at the first jiggle peek and good for that kill emerald though looking to double back down near the support to be found and even holds it down for a second oh no it's falling apart here for spain a four and two but one guiding situation here is the fact that emerald is on 16 points of health and that might be uh Quite of use for them as they execute here, possibly to that B site. Let's test for Team France. A two versus two here. It's quiet is going to be the first prong on this approach. And everybody has exodus from this B bomb site. That C4 can safely go down. Now the question becomes, do France even want to go for this one? I imagine that they'll hunt for an opening pick. 
and respond off the back of that information. Spain can very safely get into after plant positions. So this is really hard to dig your way back into. Emerald going for the flank. She's gone all around this map, getting her 10,000 steps in this round. It's so hard to break apart one of these after plants, especially when they're in a, a position that perfectly counters where you're coming from. This flank is going to be null and void. Nice smoke grenade. Uh, and both players with kits. But they're running out of time, Tiddler. They've got almost no seconds left on the clock. There is actually another smoke grenade. I'd way prefer to put it on the bomb. But both players coming in from opposite angles. And she is out of time. That bomb's going to explode. First round on the board for Spain. Yeah, France really stretching the clock there in that retake. Could have bought themselves time. You could see how sort of panic Spain sort of became when that first tap on the bomb came through. You could see them trying to push through the smoke um, because uh, France did drop that utility when in all honesty, they didn't even need to peek through smokes because the other side wasn't smoked off until the first smoke did subside. So it could have been a bit of a misplay out from Spain, but it wasn't too, you know, crucial because France did spend a lot of time for that flank as well. Uh, so Spain had the time on their side, so I guess they could afford to make a, a play like that. We'll see how, what they'll bring to the table here in round number four. Uh, this on their T side, they're going to have that bomb leaning towards A bomb side, but the numbers on the other hand leaning towards B. B control, like I said, so integral that even though that bomb might be heading towards A, the B side players always trying to take something out of the CTs. Astros Famous is ready and has support from all angles. France need this one, otherwise they're forced back onto an eco going into round number five, and we find an even Stevens scenario with Spain holding all of the momentum. One minute, Astra decides to go for the aggressive swing behind the single flashbang, unable to find any results, not meriting all too much. Is Emerald the next to be plucked out of the equation, and here come the AK-47s, putting on even more pressure. Mariam, second in the round. This Famous has been totally, it's totally out of bounds. Yeah, she's not finding her way back in here. Even though the HPs are low, it's just four players up against her. Like I said, these sites can be a little bit hard to retake. Especially with just being alone, like I said. It, it wouldn't be... Her fees won't be possible. She's looking for exits. Might be able to kind of force them into this bomb site so that they do fall to the bomb. But, yeah, they've been able to get away. These players will be able to save their, their rifles. I don't know about Alba, though. She's on one point of health. But, nonetheless, well, she won't be able to survive. But, yeah, Spain taking that round pretty, pretty swimmingly, pretty nicely. Seems like they have a little bit more fire to them than uh, what they showed on Nuke. They did have a decent enough start to their T-side up on Nuke, but it was short-lived. And France, already so far up, were able to just take the map pretty easily. Um, so maybe here on Ancient, they can show more of that T-side prowess. They start on it, so you have a little bit more of a chance than France do. They're controlling and dictating the pace. You saw... Astra tried to go for an aggressive swing. It didn't pan out in her favor, not meriting any results. Ants really struggle in these disadvantageous situations. They've got another one here with the shaky force by. Lots of mid pressure. Misser actually gets the information. So that forces Emerald back towards the A bomb site where she has to combine with Marion to try and stop the C4 from going down right through the smoke. They're not going to expect that one. A follow up headshot. There's Mariam finally taken down to just a few points of HP. I'm down regardless. Two players still holding from the main and donut side respectively. Nissa not hitting that shot, so it makes it so difficult right now. The AK sure can get into battle, but how do you even approach it from here? It's going to be a save. France can't do anything about things. Spain have done a fantastic job here of exploiting that A-bomb site, swinging around the players of France and making sure that they can create a gap in the defense. And I'm really impressed so far by the T-side of Spain. They didn't let that first map uh, sort of phase them at all. I'll be having a little bit of a longer break, but this is a, a really nice uh, sort of new leaf Spain that we're seeing right now. And that break probably favors them as well. It allows you to just regain some mental composure, forget the woes of map number one, and come in fresh for an ancient 2 3. Their first lead in any map in this series. 
Jakey buy for France. Remember, that was a force. So very low money going into round number six. And Spain likely to extend their lead. We'll see this uh, back into play as Marion does push on four. Quiet tagging up and taking Marion down. Five on four situation has been created out from this. We'll back right into the action. Just with pistols and a single AK that has been saved over as Marion already taken out of the round. We'll flash over out of Donut. Double flash as well. Be another A side take, but nobody's here. Nobody's home. Should be able to get this bomb down. Hold it down. And once more, France. They're going to concede a round possibly here, but Astra says not yet. She finds a Deagle frag, taking Mami down. And we'll push on forward slowly. It seems like might be just the case of exit frags possibly. As they have another AK retrieved, a pistol, actually two pistols, maybe looking for a bit of a hunt, maybe set up for exit frags so that they can pick up weapons of their own. But other than that, that's the round done. Yeah, successful round, all things considered. Move out of it with more rifles than you started. They took one in, two out. That's perfectly fine. Unless Mariam's able to sweep Astra's AK-47 away. And unfortunate on the timing there. Joined by Alba. Now, what's this damage going to look like? Maybe even forfeiting the final AK-47 as well. Julie doesn't want to take the approach. Ooh, oh, quick headshot before we finish. So, style points for that one. 2-4. Nevertheless, Spain looking a lot better here on Ancient. It is their map pick. Uh, and they do seem fairly prepared. Like, I've got to say, this T-side looks a, a lot better than the little we saw of their T-side earlier on Nuke. I'm seeing parallels from watching a lot of Bigger Keeper and the Spanish T-side so far. It seems like they've been influencing this, even though it's only one Bigger Keeper player playing so far for this. I, I, I'm seeing a lot of bursts of aggression, seeing, you know, a lot of those signature A-side plays that they do take. We even saw it in the pistol round. And off underway again. Four and five to get started. Quiet though, with the M4 taking Julie down. Not find the same amount of success, but that AWP being whipped out. Emerald, fantastic with it. And Astra down to five points of health. It seems like they know this exactly. And a one for one trade now. A three on three situation has been created out from this. And again, France are not in position to try and hold this one down. But Misa is still in towards Cave. Does grab Alba, who tries to flank back around from the mid side. Now down to a two on three. A three on one now for Mami. Very difficult one at that. She's looking at the wrong way. Marion is right behind her. She's actually on the bomb site. Does she check this momentarily? Finds the first and there's that immediate trade. Bomb defused and France strike back. Get another run on the board. Really heads up play from Misa inside the cave as well. Not giving away her position until she's found that first kill. It can be really tempting when you hear the entirety of that B-bomb site just being overrun to peek out of cave, try and steal away a kill, but you're probably walking into a bunch of players just congregating into one another, and Alba had no idea that she was still here. Three rounds now for Team France, as, well, we might be closing the gap ever so slightly. We haven't, we've yet to see uh, Emerald's AWP do all too much, but as you mentioned, um, she's really, really potent with it. Sending it towards B this time. Expect that up to take passive lines. Ah, oh, Julie snuck in. Oh, no. Free She's kill. That first kill. Yeah, but immediately traded out. That's been good. That's been a good job out from Spain and equally as good from France to use a Molotov to drop that down. A lot of teams wouldn't have dropped that Molotov. They kind of would have went for the fight first and would have been a mistake. But Mami holding it down again. B side presence so difficult to contain, but miss it again. Uh, an important frag in this round to keep things afloat. If she had fallen, that would have been the B side as well to go along with it. Very uh, difficult situation that we have on here. Um, yeah, it's split across. Just from uh, I don't know to see out of this. It's going to be a one for one again outside. Uh, B side of things. We'll be back to two on two situation. Op and M4 into battle. They're quite sp spaced out here. Does Marion push on forward and catch off this rotate? I don't know. It seems like she's checking for it. 
Might have been heard from Marion. No, she doesn't hear it at all because that information would have been relayed. It would have been an A side rotate. So they'll get this bomb down. It's going to be a pleasant surprise out here for France. And plenty of time to make the rotate as well. So by the time they probably get into the A bomb side itself, the bomb will be taken pretty far. But they're actually fast on their heels. And equally, Spain are taking a lot of time. That up, not quite going to get that shot. Wow. Or oh, actually does get that shot. I didn't even realize. It, it looked like that because the observer switched POV very quickly. Now Emerald looking to enter on it. She just runs through. No respect, no regard for this opposing side. Now tagging off. Damage dealt. Wrapping around the other side. Last bullet. Marion does it. I can't believe it. Very fine margins. And I thought that kill, or I thought Emerald that had is died so there. so cruel from the observer there. Oh, honestly, <laughs> to switch at that exact moment is like a caster's nightmare. I, I was 100% sure that Emerald had died. There was yeah. no... Yeah. Uh, she does find the shot, though. And uh, Marion just unable to hold up in the one versus two. Too many spots to look at there. 4-4 four, four here. France back onto even turf. And we just know how strong their T side is on every single map. So uh, I know that we talked about some of the woes that slower teams can have here on Ancient. But they need to do so much more than this. And Julie's already falling. This A site is about to get attacked. But bomb spotted and Marion can't stay alive. She's got Mariam right behind her. Well, that's a bit of a problem here. Three on three situation as Emerald now holds it down. Looking up for the nade to be dropped in. A Molotov as well to support as Marion gets that bomb down. Wouldn't be a problem. There goes that bomb taken away. Emerald though holding the angle here. It's going to be a three-point attack from all three different positions here. Sides from that CT section. Might be in for a world of hurt here. Considering that they're all locked in in the same position. So Mami will have to hold an off angle here. It's going to be Emerald to probably clear this one out. No, it's Astra to do so. She... Creates for his contact. That's information also. Emerald's able to peek on through and pre-fire it. Now the trade to come in finally from Missa. But it's too hot to handle as there's other two players in Donut. They tried to creep on in, get a little bit of information piece by piece, second by second. But Spain, they just stood their ground and they used it to their advantage. As now France, they're going to have to call a tactical pause on this. Spain are bringing the fire in this first half. You see that really savage a site attack. You talked about it earlier. Um, kind of flashbacks uh, to some of their professional games in ESL Impact. Strokes of genius here from that Spain T side. It's really hard to unseat three players from Donut if you don't have a smoke grenade. And even if you do, they're going to just spray right on through. France a deficit and back to pistols here in round number 10. Haven't really seen Emeralds um, get get really get really fired up in this series. Five kills in the first couple of rounds since picking up the AWP. Only two more. Can't really blame her too much. It was kind of a, a capitulation of that A site. Spain a little too fast up mid, and this seems to be something of the fast variety yet again up against a stack here. And they're just running in with the Mac 10, helping out Marion to get the first. Uh... USP getting activated and online. Mac 10 to support once more. It's a shooting gallery here on the A bomb site, yet it's favoring the pistols. I can't believe it. The Molotov now to drop in. That smoke as well will block off that angle. That is such a smart Molotov there. They know that there's so many guns just burrowed all around the A site, and yeah. that means that the, the pistol can't get close. Yeah, they'd probably just run in if that Molotov wasn't there just to overwhelm them. And Mami could be able to create a flank here. Alva, though, you know. A lot of her hands there, so she will die. So Mami now in a one-on-two, but this is looking good. Mac 10 picked up. We're going to overwhelm on her left side. Does she expect it? She doesn't, but she adjusts perfectly onto Astra. It's a tale of woe now for France. The CT side hasn't really got going, and they've only been able to provide spots of brilliance so far. Bane finding a decent foundation on their T side. Really damaging round, always horrible to lose four players, but Spain recovered that perfectly. They realized that if they backtracked all the way over to B, they would have lost all of the rifles and probably the round with it. Even against unarmored pistols, you just don't want to give away three AK-47s, even against unarmored opponents. France, though, they've got a buy of their own right now. Emerald back with the AWP and Julie taking lots and lots of mid-control. Both of these smokes allow her to... 
boost upwards and onwards as she sees the Molotov fly on through. She knows that there's presence on the other side of this smoke and is more than ready to try and take this one away. Turns around, worst possible second. Alba, how does she catch that timing? She was pretty quiet on that map for Nuke as well and she has been pretty heavy hitter. Reyna, only on one kill so far. It was zero because she was on minus one. Astra holding it down though while this is all happening. A two for two though. Advantage still maintained from Spain. That all does do a bit of damage. Not enough to warrant the frag. Holds the cage side, but that's not the position that they're at. Kamarna spotted one. That's information. Maybe cutting them off. But she decides to go towards CT. What a smart play. That puts the pressure here on France completely. They're in like a pressure chamber right now. Marion now looking to support. Marion taken down. And the last player in CT. It's Emerald. Caught knife in hand. Oh, this is going to be a weird battle, but Emerald wins it out. Just really sharp and up still. Has been continuing on, but it simply hasn't been enough as a seventh is on the board for Spain. Great from Mariam in quiet as well to prioritize the flank and then go back for Emeralds. You've got to take on one of the prongs of that, uh, of that flank. You don't want to be fighting a war on two fronts there, even in a retake scenario. And Emerald forced to save the AWP. Another tactical timeout for Team France. What are they going to be discussing here? This CT side really hasn't been all it's all it was shaped up to be. Spain just playing a really, really good terrorist side as well. Not just taking rounds, but looking really dominant all over the map. They seem to be very aware of what's going on here on Ancient. Successes on both bomb sites as well. Not just a, a brutal A attack, but they're switching it in with these B rushes as well. Smart heads up play. Yeah, they're not really versed here, it seems like, France. They're making kind of your typical mistakes on that CT side, especially when you haven't played it all too often. It's really... The fact that Spain are able to take both bomb sites is, is a worry in itself. On a map like Ancient, it, it should be that A site that is uh, the more susceptible of the two, especially when it comes into the late round. But Spain have been able to just simply execute onto either bomb site. It's been no problem, and we'll see in... Uh, a half or an eco in general. Astra again with the deagle to open up. Julie peeking through, and that is just a run on in from Spain, just disrespecting. Uh, so it's an easy clean up here for France. Now down to a one on three. Pretty doable. Bomb has to be picked up here, but has to isolate these gunfights. The spacing not all too good from France. Two players congregated together. Might be able to get the first and possibly make things a one on two. Pushing forward, quite gets the first. Now Marion coming in from the cage side, one from the flank as well. Does only tap the bomb, but this could be a distracting play as Marion holds it down, actually. No, it's not even Emerald to find their kill. It's Marion who crept out of the cave in France. You know, Spain, they got a bit overconfident, I feel. They just ran into the bomb site knowing that it would have been an eco. And France was there pleasantly surprised. They were waiting for Spain to walk right their crosses, and they did so just there. And that's the problem with facing a team on maximum loss bonus, is they can have deadly pistols, this pistol body armor combination, in literally any rounds. Emerald's AWP was the only rifle on the server, and it's the one weapon that barely had to fire, not connecting with any shots. Nevertheless, still a France round, a convincing one as well. So, approach this round for Spain. Just probing and testing the waters as per usual. That fast round did not work out all too well, but we'll see what they do here. They're playing these close range angles. That crossfire established. That flash blinds them, but Astra spamming through. A very small opening. Pretty easy spray through for her. Put the Mac 10 running through. Looking at disrespect, and Astra holding it down again. Advantage found by France. It seems like there's a bit of a bit of a shift in their their tactic book right now as Astra finds another. She's looking for four. Only, uh, you know, barely any money out here for Spain. And there it goes. France find the round. You know, they, they aren't really fragging all too much here, Spain. It, it kind of has been front-loaded. You have, uh, you know, three players fragging out. The rest not looking all too great. Reyna only having two kills. What if they had, like, 80 on the server? Um, you know, uh, you know, the teammate, former, or the teammate of uh, Mariam back in Big Equipa. And like we said, using a lot of their strap book in uh using a lot of their strap book here on ancient and um i wonder what would have happened especially if she was able to frag out as well but those are only speculations kind of have to just play with the cards you're dealt with right now you're gonna call a tactical pause on this 
I uh, wonder what the switch up will be here for Spain. Maybe looking to secure now a lead at the end of the half. Yeah, I think they've got really deep strategy uh, here on this particular map. So potentially other options to go to. Emerald back with the AWP. Three AK-47s for the CT side of France. I feel like they desperately need to just win this half out 8-7. to seven. We know how good their T side is as well. So scraping back rounds. I'm not worried for Team France just yet. But lose a pistol, lose that first rifle round on the next half. And this map can really start slipping away incredibly quickly. This one's going to be a fast B execute again. And that nade is brutal. How much damage was that? Over 200. Astra's able to spray away two for one. And flashbang in for Misa. She's going to go really fast into this bomb site. Mamie's going to fall. C4 down. And only one AK-47 salvaged on Reyna. She's got to step up in a massive way right now. All of her teammates are falling all around her. And Marion's able to sweep her out of the server. Just the Tech-9 to take down. But Marion's snuck into a really compromising position. And they have no idea. Both players with kits. They're looking the wrong way. And Marion turns around just in the nick of time. But they, they can't find this bomb. Have they got enough time? Yes. Like yes they do. Yes. Just they do. enough. A couple of seconds. Oh, put it on close there. They didn't find the bomb. I understand the pain of that. And the panic that sets in when you don't immediately find it. France now recovering. Seems like Spain has slowed down quite a bit on their T side. It's the first time still... that we've seen France panicked, though, right? Yeah, it, it really is. And But now, they, at least they have recovered. Like, it could have been a lot worse than this. Uh, I feel like Spain, they played their cards right. And some of the, you know, few rounds that, Spain, uh, that France did win kind of were based on the fact that Spain made mistakes that really that they haven't been doing most of this map and are a bit unfortunate. If they just ironed it out, it could be a different story. And it's a spray through. Julie with two. Now only one player onto the bomb site. There has to be a fast rotate through. Marion is in a bit of trouble. Has to get back on the default boxes. Has to live to fight another day. Gets distracted a little bit. Now this donut player has a time to afford to peek through, but it's a complete cleanup, a decimation once more on the A bomb side as France. Swimmingly take the last few rounds there. Four rounds in a row, you see there on the round history. It's been a game of both teams getting streaks of rounds together, it seems. Yeah, that's one of the big win conditions for Team France, right? Finishing off this half with a with a lead, with a one round lead. We know how CT sided uh, Ancient can often be. Let's see what Spain has prepared here for their CT pistol. Rain is going to hold that single smoke grenade along with a flashbang, so no kit here on the defense. As France play everybody towards B, we might finally see this B pistol rush. Let's see it. I'll split. More uh, orthodox practice for teams is just to take the B side take on the pistol round. Uh, we saw it really not work out for Spain in the pistol of the last half. And we see why here, because the B side, look out. Easy it has been to get into the actual bomb site, but the thing is holding it down after they get the bomb plan is a bit of a different story because they're getting stormed through. Issa finding back and she's getting another now. It'll be interesting. Just that bomb looks to be retrieved here and they're going to push through so that they can secure control of it. Now storming in. Oh no, the numbers have fallen bit by bit and they've won it out here, Franz. The B side take looks to have fallen. They got in the sight and they all walk into their crosshairs and France just take the round. And one of the big problems that Spain have been walking into all day is that mechanical skill from Team France. Even if they're behind in a 2v5, 2v4, how many times have we seen France take those really desperate situations? 9-7, they extend their lead. It'll be a four spy here from Spain. They've got a couple of MP9s. And you can't help but think that they need this round here. Otherwise, France might start really running away with this half. We know how slow, meticulous they can be on the T side. And Astra already opens up the fragging. Yeah, underway again. France starting to get activated on their T side. Showing what they're made of in the server. They've overtaken this. Mami good for one. And actually good for a second. It's not going to affect too much of this round. It's not going to affect the outcome. Because she's gotten those kills on the opposite end of the map where France, they're kind of just poking and prodding, trying to get a few kills to boost themselves. Reyna is the difference maker here if she wants to recover this round. She'll take this first battle, but the Mac 10 destroys her. 
And uh, Mami, well, probably not realizing and accepting her fate, she backs away, says it's Deagle in the smoke and her head armor. And this round is done. A tenth round, double digits now for France. Could this be where their T side starts to shine a lot more than the than the Spanish T side? And possibly lead them to victory. We'll have to find out. We'll almost definitely see an 11-7 here. Spain won't have enough money into the next. And yeah, what's the what, what's the changeup going to be? We've not seen a CT AWP yet, so going into the first real gun round of this half, that'll be a change that they can put into place. They need all five players firing, though. Um, if you've got even one small gap in your defense, I feel like a, a methodical team like France are really going to stop and exploit that. Emerald does have an AWP of her own. In a little quieter here on map number two, just such a such a fiery player. Not just yesterday, but in map number one of this series, and she's going to have a lot of targets. Quick kill. Needs to back away, though. You don't want to give away this AWP. Just let the AK-47 in Galil take the fight. France clean round, only losing one of those rifles, and that's just what the doctor ordered. Five away from victory. Five away. And they're kind of pacing themselves towards there pretty nicely. Spain now with the NATO EP of their own quiet, now wielding that big green. We'll see what they're going to be able to challenge for or how they're going to bring this up into play into this round. I'm excited to see. It's going to be into the house side. Mid seems to be where that off wants to get into action. Don't know how it's going to find itself into use though because she is immediately smoked off out from France and they're not going to take early mid control. They're just going to hold it. But now a re-smoke, a re-flash possibly to come on through. Uh, there's not a lot of mid control though out from France, so this could be handed over to the side of, or no mid control out from Spain, excuse me. So France could be able to be granted, uh, could be granted a bit of a path or entry back into the A bomb site. Quiet or trained on the cave angle. As we flick back to the other side of the map, it's quiet about to press the issue here against Astra. She's been waiting on this for so long, prepared for the headshots, but gets traded. That favors the T side though, Tiddler. As the flashbang might actually pull somewhat of a rotation. They're staying put though. Spain firm in their A defense, which the bomb is certainly a signal that this is where it's eventuating. Marion with the mid control. We've seen this so many times in high level CS. This is the real key pivot point on the map to count out the rotations. And Reyna has yet to stand above any of these challenges. Oh, Needs to hit multiple shots here, otherwise the A site's gonna completely fall. The rotates held at bay, no. and she's not able to find a single frag. That's dangerous. Leaves it all down to Mariam here, as that flank, it's picking them apart. That's gonna create extra diversions here on the A bomb site. His Mimi might not be able to find anybody on the cross. 10 seconds left, just how France like it. And that C4 goes down to secure a 12th. No, that was never going to work out from the CT defense. They were trying to occupy... Each player was occupying more than one angle. That was impossible to hold. Marion was trying to hold the A main opening and help out Reyna. But she was also checking behind her in mid. That defense was way too, you know, shaky. You can't really be doing that. And when they were entering back... Or entering into the bomb site... All France really had to do was get the kills because at that point, Spain were caught off in unlikely or very difficult positions here. And catching my attention here is, Ma uh, is Mami. She gets uh, quite a few kills there. Miss again that kill. But as I said, France just, or Spain just occupying themselves into positions that are really shaky. You can't really be watching those two angles at the same time. They were in good positions previously, but they shifted it. Reyna got a little bit aggressive, and considering she hasn't been able to get much on the board in terms of the frag department, might have wanted to stay with her teammate and kind of work together in harmony in unison to hold out that A bomb side. And France now are really looking like they're going to take this series. Pistols whipped out once more for Spain. Let's see if they're able to change the momentum with pistols and armor, though. Often when CT sides find their ground, ironically, because it costs less... Emeralds 
one of the players holding cave missed towards this side of the map as well but there's three players holding their attention towards this side of the map and missa might be about to walk right into it it's almost impossible that she's going to be able to take all three of these opponents down but maybe fishing for information and allowing the bomb to go elsewhere that could be the play here doesn't want to over aggress and potentially give away an ak-47 so backing off to more passive lines be burst on B. They look to flank around, don't catch something, but they're ready for it. What they might not be ready for is more players storming in. Might not expect the two cave players, but they smoked it all, so it seems like they're aware of that position. There is a trade on forward, but now the numbers have dwindled away so much here. Emerald just has to hold. She should be good for this shot if she peeks on through. Not quite. Nice shoulder peek to bait out the shot. Astra takes Mariam and Quiet's position is known. This is a closed round, a sealed round. 13 for France and moving on forward. Spain, their economy is not looking great, especially on the CT side where it's a lot harder to build up. It's going to be so difficult to... Uh, it's so difficult to recover from because if their economy gets broken, it's a long cycle to get back on their way to getting another buy. So they lose this, it's going to be 14. Eco territory is calling 15 and 16 it's looking very difficult now really nicely dealing with the threat of those pistols inside of cave it's how often do we see it where an ak-47 just walks in practically blind gives away the rifle 13 to 7 here as spain need to pluck another option out of somewhere quiet back with the awp Loads of M4s. Ash is in. Getting a crossfire established, or rather a support play in. Mami to aggress forward possibly, but things better of it. Plenty of players in cave. They've been showing a lot of love here, but it, I feel like it's been a thorn in their side because they focus up on this position, and France have never failed to smoke this position off. Quite's been taken down. Julie takes both to the grave. Um, that might be their hopes and dreams of winning out this series. Now down in the grave with them. Heavy advantage, and it's only one player here towards B. That bomb was towards A, and now shifting towards B. Yeah, they're going to have all of the information as well, because Marion's prodding around the A site, but not going to actually aggress. Not sure if that matters, though, because Julie's just found a third, and she's going to press the issue even further with this AK-47. Not spawning out anybody, but Marion picking up attention elsewhere. So a one versus five here. Reina's not going to go for it. 14 to France. And that might just be the straw that breaks the camel's back of this map. Felt like France um, were really shaky on the on the CT side. I said that I wanted to see what their defensive halves had to offer. Not, not too much. They, they were able to win the half, but only just. Chaining together four at the very end. Taking the pistol as well. And only eight on Ancients. It goes yeah. hi what, what do you reckon the odds are of reina staying alive there are uh, i'm gonna say very close to zero probably zero at that point no way in hell she's gonna get out of there but 14 well this is getting closer and closer france um yeah they've just broken away spain just nothing to offer on their ct side and like i said the last round there, you know, it's way harder to build economy on that CT side. They'd only just gotten a buyout after coming off of an eco. And look at this buy once more. Three MP9s and a glorified SMG, which is the FAMAS. And then a single rifle, real rifle on board. How do you even recover from this? Even a gap just slowed that they're looking to exploit. Could be two kills, but it's Reyna to find him. Marion getting that trade right back. And Astra, look at her position. Do they even check this? Is that rifler and Donut even looking towards this position? That's that spot is surely. That's the kill. Could be seen in the deal in this round. Looking for another MP9 all in the angle. And Alba has found that one right back. It was a good start out from her in this map. Speaking of her, because she didn't really get up to speed on Nuke. Impressive how she was able to recover. But France really showing their individual prowess here. Everyone really chiming into the server, fragging out. It was Emerald in map number one. And a bit of Marion. But Julie, Astra, and Missa have not failed to deliver here. Despite. You know, that shaky start that you said that they had. But look at his flank, though. But they're ready for it. Emerald, quick scopes always, always ready for it. 
She's not surviving ever, even after that miss shot. And that's her call here to go towards A. Flash to come over, and it's going to be an execute on in. Yeah, blistering pace needed, and a two versus three for Spain. Don't stop this bomb from going down. That's the main threat here, as the Famous is doing the heavy lifting. Misa now, all isolated and alone with only 30 seconds left. How is she going to pick apart these angles? Getting closer. Nobody exposing themselves, though. This could be a guaranteed round for Spain unless they make the mistake. 15 seconds. Clock. A real pressure. A real issue now. And she's just waiting. Nobody's making the peak. Missa needs to get closer and find both of them. But I don't think she's got enough time to get this kill and plant the bomb. It doesn't matter anyway. Mimi's able to trade it. Good round Spain. It all comes down to the 2v3, though. It does. It does go down to the 2 on 3. And, um... Now in this difficult spot. I mean, maybe those two quick kills, yeah. And, uh... Nice to see Spain recovering right back. Just denying France getting that 15. But, you know, T-side economy staying strong as always. Look at this lineup. That's like a rocks type. <laughs> Running through, and you can see how well first they're on their T side, man. Look at those smokes and Molotovs. But Emerald pushing forward. They hear that scope. They're probably not going to challenge it unless they catch her off guard. Yeah, loses the first member as well. This B bomb site not very well fortified, and the C4 is going this way. Feel like Quiet's the only saving grace of this one. Steals a kill away from the back lines, and Emerald's in combination with Misa. Both take mid in the meantime, and Astra's snuck away all the way to the back of the B bomb site. They have all of the information. They know exactly what's going on, and Astra's oh. going to finish this one off single handedly. What a flick and a statement! Yeah, what a statement. 15 to 8, now 7 match and series points. Oh, how do you even recover from this? You know, that was like the first round Spain had won in this entire second half, the round prior to the last one. And I don't see them coming back from this. It's been nearly a flawless T side out from France. Their T sides are so impressive. It really is so impressive. They're going to run, run in. Astra leading the charge. Cracking out as always. It's Mami coming out with the P9. They didn't expect her. Astra though has gotten that kill in CT. Not going to get anything more than that. Look at the man who rotates in. But they've already blocked off these positions. Emerald holding the back lines. This is certainly done as Spain now are in a very difficult situation. Miss has already gotten that one onto Mariam. Reyna, last one alive. Not going to be able to do much. France take the series. 2-0. to zero, A dominant victory on Nuke. Followed by a relatively dominant second half on Ancient. I feel like Spain getting that good start. You know, kind of reminding me of Iceland when we did the Northern Europe, um, you know, region. Where they got that really good start, but nothing much more after the first seven. But yeah, anyways, that's it. Nothing much more to say. Just a brilliant performance from France all around. And at least we got a little bit of a closer matchup than we, you know, we saw earlier on. Yeah, and a tale of the T sides, right? Um, they took they they only lost three total rounds on their T sides across an entire best of three. And if that's not a statement, I don't know what is. Uh, in the meantime, we are actually going to this Israel versus Serbia game back over to the male division. Um, they're getting into Ancient. Last I heard, they were 6-6 six, six on Ancient. So what we'll do is we'll go to a very short break and then we'll join in um, somewhere in that second half. One purpose. One dream. One rhythm. One step closer to glory. Enemy spotted. They say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The one 
those who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. think you've got what it takes. The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy they say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. think you've got what it takes. The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. 
who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy they say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? Welcome back, everybody. A different series, but the same map as we're back on Ancient for Serbia versus Israel. They've already played a half, but it was as close as it could possibly be an 8 7 start. Really excited to see this. Plenty of firepower on the Israeli side. They'll get underway using that firepower in the mid side with a push forward, trying to destroy this T side, and Mori has done it. Dragon though fighting right back again, challenging forward. He gets a headshot on Tomori, shutting it down now, down to a one on two. This is a very fiery start. Doesn't have the bomb in his control, will drop a smoke, but there's a huge gaping hole and he's only going to walk into his death, surely. Doesn't even retrieve the bomb in all that battle. And that do those duelies at long range will be a bit of a struggle. We'll grab that bomb and head right out of there. Oh, he's stolen it. He's actually going back for more though, as the dual <laughs> fretters say no. Blue Phoenix is going to end the round instantaneously. Those dual fretters are so hit and miss, quite literally hit and miss. Sometimes they just railgun players through smokes, through walls, and then the rest of the time you can't hit the broad side of a barn door with it. 8-8 eight, eight here, Israel. I think that's probably quite a key pistol here on the CT side of Ancient. I still have them as very strong favorites. Even at this level of play, Ancient can be a very CT-sided map. And they're loving the mid control in the early portions of these rounds. We saw a pistol round where basically all five players from the CT side rushed down mid. And this time it's just the MP9 deciding he's on mid duty. Hindu doesn't get that information early. Oh, finally spots a shoulder. Unable to hit Mezdal's face. Why is it they didn't go for the rifles? Israel are a particularly good team on this uh, map. Most notably taking a few names in the Blast Major RMR. The Asia Division. Really good players on this map. So expect to see a lot of really ballsy maneuvers and plays from them. Per usual. They're getting ready here to... Throw themselves to the eight bomb site, Serbia. Mori might be in for a surprise as they try to head into the bomb site now, dropping all their smokes. Blue Phoenix holding from the big box and he holds it down. Mori is the one to find two kills, so they'll keep the advantage as that bomb wants to go down. Look, this one talking about the ballsy plays that Israel make are so insane. Now down to a one on three impulse, now up against this, gets another. Has to respect this here, Israel. But they have a crossfire that is really nice to hold down. And held in the end there as Israel strike a ninth. Yeah, this is what um, weaker teams don't really realize about the A site of Ancient is that bomb plant is so isolated. If you just charge through those smokes, you're often at the advantage on the CT side, especially as that bomb is going down and an extra player cannot shoot. Serbia struggling to get onto the board in the early portions of this T side. The Deagles come out, uh, but no body armor. Just a, a very minimal buy here. Our first Deagle getting smoked off. Just firing one pop shot off through. That was uh, closer than he'll ever imagine. Just a, a couple of millimeters away. Kindu, though, he's taken the initiative towards this B bomb site where there are three defenders waiting. Shushan being one of them with the m 3 one s Serbia have not made their mind up yet. Bomb's still back by the A site. They're more or less just exclusively looking for damage, though. Maybe that bomb plant as well. I feel like that is more of a 
better prospect to look towards considering Israel, or rather Serbia in general, have been able to get to the bomb sites. It's really just been Israel cleaning them up. Gonna head towards the nut. Mori is holding this. Deagle pre-firing through, but not gonna be able to fire off a shot. Chushan holding it down in mid. Flattened though with quick to Deagle Frank, but he doesn't expect another player to be there. That's the problem. Israel just piling numbers on like a machine. So he just ran on through thinking it was completely clear, but that wasn't the case. And Israel now starting to get up to speed here on their CT side. The weapons now, however, are out for Serbia. Blue Phoenix doing a really good job at changing his position and keeping unpredictable on the CT side. Sometimes burrowed really close to those A smokes. Sometimes all the way back in Donut. Serbia just don't really know where he is. A couple of admirable shots from Vlad, but it's going to be 10 to 8 regardless. The AK 47's finally in their hands. And Shushan has that AWP. More vintage mid-aggression out of the M3-1S's. As Mezdor, he's the first CT to fall. But Serbia have lost two members in his place. And Kindo is on 25 HP. He's been knocked down to a quarter in the meantime. These positions, though. Vladin catching Blue Phoenix off. His plays up in Donut, Vladin, have been particularly effective. Have been bit annoying for the Israeli side. Spread across though, these players are spaced really far away from each other. So Shushan, if he peeks out and gets his first kill, there shouldn't be a trade on board. Oh, spots out the gun barrel. The nick of time, he's able to get back out. Now he has the support of his teammates here. Two players in Donut now can play the trading game. Has a smoke and flash to his name, but there is support coming in from the main side. It's all about the Donut play. Smoking that off does buy it for Davey who looks to push forward. He's gonna stick the bomb. Never mind, Vladin gets that kill, Mori right back, it's now a one on two. I feel like if he did stick the bomb, he would have gotten it. But he just, just never any, <laughs> never any security in it. Runs through, gets a no scope, and he gets both of them, but the time is just not there. They probably thought he was sticking it or something afterwards, they are so blinded. That was a hectic round squid, I didn't even know what happened. Everybody dies. Everybody gone. 10-9 here. Yeah, that, that that's such a that's such a wild round. There are smokes everywhere, flashes in your face. Um, Davy really unfortunate on mid to get team flashed. He was right behind the pack and nobody watching onto mid from Donut. Uh, Serbia slowing down the pace though with a tactical timeout. I think that that might be an, an important thing to do at this point after a really hectic round like that. Lower the temperature on the team and try and even further back into this game beating this force by would close the distance entirely and they would debatably be in the lead it would be a, a full eco from israel into the next big risk here in round number 20 what are they going to do with it we've been seeing loads and loads of mid aggression so don't be scared if you see these smokes flying down the middle of the map and lots of Aggression taken. Those nades all going towards the mid. Oh, no way. Out of all the rounds for Israel to get a decent start in, it's going to be that eco or force buy rather with the p pistols as well. Oh, no. You know, that's taking that right back and feels like Israel, their sort of early start, the early breakthrough has been destroyed. Both players split across both bomb sites as well, so it's just going to have to be an individual play from one of these, you know, players just to even remotely get close to winning out this round. It'll have to be like a spray down of some sorts, and Shushan has been taken down, so now it's a one on three. And Mori way too far away from the action. Serbia are biding their sweet time here. Will that be the wrong play? Because we could get this first kill. We'll grab an AK for his troubles. Now could possibly challenge for this B bomb site take from Serbia. Having no defuse kit is a real disadvantage. Sneaks in, but they know where he's playing from. That's where the bomb is planted. We'll see how the positions really work out for him. He does see that the bomb planted is pretty much in the <laughs> He didn't open. like the look of that yeah, bomb planted. He was like, he was like... <laughs> I was like, yeah, you have to look at the bomb plant. Depends on the position. And it seems like he was... You know, thinking the same thing. He was Doesn't on the same to... page. Yeah, he was like, no, no, I'm not trying that. I'm not trying that. I know where they're staying. That's understandable. Crossfire, it could have been anywhere. It could have been any two crossfires with that bomb being so far open. 
Oh, yeah, it's not going to be able to challenge for that. Serbia tying it up, and as you said, it's going to be Nico. So now Serbia have a real chance to take the lead. Yeah, almost a guarantee, right? This is a full eco. Literally zero dollars invested. Here in round number 21 from Israel, they'll be playing every member towards this B site where Serbia is taking most of their focus. The Basically, the only way you can lose a round like this is walking into a stack. It's, it's really hard. You've almost got to be trying uh, to lose it in, in any other way here. And despite that, uh, Serbia still with a massive advantage. Finding that kill might actually force them into the stack further, but they're dealing with it perfectly. Not losing anybody there. Serbia, an 11 to 10 scoreline, the aforementioned scoreline that we were talking about. Five away from victory here on Ancient. As Israel do seem a little bit slow to the punch, I must be honest. No AWP coming out here in round number 22. Just the automatic rifles. They're probably better off without that op, in my opinion. They have just so many good players that are available with the rifle that I feel like if they play around an op of some sorts, which is typical for a lot of teams, that they might be limited in their firepower, especially when they make ballsy maneuvers. Even Shushan, who is wielding that op, can rifle pretty well. We'll see how they hold it down with the M4s in hand. Spraying through Mori, taking a lot of damage, but stunned more into Dragon at the same time. But Kindo has gotten a kill. Mestol taking down. Four or five situation, though. This is doable. And there's only one player on today bomb site, but there's a late take from the donut side that Mori might not be ready for. Israel have to deal with these two players who've stuck into Temple. Mori does spot the bomb, so now they can confirm that it is towards A. But Choiv is able to wrap around Shushan, all isolated. Really needed both of those kills there. But as the smoke saw dissipate, we see only Kindo remains. I really don't know how this one fell apart for Serbia because they had players basically everywhere on the minimap swarming just the entirety of that A site. It's never good when you're being attacked from three places, inside Temple, from Main and Donut, all simultaneously. And nevertheless, Israel final kills. The round going their way. Davy finally being radioed in that information to find that final member and israel close up the gap i think this is going to be a really close map here eight seven at the half nine nine now eleven eleven yeah both these teams can play this map it's really a matter of like i said you know serbia have the tactics while israel have you know that individual brilliance they have that firepower that's where they kind of have a, a bit of a difference there we're seeing uh I think it's a technical. You're a lot going on in the chat. Hopefully it will get resolved as soon as possible. Yeah, but Israel, like I said, firepower, you can see it in the server. And you can see that, you know, they're wait they play a little bit better, I feel, without that op in their hands. I, I know it, it sounds weird, but you can see it. When they were playing with the op, I think they felt really like they had to play around that AWP. You can see how there always had to be a rifler around Shushan. And then whenever they took a bomb site with that opera in it. They ended up both falling while whilst whether it was with rifles they could kind of play for themselves play individually and that's where they found success they played the trading game and it worked out last round and as that pause ends we'll be back into the action impulse peeking through with that up not gonna find a single thing and blue phoenix is gonna look to aggress on forward constant relentless mid pressure that's been the name of the game for the team israel ct side and blue phoenix actually has been spotted so straight through that smoke, the AK-47 goes, but traded. That's absolutely vital for Mori. This up. Trained on this angle. Nice jump up to avoid that shot being effective. Heavy damage onto Mestel, who only wheels at MP9 already. His days look numbered. Those wall bangs also looking menacing considering his HP situation as well. But three men towards the B bomb site. It seems to be where Serbia are looking ahead towards as well. Shushan is here. Rifle in hand. And it's looking scary here because this defense could be very dangerous if they're able to get into positions. Mestel spots out one. Now gonna hold things down. A flash 
Smoke to come on over. Shushan and Davy pushing through. Getting activated along with Davy again. Fighting another. And Vladin now. Another 1v3 situation. And Israel have been able to take things. He is being locked out by this utility. That's such a good nade though. Actually gives him a bit of a foothold into this one. Maybe sprinting towards the A site. We can see it on the minimap. That would be the answer. Oh, and actually gets further information onto mid. Running shoes on. Vladin's going to throw an initial Molotov down, but he needs that bomb plant now. And this is way too easy for Mori to prevent. At the four second mark, swings in. Doesn't want to run the risk that Vladin isn't actually planting that bomb and is able to find the headshot and then plant after. So smart heads up play. They'll be able to retrieve an AWP if they want it. Or they could just carry two AK-47s. It really looks like they're going for the AWP. Where is it? I think it's just at the top of mid. Apparently not. They'll have to defuse this bomb soon. Um, but yeah, you told them to stay away from the AWP. They're picking it up from Impulse's corpse. So a 12th round here for Israel. Want to see that AWP back in action? We'll see what it can do this time around. Maybe my opinion will change, but as of late, that op seems to me from the first view, from the first glance, that it has been a bit of a liability seeing how they play. If they play a little bit more loose around that op, where that op can start to play individually around itself, it's going to be very difficult though. Kashusha only has a smoke to his name, so really can't get him get himself into really like you know, weird positions because he has no utility or anything to kind of use as a get out of jail card it seems yeah, that's where things get a little bit difficult so might have to play a bit behind with his teammates here onto the b bomb site spots out the elbow bit of damage actually onto himself rather not onto an opponent takes a bit of it spots out the elbow but we'll see the start out here for serbia a little bit more slow and controlled and no mid aggression this time around that's been working relentlessly out from israel yeah changing the approach falling into much more passive lines as soon as the smoke blooms inside of the cave, Mestel takes a spray, but doesn't find any damage, no reward. Still a minute left. They've all loved pushing here down ramp, and I feel like they're going to find Impulse for free. There he goes. Oh yeah, they're picking them apart. Serve you the spacing, just not there. Had no information as well, the Deagle's found. But he has found one back. Now that AWP looking to get activated, the Deagle attacking away very scarily. We'll have to back away, we'll let the rifles do the job here, try and deny that bomb. It's gonna get planted, but both players running into Donut, that information is known. Should be a formality from here on forward as Blue Phoenix finds that first kill, and now Dragon left all alone. He's running away, he doesn't want any part of this one, maybe pick up an AK-47 for his troubles, have another rifle. I'd say that's really intelligent. Like, honestly, so many players would just die inside of Donut trying to stop that bomb from being defused. He knows he's got no chance. Despite being at the very top of the scoreboard, 24 kills here on Ancient, 13 to 11. That's our scoreline here. Shushin back with the AWP once again. Uh, we talked about it being somewhat of a disadvantage for Team Israel, but they've been making it work. They've, uh, they're have they not relying on as much aggressive mid-pressure any longer because they do have the long scope of the law. Another tactical timeout here for Team Serbia. Yeah, that AWP, though, didn't really get any kills, so I don't think it's a fair judgment. But those rifles not playing around that AWP, that's a good thing this time around because... The early stages when they did bring that AWP out, yeah, like I said, they, they had to have one player stuck to that AWP that entire time, kind of like his partner. And kind of, like I said, it went to a situation where anytime Serbia would enter a bomb site, it would be both of them falling. And that would be so difficult for Israel to recover from because it's not a single man advantage, disadvantage that they're fighting off. They're fighting a double man disadvantage. That's where the problem lied. But now they kind of separate themselves. It's a little bit looser. It's a nice start. And once more, we're going to see mid aggression. Interesting enough here. Molotov jumped in Mori. Going to challenge for this, taking a lot of damage. Might run away from this angle. But they've taken this big control by storm. I wonder if they'll be expecting Blue Phoenix so close to this smoke. It's something Israel have been doing really frequently here on this CT side. So I can't imagine he's got any element of surprise any longer. 
still with a minute 20 and oh he's snuck in right behind as that smoke dissipates he needs to fall into way more defensive lines he can actually use that t smoke as cover inside the red room as serbia will be the recipient of some newly founded mid control on it again it's gonna be the destination but more playing a closer angle he doesn't know that information that they've walked up in the house that splits or rotate as well this is going to be very important. If they do decide to go away, the A-side players are going to have to hold this one down pretty well. It's going to be an A-side play. They'll have to do this very, very well. This is going to be a very tall task as well. Because along with this, Serbia don't only get the A-bomb side if they go towards A. They get that split rotate as well. They block it off. And it's going to be a lot harder as Troy gets that first kill. Mess still falling. Now a difficult situation once more ensuing. Both players sucking donut as well. That's the main hard part. So they all they have to do is drop a smoke to coordinate off. And again, what do you do here for Israel? Well, at least Troy has been caught off in the middle of the open. That's not good. Dragon, dragon, rather, is uh post open angle impulse holding it. Davy getting a trade. A three on two has been created. A Shushan gets a kill with that off. Now things are getting interesting, but Dragon getting a kill right back. Now down to a 2-on-2. Vladin up in main, holds down for the first. Now that Opera looking to get this trade immediately on in, but Dragon out from Temple. Takes the kill. Ashushin doesn't connect with a shot. Serbia back on the board, finding 12 here. And Israel falling short in that pass round. Israel second-guessing whether they wanted to go for the retake at all, knowing that the money was going to be so low, but lose all three rifles in the pursuit there. It's really hard to turn your nose up at a, a two versus three retake. Man advantage. They'll have horrible weapons here in round number 26. Uh, we talked about the, the fact that this map is probably going to be close from start to finish. And that's exactly as it has been. At halftime, 8-7. We saw 9-9, 11-11 and likely 13-13 to -13 here. Oh, AK-47 oh, spins around, almost able to find Blue Phoenix as well. He survives on a mere 5 HP, but he's losing teammates everywhere. And they'll likely lose the B-bomb site alongside it. The C4 now wrapping around in this direction. Mori won't check this, this angle, so only the Deagle left. And Blue Phoenix will likely hope to save the AK-47, but even that is a tall order. Very tall order at that as well. Double man disadvantage. They're looking to dip their head in the water possibly, but nothing more than that. They're looking for an exit path away from this B site. Serbia have done a fantastic job to take that B bomb site by storm as well. Decimating the numbers. Just to save this AK-47 and this Deagle over to the next round. Maybe the Deagle looking to get a little bit more so that they can save two rifles into the next round, but you can't get you're a little bit too ahead of yourself if you're Israel. This game isn't over and done with just yet. Serbia have made a statement saying that is the case here as they tie up onto 13. Entering crunch time now. This economy will have to get under speed here for Israel. And I feel like even if one or two more rounds come in for Serbia and they break that economy once more, this map might be formality and this map might just fall in the hands of the Serbians. And Serbia will have their chances as well. They'll have back-to-back -back buy rounds here in some of the most key rounds. Uh, in this entire map, Israel with one of their own right now. Back with your favorite tiddler, that AWP. It's being held by Shushan. Blue Phoenix, so poor. All just forced onto the Famous. So he can pick up a smoke grenade. He's going to throw that instantaneously down towards mid. And also aggresses off the back of it. Loads of flashbangs. Forces him into more passive positions. Into this outlet outside of Donut. Mori's able to get that kill onto Dragon. A good start. Single man advantage being created out from this. It's been helping out a single man advantage again. Like I've been reiterating. Really excited to see this op get activated and into action. Impulse able to get that first kill onto Mori. Vladin to peek on through. Helping out the Famas getting the first peeking through again. And Kindle getting that immediate trade back. The Molotov drop through. And a trade on forward. Shusha now looking to... Get up on that op. I gave him a little bit of flack for this, but he'll have to come up huge here for Israel. Like I said, this is crunch time. He holds it down. Gets that first frag. Looking for more. A trade out from Impulse. Now down to a two-on-two -on -two once more. Flashbang to come through. 
Reminded me of the Ents versus FaZe game. 2 on 2s have been so crucial throughout this best of three. On this first map, and Impulse posted up on his angle, almost lining up, getting the first. Now peeking for the second, holding it down for AWP. Serbia have taken the round, and now they're looking to be in the driver's seat now to take this first map. Snatch it away from Israel after seeing such a good opening. Their money is not looking great at all. It's looking horrible. Israel totally lost track of the flank there. They were desperately looking uh, for someone other than um, Impulse's AWP, but that's all they found. 14 to 13, and Serbia now on the home straight. Mori with the single rifle on the defense. This is as dire straits as you get. I like that they put the pistols towards one side of the map and the M4 towards the other. It means he can potentially save it as this one has all crumbled and fallen apart. It will be Serbia map point first. Almost a guarantee at this point, as I don't even know if Mori's going to want to go into this one. He won't have enough money to buy into round number 29. Serbia letting up on the pressure, though. He's got a bit of a flank. Any opportunity to get back into this round is right now. That's the bomb gone. And Vladen takes a little bit of chip damage away from him. So another location spotted. And Mori is doing more. The last player alive forces him to leap through the smokes. Spots out another one. And there's the Molly place to slow him down a little further. All of this utility working wonders. Oh, that spray so close. Just the pillar to defend him. How do you go about this, though? Crossfire established on left and right sides. Triv already has his number as well, holding it down. It's a formality. Serbia finding the 15th. Such a crucial round here. That pressure can be alleviated, knowing that they secured overtime at the least. And even... If they make this round somewhat close, Israel's economy just can't get underway. That's the problem here. Even if Serbia make this round close, when it gets into round number 30, they will still have absolutely nothing going to the next round. They'll be scraping the very bottom of the barrel. Uh, a huge issue now. And Serbia looking good here to take the first map. And Israel have to come up big time. And once again, they go back to Old Faithful. It's going to be that very aggressive mid-take. They love it. This is what their second half has been predicated off. And a lane shot right through the smoke is able to connect onto Vlad. And a key piece of this T-side puzzle taken out of the equation. As Mestel wants to apply the pressure behind. Flashbang. Oh, totally blinds him up. But the B-side compromised in the meantime. This C4 can go down. Go down. But they've gotten another kill. That makes it so much easier. Impulse has come up huge in these past few rounds. And now Bomb goes down. Kindle holding it through. Now a one on three. HP low on Impulse. But Dragon to hold it in the end through the smoke. A map victory out from Serbia. Getting underway. We only joined at halftime. But what we've seen, it was a close affair. But Serbia started to break away towards the end. Yeah, and Serbia just with the staying power there. Like, I don't think that there's a lot that separates these two teams. Honestly, uh, Impulse had 14 kills at the end of that map. And we watched about 10 of them. Like, he seemed to be getting multi-kills in every single scenario. So him stepping up, I think that's a key piece to the Serbia puzzle that really let them crack the code of this Ancient. Yeah, and like I said, you know, it's a game of, you know the firepower being on the Israeli squad and then, you know, Serbia just being a squad outside of IESF. So uh, it's really tactics versus the firepowers I've just been reiterating. Israel have been able to create so many individual talents like Spinks, Mestel's on the come up as well. He was the yeah. player that I was kind of looking at. Uh, you have Heavy God, you have loads, you have Nerds as well. Uh, but we have map number two, I believe, underway. Um, so it's going to be really exciting. We have, let me just double check. This is going to be Vertigo picked uh, by Serbia. That's going to be our next map. That's going to be an interesting one. So don't go anywhere because map number two is going to be surely exciting. We'll see you right after the break. One purpose. One dream. One rhythm. One step closer to glory. An enemy spotted. 
they say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. think you've got what it takes. The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion? One purpose, one dream, one rhythm, one step closer to glory. Enemy they say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. The ones who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. 
It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion?
Welcome back to your WEC regionals, everybody. Map number two getting started here. Israel versus Serbia. And we are back on Vertigo. You know what, Tiddler? I'm glad that we've seen some different maps today because previously it was just Mirage, 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 Mirage. A little bit of Inferno here and there. But yeah, we've seen some Ancients, some uh, Vertigo, some Inferno yesterday as well. Back on to the Sky Rise for this pistol round. Quite enough. We saw a very one-sided vertigo last time around on the female division. Will it be the same here? The map pick of Serbia, they did do some good work up against Bulgaria, but we'll see what they'll be able to do up against the high-flying stars of Israel. They'll push forward. This white box player has gone unnoticed, and that is Mestel to open up. But Kindle and Dragon Blinded are able to find those kills back in the headshot from Blue Phoenix. Gets that frag. And now a three-on-three -three situation has been created from this. And a look to make this retake work. Oh, great headshot from Blue Phoenix to try and open this one up. But he's lost everybody around him. Just Shushin with 8 HP. Uh, a tickle will eliminate him right now. There's just no way back into this one. Can he hit both headshots, though? Oh, really awkward angle. But nobody overpeaking in this scenario. And he's going to be swiftly discarded. Serbia, a pistol round here, carrying on the momentum from a very close ancient game. Uh, that was certainly just one of the most uh, sort of devastating performances that I've seen. Um, really good ancient play um, from Team Serbia. Israel are the favorites coming into this series as well. Yeah, they are, but... You kind of have to realize that Serbia have a little bit more trained experience at a team, as a team. Not only competing at multiple lands, getting into RM the RMR, especially and doing some some decent work there. Albeit them bombing up pretty early, I believe 0-3. They still did. A, you kind of have to respect them in that fact because you know, you know they have been on the downfall recently, losing like many games in a row, but. In IESF, in these WEC regionals, this is where they can really get back on their way. And they really showed it, taking Israel's map pick away of Ancient. Uh, they've done plenty of work there. You could probably find a few clips. You know, 1v4s from Israel, not com It's pretty common out from them in, in land environments. So they're a pretty trained team on that. And they've been able to take that one down. So looking good for them to take the series. Other than that, though, it's going to be a B-side takeout from Serbia. And... Uh, not really anyone there for Israel to take things. Dragon's going to get into a battle before this happens. And Blue Phoenix takes it and upgrades to the AK. Yeah, really key to steal away that mid control before any potential B take. Plays all over this map, but the C4 can come safely in and through. And Blue Phoenix locked out of the action. Tries to get back into this one with a headshot. Impulse finally able to shut him down. A flurry of smoke grenades going to help them. At an arm's length for Impulse to find even more. Quick kill from the Deagle, but here they come. A couple of retrieved AK-47s now and a smoke grenade to cause diversion. Stuck at the back of this site, Kindo's going to fall, and they're even aware enough to take the flank. Great retake from Team Israel. Looked like they had almost no chance at all. How did they have the heads-up play to check for that flank on mid, though? I didn't hear any sand cues at all. Yeah, and on top of that, there was nobody in the B bomb site when that execute came in. Even though they got that mid play as well, that first mid kill by Blue Phoenix, I thought all hope was lost because of that, you know, emptiness that was that B bomb site. Already getting themselves underway here. Israel here to fight. They're showing some prowess in them, it seems. Serbia aren't going to be able to take this one easily from first glance. We'll see a, an A ramp play, utility. The block on for the grenade as well. Kind of a force buy-in. The Tech 9s, though, looking dangerous. Mess still in hand. He's, he's going to be caught out. That's an AK upgrade. Now a player in the back of sight. Kindle's ready for the for this. Shushan has gotten that kill. And now they're looking to pounce upon this A bomb site. Possibly the bomb is already here as well. They're coming in from all angles. And these Tech 9s actually catching them off Ooh. guard. A flurry of frags. Vladim finds the gap. And Choiv is able to take advantage. C4 goes down, Blue Phoenix, no chance. How do you even recover from this? Just can at this point. Damage is all you can really look for. You force into this. You kind of went in saying that we just have to win out this round and they aren't able to do so. Mestel caught with nade in hand. These fast plays, the flashbangs. 
Serbia really well versed on this map and they are showing it right now in the first three rounds of play. That's gonna be uh Blue Phoenix to catch impulse. Not gonna be too mad about that. He was just looking to get an upgrade in terms of weaponry. And they've been able to save AKs and M4s over to the next round. That M4A1S could be a difference maker. Like I've been explaining a lot of times, that A1S on the T side is really interesting to play with, especially with the silencer. You know, you can see sometimes when teams are shooting with the A1S, you can't immediately locate where the player is shooting from. And especially on that T side, a surprise factor, the silence, playing stealthy, could be a, a gateway into a round of some sorts. I feel like that sandbag's position as well is is almost kind of overrated. Like, you really need support. Like, you obviously saw Mestor just getting uh, isolated by the Tech Nines. And especially in an anti-eco round, an anti-force buy round, can be really dangerous. No tags through the wall connecting from the Desert Eagle of Mestal in this one. Talking about him a lot on that previous map. Standard stuff, Serbia not revealing their hand in the first 30 seconds. Not showing much at all. They forced into this as well, actually. Around the M4A1S, is that really the right call that you want to make? Very weird one at that, I think. Yeah, they went into the force by battles because Serbia won the last round by a force by themselves. So that they just want to play a force by war because Serbia, they think Serbia doesn't have a lot of money, which is right. But it is really risky. Serbia have been so well versed and all oh, this lineup could happen, but it's Mesto to take Vladin down to open things up. Now things could get hectic again. Look at the position of Shushan as well. Oh, he's activating with the Deagle. Mesto with a no, he's going no. for a knife. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Finally, the kill on the impulse comes in, but Dragon left in a one on four. He's coming in from the flank side. Bomb dropped in the middle of the open. Once he gets his first kill anyway, his position is well known and he'll be up against three even. Time isn't on his side either. And this force fight really works out well here for Israel. Yeah, they're even able to rob rifles just straight away from the ground. Dragon, just no way back into this one. Even damage just seems... Not even worth it any longer. Not going to be playing this one too aggressively. I really love that angle from Shushan. Just boosted all the way over that A site. You just don't see it used very often at this level of play. Uh, and it's really distracting. It's so hard to just identify where he's playing from once you've walked past him already. And even with the Desert Eagle, he's able to cause absolute chaos there on the A site. 2-2 two -two here. Serbia, a tactical timeout. Not wanting this one to slip away too early. Yeah, they don't want to let things go out of hand because a lot of the time when you don't really call a timeout and the other side is able to just get rolling, and especially if you're on that side that you should be more well-versed on. Serbia, picking it to vertigo, you'd expect them to be good on their T side. If Israel get the ball rolling, get a really, really nice scoreline on their CT side, that makes the job a lot easier for them. So Serbia are just coming in with the mindset, don't let Israel get too much here, because especially when they're individually hot, that's when things get really, really dangerous, when they get warmed up. You can see those positions there in that forest by. They definitely know how to play vertigo themselves. They have special positions, they have everything. They just have to be careful of it. And Serbia, they're just taking, they're taking nothing out from this they're making sure that they're taking this map for sure and they're looking to close things out they've done the hard part they've taken the first map israel's map pick as well mind you yeah so theoretically this should be the easier part of the best of three close it out now otherwise you're going to a really dodgy third map where you might not even be favorites any longer talk about their expertise on on vertigo they need to show it here Need to show how they can bounce back in this one after losing such a such a weird round. A low buy round can often knock your confidence. All pressure on ramp though. Mestel, he's waiting right on top of the smoke. And I don't think that they're going to be aware of this whatsoever. The flashbang misses. Uh, and oh, they are aware. Fires a number of shots right through the smoke. And Davy is still a threat as well has advantage israel knocking on the door of serbia in this round once more 
This would break the economy of Serbia. And they're playing passive, they've fallen silent. But on the other hand, Davy is playing a little bit of a more aggressive angle. This session of maps always <laughs> funny. Trey Transfer thinking it was his teammate. Uh, Impulse gets a kill back and now a 2 on 2 has been created out from the out from this. Excuse me. Mori takes Troy down. Now a one on two for Impulse. This is a crossfire established. Does have the bomb on his back, but probably once he taps that bomb. Might be able to find that. Looks to get the flick. Actually gets the first. Could have been a bit scary. But I was expecting him to tap the bomb in Israel to run on forward. But seems like Impulse wanted to just run in and take the battles for himself. It's so hard to know what to do when you've only got 12 seconds left. 1v2. They're hyper aware of your position. Just no time to rotate whatsoever, obviously. Serbia, only two rounds against Israel's three. Sometimes these CT sides can fall apart at any moment. Shouldn't be now, though, as they are only against pistols. That holds somewhat of a default. Oh, Mori with the lineup. That shuts down any prospect here, possibly for the eco. Humble down. And in that frag though, we finish just spotting a bunch of legs and popping away at it. And uh, Mestel just drops down. Israel taking the round there. Four players staying alive and they've really come alive. Uh, Serbia have been stopped in their tracks completely. Uh, it's only been that first round off from them, I believe. Was it the pistol? No, yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. it was. Getting, yeah, it was those... the pistol. And then the force buy as well. You're not really getting yeah, any gold. A couple of scrappy board. rounds, right? Yeah. And, and they're just unable to respond once the rifles come out. Israel just looking like the better team. And a couple of feel-good frags there uh, to put them on to round number four. No AWP presence. Shushin, a lot of the time, likes to go towards it. And others uh, will be very comfortable just holding the M4. Oh, and Mori hasn't been spotted yet again. Isolating all of these angles using the smoke as cover to get down the stairs. It is going to be the response, though. It is. Blue Phoenix are going to come on over as well. Spamming away. There's just an opposite end of this smoke. We'll try and do whatever. And Shushan peeking through. Dragon takes him down. And they're trying to play a little bit different Counter-Strike here. Trying to enter the bomb sites from the midsection. Rather than taking it from the ramp side and then having a late player from the mid side. Impulse will punch those digits right in. Blue Phoenix and Mori from two different angles, a two-pronged attack and running out of bullets there. So Mori does get that kill, but the HP is not there. Do they really want to go for this? It is a two-on-two -two actually. The bomb has been freshly planted, but they're waiting a little bit. Mori did even look back. Information, it doesn't seem like it's there. And it seems like they've conceded and thrown in the white towel. Serbia back and smooth sailing in this round pretty much as... Israel do could see this round, so they will find a third here, Serbia. Saving there does definitely feel advised when you've got such little HP. Maybe hold the angles for a couple of seconds, see if Serbia are going to give away a free kill. That obviously didn't happen, and they closed the scoreline ever so slightly. I just love the way Mori's uh, consistently putting pressure on these stairs, and just the overall texture of this round from Serbia. Heavy pressure on mid. You're thinking, oh, well, they're obviously going to go through CT spawn, default onto the B. Uh, that just wasn't the case whatsoever. Throwing Israel through a loop. Shushin didn't know where to look. He was completely caught off guard. This time it's Blue Phoenix taking the aggression down these uh, B stairs. I'm not a fan of the sandbags position. I, I, I'll admit it. Yeah, well, you said it was overrated. I understand it. It, it really is only good in really tier 1 CS, uh, I feel, uh, because there's a little bit of unpredictability. You need in that so position. much support, right? Yeah, you so do. Much. Yeah, it, it doesn't look good on this map because it's always going to be Molotov off, even if they have the information that they're not there. Just for safe, you know, just for safety, they'll still Molotov it anyway. So that's where things get difficult. But well, we'll be... Back into the action, into the B-bomb side as Vladin looks to lead the way, pave the way for the Serbia side as he perforates the skull of Mori. And that nade to chop on through, that Molotov nade combo is brutal as Vladin takes Blue Phoenix down finally. Davy not being hand handed a single damn thing from that side angle. 
And Kindo holds it down. Ashushin runs in. Now a one on three for Davy as that bomb's gone down now. Two players can't get in the same position. They both peek at the same time. That flash is perfectly timed. And Serbia, seems like uh, after that, they've kind of woke up a little bit and got in two rounds on the spin here. So that Israel, we stopped in the tracks in their tracks themselves, is now going to have to probably take a bit of an eco, maybe a half buy. Yeah, Vladin's woken up in, in a fairly savage mood this morning. You see what sort of um, decisions he's making on the server. He'll go quiet for, for a couple of rounds, and then he'll find a brutal uh, double or triple opening. That one just two like, sensationally fast headshots forces Israel back to pistols here in round number nine. The control for the Mac 10 And Davey should be able to spot this one out, but actually gets countered. Uh, Dragon hyper aware that that one was coming through and starting to rake in the cash in the meantime. Throws down a smoke, doesn't want to give away any free advantage. And he really wants to just delay Israel. He doesn't want the rest of his team to walk into a stack. This obviously isn't where the main prompt of this attack is coming from. And wow, so many kills, so much damage. He single-handedly defeated the pistols as Blue Phoenix... Maybe just going to try and jump through this smoke and find a quick kill. Maybe just stand right behind it. I don't imagine Serbia are going to chase him down and make it a key mistake here, though. Yeah. Blue Phoenix is up on 13 kills. That's kind of remarkable considering how early we are in this map. Has been that player to stand out, but I feel like he reminds me as well of... Uh, what was his name? Peking Peter from Iceland. <laughs> Peking <was>. Peter? <laughs> what a throwback. <laughs> Jesus. It reminds you of that. He's been the last one alive for a lot of these chances. He's gotten a few there and saving a few weapons. I think he has been keeping them afloat because he has been the player to save rifles. So he has been getting kills and being able to save on. And, you know, some of the forest fights that they have won were ba basically based around the rifle or whatever weapon that Blue Phoenix was able to save from the prior round. So. In that sense, it's been pretty good out for him. He's been fragging on all departments and been firing on all cylinders. So, pretty impressive out from him. But Israel are going to expend here a tactical pause. See quite a few used here. I think, uh, you know, compared to the other events I've been doing, you know, throughout the entire, you know, WEC regionals, it's nice to see a lot of these are using these tactical pauses. Peking Peter actually makes <laughs> some of the best duck in the local area. <laughs> oh my gosh, I see what you <laughs> Yeah, you only just got that one. Yeah. Can't catch up, catch up. It's four to five. Serbia, a narrow lead, but can they cling on to it? Five rifles here for Team Israel. Shushan hasn't been picking up that AWP on the CT side of Vertigo as well. Um, a map where you almost always see some sort of orc presence towards ramp. Oh no, oh, that's no, the Molotov. 100 Molotov damage. Feels like a lot more though for Serbia. So now they have to start, or I mean for Israel, so they have to start with a man down. They're going to play aggressive to possibly find equal footing. But while doing that, whilst doing that, they've granted this entire B-side over. And I think Mori was only expecting a lurk there. So we packed away off the angle, looking back towards mid, even though he had teammates there. This B side is completely open for the taking, and before you know it, Israel are backing off for the save. Yeah, it's all Serbia, right? Uh, another good B execute there. It feels like they've got presence all over the map, and Israel don't really know where to tread. Uh, especially in these rifle rounds, they seem um, to just step it up to another level. And Israel, uh, their rotations have been slightly off. Usually, like once the nades come into the B bomb site, you've got everybody on the defense just pile driving it. Uh, that's just not been the case. They've been outnumbered, outmaneuvered, outmatched. 6-4, that'll be the scoreline. I can confirm it. At this point, the bomb will explode. The big question mark is, how many rifles can Israel carry through into the next? It seems all three. Nobody from Serbia anywhere close to eliminating any of these, but that means that they'll keep four alive on their side. Money building... Yeah, they're starting to build. On the other hand, Israel kind of had to get that money underway. And you see how hard they fought for it, only for it to be pretty weak going into these closing stages of the first half. 
Full rifles out on board, no AWP. But we out for impulse. He has been on fire with it in certain spots around. And oh, that's a really, really cheesy angle. Something that I commonly see from teams. Salazar most notably, but he's using it as well. Kindo taking Davey. Shushin to hold it up. And Troy now looking to activate that flash. Perfect. Good for one and the second. That's the A bomb site falling. Molotov in, Serbia, free access into the bomb site. It's free real estate, free range here. Oh, it's not, it doesn't look like it's recoverable. A two on four, and they're already backing off. And everybody on Team Serbia now just taking their chance uh, to really shine. Uh, we haven't really seen much from Choi here this map. Um, finally, with a, a beautiful double opening, kindly provided flashbang over the top. Serbia with seven and Israel just haven't had their money rolling at any point. They've not been able to chain rounds together. They've not been successful. Uh, they've been stood all out in the open. They've been consistently losing the ramp duel here, uh, which is often a, a, just a key point on the map. Not even off the back of Impulse's AWP. We haven't really seen it do all too much here on Vertigo. I'm going to check this corner. Unlikely to do so. Oh, that's quick. Right into the headshot. Blue Phoenix's position's been exposed as well. This player alive again. I'm going to call him out. Oh, no. He doesn't oh, even no. keep the rifle. Israel calling another tactical pause. How many tactical pauses have these guys got? It's I think they lot. both used two each this half. Both used two, two each this half. It's yeah. like a lot. It has, and it's been building up, you know, the length of this half. I feel like a lot of it has been saving from Israel because they just can't get a foothold into one of the bomb sites during the retake. So they've had to use so many tactical pauses, and yeah, they've really not had a chance to get really up and running. That force by battle made things close somewhat at the early stages, but it's all been Serbia the past five rounds or so. And, you know, they have... All the money in the world, basically. Uh, if they get this one, it's basically secured that they have money for the entire half at that point. Exactly. So Israel, at this point, it's damage control. It's just damage control from them at this at this stage. It feels like those tactical timeouts are economics talk, right? Talking about yeah. money, talking about what the investment's going to be and what the game plan actually is in the next round. More than overall <laughs> tactics. Get the abacus out decide how much money you want to lose here in round number 12. Two key kills for the Serbia attack. Glint, Blue Phoenix, Mori getting oh. Deagle fries of their own. That's uh, pretty nice, but you know, those kills, those advantages that they've already found early on and Blue Phoenix has been found. Yeah, it just has been neutralized completely. Only was... Uh, those two kills were only just to level up the numbers. And then Serbia back again with the rifles getting those trades in and their picks in. Israel going to bring out another buy once more, but uh, they're in that same situation. Lose this and they're going to be down in the gutters economically. Round 14 will probably be a half buy of some sorts with round 15 finishing off with a proper proper buy. So it really looks possibly, it looks good possibly to have like an 11 to 4 scoreline. Jushin picking up the AWP for the first time on this CT side. He's had a very dormant half. Finally getting back into the kill feed, though. The kill onto Kindu, but, well, there are Molotovs just pouring into his position, and he is forced to fall back and away. Because the M4A1s, is, uh, they're going to take his place. There they are. Mestol. And shot onto Dragon. Impulse now looking for the trade. It's Battle of the Operas. Shushan, this has been one of his very few chances to whip out the big green. The Molotov down as well. And pulls it to Shushan down. 2 on 4 situation. The Molotov to be dropped on in. The flash over as well. Impulse now looking to peek on forward. Heavy advantage now from Israel. This is a perfect time to get underway. And that headshot is really, really good. Aim getting online for Israel. 5 to 8 now. Final two rounds and a half. Serbia are set for cash for the rest of this half. And now Israel, all they have to do is win rounds. There's nothing else you can do. There's no economic game at this point. You just have to straight up win the rounds. Yeah, this one's the key round in this first half, right? If they lose it, it's all going to fall apart. I think one of the win conditions is someone other than Blue Phoenix stepping up here for the CT side. 
He's been finding the kills. Lots of exit and eco frags. Nevertheless, topping the scoreboard. Almost double the next highest fragging player being Mezztel. And Shushan, oh, opens up the fragging with the AWP once again. Allows the AK-47 space to find another one. And Israel looking like a different team here in the last couple of rounds of this first half. Could be that up. They haven't been able to handle it. It's been such a shock to the system of Serbia. They haven't been able to whip out that up at all in the first half, aside from the prior round and this round. So Serbia haven't been able to handle things. They just haven't. And could be good for Israel, possibly getting a seventh on the board. Would be uh, really interesting if they're going to be able to do so. Now Davey challenging this Kindo, finding that kill back and now a 4 on 3 situation as Kindo looks to push forward again. Mestol not expecting another to be there and Vladin catches him as he runs out of bullets. An advantage for Serbia. Molotov is well perfectly placed on the position of Sushan. And now they peek on in again. They need to possibly deny the bomb but the HP has taken away won't be enough. They're going for the frags here, Serbia. Done a lot of damage. Shushan are getting activated with that off. Planning trading forward. Looking for that kill. Gets a second. Oh, he's done Aww. it. He's got the one on three. Serbia's done it. And that is such a crucial round. A ninth on the board. And now double digits on their T side is looking more than possible. I was talking about Vladin earlier. He goes quiet for a couple of rounds and then steps up with something sensational. A quad kill. Nine rounds on the board for Serbia, and he's been such a massive part of it since the start. Israel, they've got to be scratching their heads. They've barely got the tactical timeouts to use, but this is round number 15. They'll get the solace of playing on the T side very shortly. Impulse, oh, almost catching the timing above that smoke. It's Shushan instead to take the shot. Both orps miss. Kindle though leading the way, that up holding, looking to the right side, might just forgo his position. Two quick kills out from Kindo. Oh no, Shushan. That time it couldn't have been worse. And now Serbia off to the races here in the final round of the half. They've got so much work to do in this retake. And Impulse and Vladen, the mighty combo, are going to shut them down. We'll go into halftime 10 to 5, favoring Serbia. There's no way back in this one for Mezdor. He's going to get shut down before he even gets a chance. That is a really solid half of Team Serbia, I've got to say. After winning Ancient in such a close fashion, you thought that this would be a close map as well. It still has the opportunity to be. Look at these openings. And those oh, are the closings. It's unbelievable how Serbia are able to just turn their head on a dime and get those kills like that. So aware of Israel's position. Like I said, that's why Israel were able to get those few rounds on board. It was just that that op presence was a bit of a shock to the system of Serbia. They didn't know how to cope with it in two, for the past two rounds. And then when Serbia were able to break it down, they just went back to winning ways here. Now onto their CT side, we'll see this pistol round. We'll see players from the mid side and the B side looking to storm on in and pinch into this section of the map. It seems like we might have... Uh, there's a lot going on in the chat and players standing still in mid. Yeah, this attack. Uh, I've got yeah. to say that, that Serbia, one of their biggest strengths, just being able to adapt really quickly in the server, right? As soon yeah. as they run into a roadblock, they find the answer exceptionally speedy. Well, it's like we're going to see a bit of a tech pause. Uh, I'll roll back. Having a few issues on the server today and yesterday. So, expect a few more here. Don't know what's going to happen right now. Yeah, but uh, as we were saying, Serbia have just been just a better squad. They have been able to adapt to a lot more. Uh, I feel they've just been a, a very good squad overall. Like I've been saying, you know, they are a team that's competed at the RMR. A team... That's been competing for a long while. They have been on a downfall, a downwards trajectory. But other than that, you know, it really, this is their opportunity, of course, to get back into the depths of things. We're seeing uh, Shushan all the way here in the bottom, really enough. 
Um, yeah, so it's just a bit of a tech pause. Hopefully, this doesn't take much Where longer. Is, he? is this the tech pause? Yeah. Where he's stuck? <laughs> he's what heat. is going on? This is one of the weirdest issues I've I've seen. I've seen many tech issues just in the last couple of days, uh, but this is one of the the most <laughs> odd ones I've seen. This is some, <laughs> some crazy stuff. So we'll wait just a moment for our lovely admins to roll this one back. How did he even get down there? How do you know? I want to get gonna down there. Is that going to be something to... Uh, that you're going to be able to exploit the real game, yeah. Add to the meta. Yeah. yeah, you just drop down there as a CT uh, pretty early on, and then you can just take down all the ramp players who are going to cross on forward, but yeah. <laughs> if they get passed in time, then you just stuck down <laughs> yeah. there for the entire round. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Well, he would have been able to radio in the information on the flanks, at least, if they yeah. had attacked the A site. Maybe they could have mind-gamed it into an advantage, okay. but I don't think so. I don't think so. Shushin hasn't really been the, 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 the top player uh, in, in yeah. the server today, though, so maybe losing him down a massive well isn't the biggest disadvantage, <laughs> but like, like you want to play with all five. Yeah. He's just been on that AWP as well, and uh, it has been pretty quiet across the two maps. So. You hate the AWP, don't you? You've got a real... I, I, I feel orb. like, you know... What does the AWP do to you? It's just, no, because we've been seeing, you know, you know... Well, to be fair, I don't hate the AWP because I was actually praising it on the France versus... France versus Spain game. We saw Emerald on it, but I feel like it, it hasn't been the same. I really like how Israel do play with the rifles on board. They are a rifle heavy squad, full of riflers. You should can hop, but I feel like, you know, on that squad, it, it, it doesn't feel like it's, uh, it fits in. Because of course, it's a bit of a mixed squad. He does have to kind of, you know, he needs to, a bit of time to settle in, but you know, economically, it's, it's only just been a liability. Actually, it did do good. It was a bit of a game changer towards the end of that first half. But as you said, Serbia were just, really quick to adapt to that change i'm not sure i believe you i think you hate the awp <laughs> i think you hate it I, yeah i definitely hate it yeah i have been told by our admin team by the way that we are getting back into this one in the next couple of moments so if you are eager to watch some kind of strike just hold your horses because we'll be maybe be there in a second uh any real predictions for the second half though while we've got you uh probably just be a serbia taking it 2-0 i don't see it you know going any other um, way because i've only ever seen serbia play vertigo they're a pretty consistent team on it they they play it you know decent amount of course on and off the server probably practice it so yeah you can see it you know they're well versed on it that opera using pretty cheesy angles and you know, that you'd only really see that on the team that you know plays the map practices yeah. the map so just looking at you know israel they haven't been able to get more than a chain of like two three rounds and that's simply not enough especially when serbia is putting up streaks of five six rounds together and unless something changes for israel then i don't see them winning it out but you know yeah still... and for israel i think it has to just be like real flashy flary kind yeah, of strike individuals showing up and getting uh triple and quad kills uh just like someone really just popping off and and, and knocking this one off the rails at least they do have a, a really good coach back in the server as well. So their spray was the coach for, I believe, was it ATK? Uh, if my memory doesn't okay. deceive me last time around. So, you know, at least they have a coach because a lot of teams have a problem with closing out, for example, and a coach always helps with it. That's why you have teams like, uh, you know, Greyhound Gaming, you know, people wanting them to have a coach so that they can close out games, you know, at least like you can see how there is you know, a case for why coaches are important in this game, especially in the online CS where they have a little bit more freedom than they do in the lands. So possibly could be him helping it out, helping them out, especially working with a team that's been uh, like, like ATK, have been able to get into EPL, some S tier events being, you know, one of the few teams in NA that have been able to make it to these, uh, you know, larger tier events and uh, probably use his knowledge maybe to call something back. But, you know, you know, from what we're seeing right now, it, it seems all Serbia. And obviously at the, the top of tier one, we've seen it for quite a few years now, but mental coaches being somewhat of a thing. In tier two and tier three, that's not so much of a thing, right? Like these uh, organizations only have limited resources. Uh, but yeah, this is um, uh, an extended technical timeout. We're just waiting for the rollback. Obviously, we're going to see a pistol round uh, fairly soon. But that first half, 10 
to five. Yeah, ten to five. Don't know what you do here. It is a very tall order, and um, especially when they did on their T side as well, that makes things a, a little bit more difficult to uh, sort of think about. Yeah, it, but Israel, I feel like they would be a decent squad on that T side, though. To be fair, that we talk about that individual uh, play. <laughs> oh my god. Too like he disconnected, but it seems like these guys are sleeping in the server right now. Uh yeah. But uh we're having a lot of tech issues here. My co-commentator is having some as well. Take a nice view here of um the the player is dead, they're sleeping on the server right now, all five of them. Yeah, so um, yeah, this is a technical pause that is uh, a bit annoying right now because, you know, we've had some wide server issues. So we'll head things to a short break and when we're, when we're back, we'll conclude the second map between Israel and Serbia.
welcome back everybody we are live with another pistol round the long-awaited pistol round here on vertigo yep well we're back underway in the second half after a pretty long enough tech pause hopefully we're gonna see things underway we're gonna see a mid battle it's shushan and uh, mestel to get kills like that in the mid side. Now they're gonna get towards B, but maybe not so. Oh, but Vladin's back is turned. Might have been, might, he might have been able to get to, and Blue Phoenix even holding the flank down as well. So Israel off to a flying start in the pistol run, relatively clean, taking the B bomb side along with mid simultaneously. I was excited to see the dual Bretters 1v5 ace <laughs> clutch. It would have been the first time I had casted one, but. We get deprived of it again. Israel, a pistol round and a much needed one at that. If they lost it, I feel like it's just map series over. Now Serbia have a bit of heavy lifting to do on this CT side. They'll take an eco just before, so I'll let Israel get a little bit closer. This will be a 7 to 10 score line, uh, most likely. Uh, we see that the overwhelming majority of the time in these full eco rounds. Yeah, just full USPs as well, not investing really anything aside from a single smoke on Impulse. Just trying to get as much money as they can, get the guns out as soon as possible. Serbia are a team that does that, they do favor the Ecos rather than the Force Buys. And now Israel half clocked in that. It's a full stack towards A as now they've waltzed into the B bomb site. Mori will pick up that bomb and head right back along with his team. Uh, this, like you said, should be a 7th without any problems, without any repercussions now. Maybe the USP is either in Brexit Fires, or maybe might just run into the B-bomb site. Maybe to find a few kills, maybe save a few AKs over, but uh, looking at the positions already of Israel, it's seeming very unlikely. Yeah, this is all about damage at this point. How many rifles can you take away? Can you potentially steal one? As you said, that looks incredibly unlikely. The next best thing is preventing the, the kill bonus, just the $300. I'm not really prescribed to that logic of thinking. I think that it's the, the risk reward uh, for going for a kill here and removing a rifle is just so worth it. If everybody swarms on a position, you're very likely going to find at least one. Uh, nevertheless... A couple of these pistols will fall anyway, so that's $300 going directly into the coffers of Shushan. His bank account becoming a little more full before we get into round number 18. Israel closing up the gap ever so slightly. This is the first proper gun round here of the second half. And Troy only has a Famous carried into it, so it shows you some of the woes of being on this CT side. Having less money and less kills as well. Only six in the first half from him. It was it was kind of just Vladen and Kindo doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Dragon as well, putting up a, an admirable effort. Needs to do the same on this CT side though. Davy opens up on the B side once more. Dragon, oh, he was so blinded though. He was ready for it because Israel was equally as blind, but they recover in time a little bit faster. They'll get that B-bomb side under their control. And another kill to the good for Israel. So Serbia, they want nothing to do with this anymore. It's a 2 on 5 and already a player coming in from the flank side. They're already pushing on their position. And Mestel denies. Kindo fallen. And Impulse, now what does he even do here? I don't think he's even able to really save. Rufin is on low HP. He's going to waltz into his crosshair. So that's easy. But there's so many players here in Shushan to take him down. Israel now starting on their recovery. But they've woken up here on their T side. And I said it earlier, their T side, I would say, favors a little bit more than their CT side. And they're starting to prove my point. But still early doors here. So it's only the third round of the second half. And Serbia are back down to the evil. Yeah, when you've got this much talent on your T side, it can often be so easy just to find a headshot, break open a bomb site, Especially in a round like this against pistols. Uh, not too much uh, investment from Team Serbia. We'll have to wait until round number 20 before we see another competitive round. Um, but their kill bonus is, or their loss bonus, in fact, is actually building up at this point. Uh, they've got max loss bonus, so we'll see the Deagle and body armor uh, come into play in even these half-by scenarios at this point. That's why some of these longer comebacks are just so difficult in the current iteration of CS. Yeah. No freebies. No freebies at all. 
Yeah, not at all. And Serbia have already gone in that first kill as well. Could be another situation where the force by wins it out. I'm not going to say much more just yet because Israel have been sharp on the replies back this half. Shushan taking flat in. It's a field day for him. But before being shut down by Choi in the end with the rest of the players now entering into the bomb site. Mesto with that kill. Choi again. Well, he's making things interesting here. It's now down to a 2 on 2. We said it was so important on Ancient. It's starting to show back again here on Vertigo, these 2 on 2s. All they can do is tap that bomb, try and bait out a few peaks here, but I think that only invites more battles and more opportunities for Choiv to get another one dig. Now Blue Phoenix holding, that's the head spotted, Choiv now taken out of the round and Mori peeking through. So Israel, you, you can see there that they are a really good team in terms of firepower. Instead of getting that bomb down, playing for the time, they just decide to keep spamming and tapping the bomb until they uh, peek through. Because uh, they feel more confident with their AK shots, it seems. But Serbia, though, on the other hand, made that one pretty close, though. Yeah, you can always presume that you're going to force out a mistake at some point. And as soon as Choi falls, Kindo feels like he needs to get aggressive. He absolutely does. He can't just allow the C4 to go down. He needs to reply. Not going to happen. 9-10. We'll see another close map here on Vertigo. As one of the rifles, remember this is a full buy round for Team Serbia already falling. They don't oh. check the CT spawn and Dragon, that could have been a triple. Only two though, and the B site has fallen. Has fallen indeed, and this is for a tight scoreline as well. Serbia, again, weren't able to do much the last round because considering their money situation, they had to half buy with the Eagles. This is a gun round right back, and that was Such also their gateway round. back. Yeah, it is. Israel bringing the pace. I said that their T-side will be something to look out for because of these riflers on board. Like I said, Trushin starting to get activated with that AK-47 along with the others. Tight scoreline here. Five right back in a row for Israel. Serbia now will have to make a little bit of a change. They aren't getting activated at all here in the second half. And they're going to be back to basics in round number 21. Yes, they'll have the AWP of Impulse. He's been such a massive member in the last couple of rounds of Ancient. We need to see that clutch factor again. Otherwise, map over. Israel are just going to run over you all over the server. I, I'm wondering what the complexion of this investment is going to look like. What is the buy? Observer, please tell us. Oh, it's a full investment here. They've got enough for the utility as well. So that loss bonus, it's at max. This was a 10-5 first half for Team Serbia. So they've lost five in a row here to take it back to 10-10. And that gives them a full investment with all M4s, loads of utility. And Kindo already pushing towards the bottom of that ramp smoke. They're unaware. This is so frequently checked though. And Israel haven't been putting heavy pressure on ramp on the A site. They've been going towards mid and B. Is this going to be a change of pace, though? A bomb seems to think so. That's what they're suggesting. Yeah, they'll push on forward. He's as nice. Kindo holds it down for two. Advantage found early on by Serbia and Vladin to add another one to the tally. Getting another as well. And from behind as well, they've been able to take that A ramp side down. And now Mestel just alone, Troiv. Now ready to pounce on his position. Mesto might win out this duel. Yeah, he will do so, but he's taking a whole lot of damage in that one. A single chest shot away, but they one s should be able to send this one over. Now it's looking like 11 to 10. Serbia finally getting alive here. They need to chain them together, though. No other way. Especially if this round ends up being... Somewhat close. See if Mesdo can do any other damage. His HP certainly suggests that that's not going to be the case. Bomb drop, though. Pretty far away. They don't have to do much. Other than sit and wait, Mesdo just having a save here. Not a bad decision, because he does have plenty of residual cash from the prior rounds. We'll be able to buy up just a bit of utility, and is able to drop a teammate if needs be, but it doesn't seem like that is needed at all. So they'll have plenty of money going into the next one or two rounds. Serbia will have to try and break down this economy of Israel. But they're in such a weird situation here, Israel. They had such a good lead at the start, sure, or like... 
you know, in the second half. They had such a good start yes, here. Yeah, but the thing is, Serbia now, if they're able to break this economy in the next two rounds, that's 13-10, for example, that breaks the economy and then they could easily be 15 in a matter of moments. That's the problem. It's not even a, really a matter of Israel playing poorly. It's just that the situation that they're in right now, the way it's looking, it, it might pan out. It could, it could get out of control. Wow. They both combine jumping down. Getting a really good vantage point onto where Team Israel were trying to set up. These nades have been brutal. Impulse finds one right over the smoke and Shushan eliminated before he can even get started in round number 22. B, that's where we're going. To be or not to be? That's the question for Blue Phoenix. Quick kill. Davey even able to combine. Yep. And uh, Mez still to activate as well. It seems like the B side is possibly going to be the answer as that bomb trails behind. The space is not really looking too good. It seems like they're a little bit paranoid of the flank, but it's not actually there. They do have the advantage though, at the same time. And finishing off the question to be or not to be, whether it is nobler to enter into a sea of troubles, that B side could be that sea of troubles indeed. But Vladin has backed off, and I feel like they are going to go for a bit of a gamble. Possibly today's site, so that they're most likely going to be saved from any sort of battles in the B side. And yeah, now this is going to be a secured round. Impulse are going to be is going to be saving back on the A bomb site. I thought Vladin was going to do so as well, but it seems like he wanted to show that he still had some fight in him. And now Impulse looking to save, but plenty of money in the bank accounts of Israel. They can afford for this. Yeah, they should certainly be hunting. And you look on the scoreboard, know that it's Impulse, and you should. Absolutely be trying to hunt this sniper rifle down. Albeit, Impulse hasn't had much impact on the server, but that can all change. Um, one round with just a sniper and all pistols around him. Like, even that can be uh, the complexion of a winning round here for Impulse. But it's not going to happen. They're not going to carry that sniper through. And this is where the money is just really broken. So Serbia, they've been taking tactical timeouts in a lot of these scenarios. Uh, they'll do so again. Remember, this was a three versus five for Israel. It was these two opening picks and potentially overextended B defenders that really cost Team Serbia there on the defense. And losing every single member is going to force them onto what we see now is a, a pretty janky buy. They'll, they'll be, it, it, it's going to be j just pistols in this one. It'll be a deagle here and there. Maybe Impulse. Oh, he actually invests into an orb. Oh. Are they wow. really going to force buy to zero? Or that are they actually old. just buying pistols around this AWP? He was really invested into the idea of having okay. a hero orp here in round number yeah. 23. He loses it, but reinvests. Dragon with the only other rifle. This is a scrappy buy. Two players with the hero weapons as well. That is scary. It really is. But they can afford this because of their loss bonus still at maximum, right? Because their last bonus was at a maximum, then Israel did win out, and then they lost again. So it's at a maximum, so they will be able to afford it in the next round. But I don't know, this is a very bold play, but this might be a surprise factor. The thing is, they might have been able to evade these weapons completely. <laughs> Holding it down, and Mestel to open up. There goes that rifle. Draken, though, getting activated at the Eagle, and it's going to get plucked out of the air. Blue Phoenix taking that rifle out of their hands, and now Impulse. The real question is, is he going to save? Because Israel can't afford, as per usual, to go hunting. They cannot imagine that there's an AWP in play right now. So I don't imagine that Israel are going to hunt this one all too aggressively. Uh, is Choi able to get towards that M4? He is. So both of those rifle investments stolen away here. And I guess that's a bit of a win condition here for Serbia. That allows them to go for a full investment in the yeah. next round. Uh, three players saved. That gives them enough money to buy. And then uh, these saved rifles do all of the rest. That's if Impulse can just hit one key shot here as Blue Phoenix takes this corner. He's though. been so sharp today. Oh, angle. so awkward, Blue Phoenix. Oh, plots the all pad of the server. Oh and no, both. that's a disaster. It was a bad angle out from Impulse. His shoulder could have been spotted before, you know, he could even see his opponent. Uh, I think he was toast from that position. I was hoping for a second that Blue Phoenix didn't decide to go towards that piece stair side, because that's the damage he can do here. That is bold. 
I was hoping that Impulse was able to recover with that upshot, but no, that's not the case. What a round, and that's a tight turner indeed. Serbia backs against the walls, but that off is back out, man. This guy is not relenting with it. He's taken that alone. How it's has he got this much money? His mum and dad pitching in. He's taken out. Taking out money from friends. I just feel like Serbia teach maths way better than they do in the UK because they worked something out in the last round that we just didn't on the casting desk. How did they do it? <laughs> I just don't understand. He has armor so as well. It, he, it's not a glass cannon. He has armor. He, and a smoke. he, he was definitely dropped that AWP from a player with... Uh, I don't know. I don't how, know. No, yeah, but how, how, <laughs> fast, know. how fast is your thinking to get to... to... To get it out like that. Is calculators know? cheating? If a team uses calculator, I know aimbot and warhack. That's definitely <laughs> cheating. But what about an, well, it an is iPhone cheating. calculator? I don't know. Lost bonus calculators in this game is also cheating. Oh my goodness, this Davey B's back. He's wrong. And it's starting to slip out of Serbia's control now. However, Vladin gets a kill back, but immediately traded. The A side is open for the taken as well. Oh, it's so difficult. I don't know what you do here if you're Serbia. Is it just another save? Israel been so good on this T-side. <laughs> Serbia might have impressed us with their mental maths, but not so much their counter-strike in this second half of play. Only one CT round out of the last, what's this, nine? It's all fallen to pieces. And Israel are about to force a third map out of this series. They were down and out. It looked like they were going to potentially even lose the pistol as well. Serbia, though, just haven't posted any sort of defense at all. This is their map pick. Now, this is where, where they need to show some preparation. Something really special to get yourself back to winning ways. Back to evens. I just can't see it happening. They've, they've, they've had no hope. Not at all. You see, this is a uh, what kind of sealed the round there. Davey getting those two quick kills. And then that A side was completely open. The rotates were completely blockaded off. And Serbia, again, not able to do much. But they find a buy once more. And it's not even a scrappy buy. It's not even that scrappy. Full utility. <laughs> Fours on in, in the mix. And, uh, and a FAMAS, even with that op. With decent utility. Uh, I feel like Israel, do they expect these buys every single time? Because I feel like I when they, they were must. on the side. Yeah, at this point S they do. Because Serbia, Serbia must be getting like subsidies from the EU. Like how, <laughs> how, how, how have they got buys every round? Like this is such wild kind of strike. Oh no, Troy has <laughs> got him through, bro, blinding through the smoke. That is infuriating if you're Israel because that is... A very, very good way to get started on their CT side here, Serbia. Question is, can they finish and in it off? In these situations, Tiddler, when you don't know if your opponents are on a buy or not, sneaking in and slipping in two kills really early is exactly what you've got to do, right? Like, like you've yeah, got to is. find those kills before you really know what the complexion of the buy looks like. Yeah. We'll see you now, round number 25. Entering crunch time once more, reminding me of ancient. But this time, Serbia on the back foot. They were able to, you know, close out with a bang on ancient. It's not like it was very one-sided, but Serbia did show up towards the end. Maybe it's another case here. Failing to do the boost does buy a little bit of time, but Dragons played this position so often. It kind of reminds me of the sandbag side. It's one of those positions that is always going to be mollied off and siphoned off every single time. Troy has also been Molotov the way, and, away, and as well, Dragon's position has been known. Very difficult. Mesto burning away though, whittling away in the Molotov, and Dragon's able to activate, and Troy has got in another. A one on five situation, and this buy has worked out for Serbia again. That FAMAS will be able to upgrade as well, surely. Shushan holding with that up. Dragon plucked out of the air, moving like a ragdoll. Nothing much more to be found from this. Even shooting the dead body. No scope in it. Really just poking and prodding. But as players from all different angles and 10 seconds remaining. Not going to wait after time. Just decide to take them there and then. And there we have it. Flat in. Closing in at the end. And Israel 
Their lead is getting encroached upon once more. Yeah, Serbia ran the risk of ending this map with a real whimper of a CT side. This gives them some real chances. We didn't actually see those kills originally, but it's blind through the smoke. A double kill. Is that what it takes Serbia to win one CT round here on Vertigo? That doesn't really fill me with much hope, if I'm being honest. It's not replicatable. It isn't, and that's the main problem I've been seeing here. But really, the fact that Serbia are able to get a buy every round just impresses me even more because I feel like a lot of teams would have just taken an eco, not finding out what to do with their economy, and it would have been over. But Serbia have always just been relentless. They're really hard-headed on the server, and Impulse has gotten a fantastic start. That clears out the A-ramp side, and now the rotates can go over to B. It was Impulse to b pull them over the line of Ancient. This map has been much quieter, finally ringing out with the AWP. And now Dragon needs to step up. He's losing teammates on the B-bomb site. And this flank is coming through fast. Kindo nails all three of them. There goes the C4 in the round for Israel. They had nobody watching the flank. Mez still scratching his head, wondering where all his teammates went. Have they gone? Oh my goodness, again. Serbia have just woken up here and look at the money of Israel. Like I said, they're in a situation where once their money breaks, they'll have no loss bonus, nothing really behind them, and they'll be in the depths of economic hell. And that is bad because Serbia, if they make that happen, that will surely be 15 on the board unless some heroics come out from Israel. That is the main problem. It really is that economy. I don't know what they do from here on out. And that is such a clean run out from Serbia. That could possibly boost them forward and possibly secure themselves, you know, the money that they require to push forward in these closing stages, which makes it that much more difficult for Israel. Well, they can scramble all their money together and get a buy here in this particular round. But that's not going to happen in the next unless they at least save some rifles or outright win it. This is where we've got a, a real tight game. 13 to 13. We saw it on Ancient, and it was Ster Serbia who had the stopping power there. I just still don't have faith in their CT side. Like, I hate to say it, but this CT side yeah. has still been really weak. It feels like Israel, even with five rifles right now and only one opportunity, should be able to find the gap. Yeah, Serbia's, like... CT side has been, I don't know what the word to use, like pretty bipolar. It's been, bad. it's been, it's been bad. All, yeah, as well. Like it, they've shown brilliant things, but then like most of the other time, it's been absolutely nothing. And oh, that's not a good way to start, but oh, a flash will come over. Smoke. Yeah, that's another that's flash that comes channel. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where he learned it. <laughs> Heard it was very hard. Sandbags being played once again by Kindo. He's going to throw out a preliminary smoke towards the ramp, and maybe Vladimir will use this as an opportunity to peek out, as he needs to play in conjunction with Kindo. Two quick kills, and there's no response. They fall silent. Kamaltov will give away some action into this round, and a lot of spraying through. So Serbia know that the numbers are here. They know that all the players are here towards this A site. Now that all books have peek on through, Israel have been sharp, so I'm not surprised if they get a headshot onto this offer. They have to be careful. Overstep the mark, and that could be their life gone. But they have to make a move. 50 seconds remaining. They do have the bomb on their back, but they've allowed too much time for the rotates to come on in. Flatten, holding it down. Good for the first now. Shushan to get the trade, and Davey with that right back. It's a 2-1-2 two -on -two once more. They've handed it over to the Israelis. And a flag coming in from Draken, and Troiv activates. Oh, Serbia have done it. They're on 14. That's a Dragon's better round out from them. was so much closer than they anticipated. They had no yeah. idea that he was right behind them on the bomb site. They checked it as well. He was, like, he was underneath them. Yeah, that bomb, barely an opportunity to go down before he's breathing down their neck. Israel 
losing three in a row here and another tactical timeout to discuss the cash. It'll be a follow-up bye. We've seen both teams buy to zero in almost every single one of the last eight rounds. Serbia with force after force after force. Now it's Israel's turn. Hopefully they can discuss something worthwhile in the next six seconds. They've got to come up with something special. It's GG's if they don't win this round. Look at their money. Look at their money. There'll be another force. It will have to be another force, and it won't be a good one at that. Unless they can do some mad tactics with their cash like Serbia able to do. I don't see them getting it. So Serbia now, this is a crucial round. I feel like it will go to overtime, possibly. It'll probably be overtime if Serbia don't take this. Or I don't even know. Could easily be Israel. But if Serbia take this one, I feel like it's a formality. It's done and dusted for them. So I feel like they'll be trying extra hard to take this one. If all the others flat in. This position is a little bit aggressive. Mestel up here. Does he expect it to be this close? Doesn't seem like he does. Doesn't seem like he does. Kindle might be in for a pleasant surprise there. It's Kindle to get one and flat in activating. So it's a two for one overall out here for Serbia. Net profit for them. Their positions. It's such a struggle. The Molotov, though, they're ready for it. He might peek upon it as well. Impulse looking to support. But he doesn't know where these T side players are exactly. They're coming in from all angles. If Vladin stayed alive for so long, unable to find the shot onto Mori as he takes oh. control of this key point of the map. In the meantime, they've leveled the numbers to a two versus two. And now it's Serbia on the back foot. A risk doesn't pay off from Davy. He was on low HP and decided to get aggressive, but that leaves Mori all alone. And there's barely any time he doesn't have to hold this one on for much longer. The smoke is up and they have the defuse serbia that is an outrageous clutch i cannot believe it 15 on the board for serbia that could be the final straw from israel and they've taken it by slim margins both teams making crucial risky plays and it all ultimately evened out back into serbia's favor a final kill out from troiv and now two match in series points to go along with it they're able to buy a decent one, but they're lacking in utility. They've got nothing really nice to talk of. They've caught in the overdraft. They phoned HSBC for this buy. Kindo. Force point of contact for this battle. It's messed still to open up proceedings here on the A site. They're not going to provide a change of pace. They're going to bring it to the A bomb site anyway. Impulse is the only one really actively onto the bomb site. No rotates in just yet. Might be in for a world of hurt. A shooting gallery so far. Does have support. Does have a teammate on his back as well. It's Flatten who has been crucial in the last round. Utility. Not the greatest as we've been saying for Israel. Only one smoke to cordon off these angles. But they do have a bit of Molotovs. Jaden creeping around for an information play. Someone is holding this angle. That is the bomb as well. This could be information right there. Drops the bomb. Will back away off that information. Will he get traded out? Shushan will do so. But that's information like I've said. Now 45 seconds remaining. And they're looking to hold down this A site. Aggressive played the long side. Impulse has found it. A three on three. And they're looking to rotate back away. Israel are going to run out of time though. Remember this multi-tiered map. They need to rely on the solo voter, Blue Phoenix. He's been the MVP of this map, but unable to take away Choiv, as now they have to engage doubly onto his position. Choiv is re-aggressed, and with only 20 seconds left, can they get this bomb away? Or are they going to try and fake it well, yet again? No. Lovely nade! Mestel falls, and it's all down to Shushan. He's had such a shaky map. He's nailing down all of these angles, but he doesn't have the HP to hold on. It's Serbia to close this one out. Two to zero. Wow, it did not feel like they were going to get over the finish line there at all. It didn't, especially with the economic situation. Who was going to expect that? I can't believe they're able to get like four force buys in a row after losing rounds pretty badly. That is really weird. I'm going to need to look over that again because I'm so confused how they're able to afford that. Because I didn't even take a look at it. I just thought, okay, they're going to take an eco. No, they came in with a force buy and it ultimately worked out. And Serbia, but I see how the teeth are able to take things. Yeah. Two to zero.
Yeah, Serbia just amazing at mental maths, uh, like doing something uh, like some Pythagoras' theorem live on the server, uh, just calculating everything to get maximum buys, even taking tactical timeouts to just work it out even better. Uh, they they definitely like pushed it to the very limit of how many times they could have bought during that half, realizing that, okay, right, we're not going to just give away free rounds in Eco, uh, but it was actually the full buy rounds that, that took them over the top. Uh, nevertheless, right, we're going to a quick break, uh, but we do have one more best of three to come. One purpose. One dream. One rhythm. One step closer to glory. They say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. who won't back down. The ones who believe. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. IESF brings heart stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion?
Welcome back, everybody. It's our final series of the day, our final map of the day. We are 1 1 in this series as we join it between Portugal and the Netherlands. Two teams in the female division we've seen before, and it all starts with a pistol round on the familiar setting of Mirage. Old back to Mirage, reeling back the years, it seems. Uh, fast mid play out and it seems to favor the CTs. Not a single kill out from the T side. Naomi getting another kill into the A bomb side and T7 probably gonna walk into her death in just a few moments unless she can get this low HP player and take down Gina as well. They're both low HP. Three of them are low HP. Matter of fact, this is recoverable completely out from Portugal from that you know situation. They might have to play together. They're a little bit separate. I, I, I'm a bit scared about the spacing. Couple of body shots and you can turn this one totally around c4 can it cross that's the big question mark and there's the first headshot maybe more where that followed oh just oh, getting that no. c4 down in the nick of time as well d7 she's doing the job and this is all fallen apart from the netherlands totally locked out of the site just two hp remaining and gina is dealt with portugal a fantastic pistol right there looked all over and well, kind of showing us why we're on the third map, right? All of these female division games that we've seen so far have been, well, mostly 16 to 1s. Really uh, one-sided CS. This, not so much. Three maps, a Netherlands pistol. Yeah, it's been a trade of uh, each other's map picks as well. So Netherlands taking Portugal's pick of Vertigo, and then Portugal taking Netherlands' pick of Overpass. We end, our, we end ourselves on this map, which is Mirage. Going to be a quick execute towards A. Seems like Portugal going to hold things, or after Netherlands holding things down. And now Gina, well, looking to hold this, this down here for the Netherlands. Oh, Minchinx has even gotten that one, but yeah, that was short-lived success. Portugal do a good job there. They're able to take the round. Yeah, 2-0 start. That pistol round gives you some much needed momentum carried into the rest of this half. But this is the first exciting one where we see both teams with rifles. Portugal will have the m 1 ss in hand. No AWP presence on the server just yet. Yeah, you won't see it early on for the CTs. At least the rifles are on board, and at least Netherlands aren't with the best of weapons. They still have some Galils on board, so that op not really needing to be utilized. These A1Ss are strong as it is right now, but it's going to be fast towards A site. Mirage, just basic execute fundamentals is what we're expecting. Lel player taking Gina down to the grave, and on a 4-on-4 four four situation, that's what we have right now. Flash in the CT side, and the rest are starting to waltz their way on in. Yeah, we've seen Lel player um, play some really good CS over the last couple of days. Most of the female games that we've casted have actually been um, Netherlands matches. I feel like our observer has gone to sleep. A lot of sleeping going on in this. Oh, wake him up. <laughs> seeing a lot of action. Let's try and... Okay, he's back, he's back. Naomi does get that kill now in a 2 on 2. HP though, really, really low. I know. Mainshing is able to get the first at D7 training back now. A one on one situation. Naomi onto this might take out the knife. No, she goes in for the defusal straight away. And D7 holds it down. A very close round. Now, round of fine margins indeed as Portugal. Three on the board, and they've had a, a brilliant start so far. Yeah, this is what we were talking about. <laughs> I wonder who it is. <laughs> Switching it. Um, yeah, no, no. 3 0. That was the first rifle round, though, so a really important round to win, and, well, 3-0 for this T side, and just keeping the momentum going from that um, pistol round success. We've seen a couple of really close ones, but back to the pistols once again, and we won't see all too much action, I wouldn't say, in this particular round. The dual bread is making it spicy in the ramp, but I feel like this round was over before it started as these AK-47s can effectively and efficiently close this one off. Hopefully only losing one member. Yeah, there it is. He's seven making sure that's the case. She's 11 and zero right now. Technical is pause. Is true? On. Yeah, it is. She got that. an ace in the pistol. She got an ace in the pistol. 
Okay, so uh, we're going to have a bit of a quick technical break. Uh, when we're back, we'll continue this map. Uh, hopefully, it shouldn't take too long. Well, we are back into the action here with a fifth round tiddler. Short technical pause. We've not been short on those today. I feel like that was my favorite technical pause of the day, though. Yeah, because it was the shortest. And we're reaching the end here. You know, a lot of people looking to get that one little bit of Counter-Strike action into their day before we enter a lot more other things. You know, there's lots of sporting offense as well on. So, yeah, so uh, people will probably want to see this game uh, but just a uh, default it seems i've seen a few gaps in the defaults to some teams this time around it's the ramp side uh, i don't know why you know, like why do you have that underpass player along with two mid players i assuming from this position that it is going to be a mid take rather than an execute onto the b bomb site because there is a little bit of a gap that could be exploited but as long as netherlands doesn't exploit it then it's all right it kind of puts them in a bit of trouble, but I don't think you can bank off of that multiple rounds in a row here. But it, it seems like it's still going towards the B side of things. Not much happening in the first 45 seconds of play. AK-47 scavenging across mid to try and create a diversion. But one of these M4s has slipped inside the apartments to rail away the first kill. And that goes untraded. Aggressive, assertive smoke place. And there's another one where that came from. I love the risk. And it's well taken. It's Portugal. They're forced back. Yeah, they are indeed. Five on three situation here. 25 seconds is on the clock and they'll start to run on in. That up the holding Zana. That's a perfect peek out from her. But Kiara can trade on in. That up or even going for the no scope. No scope. Oh, valiant effort though. She did get two kills there and those were kills that kind of kept them afloat in that round. But time was just the enemy. Netherlands were already set in their positions and they couldn't get anywhere near the site there. So Portugal stopped in their tracks in that round. Sometimes the no scope is the best option. That time, probably not. It's a little bit far away. One to four, regardless. The Netherlands, they're on the board here on the CT side. Um, good aggressive stance into the apartments. That that was the key takeaway there. Able to grab multiple smokes, able to place them down, really just halt Portugal's efforts. We could see on the minimap that that's exactly what they were trying to do. This time it's a low player. With an opening kill. Oh, and they're going to bombard A off the back of this. Delhi, great kill. C4, yes, it's isolated, but the AWP is able to stop any threat from the ticket booth. Naomi, in short, or rather in cat, or in uh, jungle, excuse me, I guess that headshot. I was going to talk about this uh, short upper, but does get immediately taken down. That nade is. 
going to take her down as well. It didn't look like it was going to take her down, but the HP was just so low. And Portugal back to winning ways, you know. Netherlands, it feels like that one round that they won was really based off of time. Portugal just sort of said that let's just do things a little bit faster not put ourselves under time pressure that's francis type you know that slow counter strike and it just went back to their normal ways and they won out the round yeah good good round all in all i want to see naomi step up though she's probably been one of the better players in this entire tournament we saw her just absolutely bamboozling multiple teams over the last couple of days we've been watching a lot of this netherlands roster Let's see if they can get fired up anytime soon here on this CT side of Mirage, though. No mid-presence, only the single weapon on short. And low player decides to leave it alone for the time being. As A is certainly going to be the approach. Great flashbang in. And the MP9 only finds one off the back of it. Traded effectively, quickly. And they're already in. They are. And the smokes, though, as well. Just blocks them off. D7 gonna push forward. It's gonna be an easy kill for her. Naomi getting one back and highlighting her earlier on. She could be a player to get this clutch going. But they both oh, they're both on the side and main chain's just getting that trade on through. Just the numbers too heavy for her to try and take down. Very controlled, a bit too difficult. The Netherlands find themselves back into play, getting around on the board, trading rounds here for the past three. But uh, yeah, that was a well-played round out from the Netherlands, kind of just putting themselves in a... It was kind of just a lot of trades back and forth, but Netherlands kind of were just advantageous in their positions, and Portugal just couldn't handle it. D7 were just left in a clutch, and like I said, you know, two players against them, peaking the same angle. You, you need quite, you know, grin and heroics to be able to recover it. Back and forth affair in the first couple then. Portugal... Onto pistols for the first time on this T side. I'll take the approach down towards the underpass. There is an M4 waiting, and this Deagle, oh, not ready for the engagement. Kiora won and backs off through the safety of the connector with Naomi to hold from short. They've got a complete pincer on the middle of the map, only losing one in the process. Yeah, well played to just clean things up. And make sure that Portugal aren't able to do a lot of damage. So, it's a good job there. Missy going to wield that big green. wonder what the buy will be for Portugal. Of course, they can't afford an AWP, but will they prioritize the utility? Or will they prioritize the firepower? It seems like they will prioritize the latter of the two, the firepower. Uh, three of these players only in with a single piece of utility. They were using a lot of utility on the map of Vertigo, but... Uh, will they use it? Will they need to use it here in Mirage where things are a little bit more aim heavy? I feel like with the way Netherlands are playing so far, they might need it. They're going to need something. Last couple of rounds have been dodgy at best. Five rifles, though. A spread default, maybe a slower approach here in round number eight. Missy's got this AWP really up close and personal. Um, not finding anything, not even information inside the palace. A lack of presence, though, alerts her to the fact that this is probably not going to be an immediate A take. Yeah, I think their course of action here is to probably probe that B site just in case if anything comes their way, but they'll take a mid play so that they can enter up connector but this hasn't worked out all well for them this is how netherlands actually got their first round on the board it was the same exact play it was xana's op though that kept them afloat in it but this time around they have a little bit more time on the clock and missy holds it down that lineup does so much damage so difficult to recover from this naomi just holds it from the short side it's d7 tapping away gets a first and a second now oh, a two on one situation once more for her they are pretty separated if she can push up and isolate these gunfights maybe she can find something with the time on the clock and her having to get the bomb in the connector side and there's a player wrapping around in ct i don't know how on earth she's able to play things it's basically a natural crossfire that's been established she falls as well 
She is 16 in five. <laughs> like, I, I'm certainly believing in her in, in that sort of scenario, feeling like she's got all of the confidence to make a clutch like that, despite the lack of time in HP and no information as to where any of her opponents are playing from. You, you almost still believe in her in that scenario. Four to five, though, uh, if she slows down, do Portugal just fall off completely? That That's kind of the question here. Uh, who's going to step up in the void uh, if like 16 kills like that means that she's basically taken like the majority of these rounds single-handedly who is going to fill that gap that is a very good question actually it's because that she's been so strong for nine rounds at this point that i don't i don't think we've kind of touched on that question just yet that's just been the reason why Dali is going to push forward. Yeah, she's not going to live. She's not going to live. Kiara is just holding the angle. She's good for a second. That PT50 not doing anything. They only support you taking out the USP. Now D7 again all alone. And through the smoke, decimating them. Reminding me of Dust 2 where you drop a smoke in the B tunnels and then just spray through. Portugal is going to have to call a timeout upon this because Netherlands, they've found the groove here on this map. Slowing things down. Caught in the eco cycle. Another investment comes through here, though, and we'll see the AWP whipped out once again. A couple of AK 47s. That'll be the purchase around it, and plenty of utility as well. So, Portugal have multiple options at their arsenal. Can go towards either bomb site. Naomi seems to always find herself at the top of the scoreboard on this Netherlands team. Every single map that we've seen, she's just been lights out, fragging. Even when Portugal are 5-0 up there, just clawing the way back into the game. And it's not always flashy kills either and massive clutches. She's definitely capable of that, but just consistently grinding away her opponents every single round. Missy this time. Finds it with the AWP. That was stuck inside a window. Needs to reposition as that previous angle of engagement fully smoked away. And Netherlands once more with the advantage. A lead towards A now. Zana does grab a kill. Naomi again. She's been stellar. Again, another trade as Lel player getting activated on that mid side. Maybe Netherlands do get a little bit distracted, get, get a little bit fixated on this mid angle. And kind of just allow Portugal to enter back into that A side. And Lel players going huge here. Our second in the round. Arguably uh, an important frag here that could change the tides of this. They had advantage in Netherlands and it's been dwindled, dwindled away to a 2 on 3 for them. And D7 oh. continuing on. She's so good wow. right now. Oh, another shot. She hasn't let off the gas right now. And Portugal, they come back into the lead with such a good play. Individual they come barreling back. Yeah. Man, that's such a ferocious round. Not just Lel player being the pincer over towards mid, but two startling shots. And look at this one. This will be quick. That's Dang. some slow motion, ladies and gentlemen. Six to five. Portugal just claiming a lead here on this T side. And it's really been off the back of a five rifle setup. We haven't really seen much ore presence here on the T side. Netherlands have tried to put it into commission, but with very limited success. Missy only three kills here. Yeah. See this default again from Portugal that they had last time. Seems like they'll check ramp momentarily. I think they know that Netherlands aren't going to take ramps, so that's why they have made the decision to leave it quite open. But this is a better default. Another variation that we see is a player in the underpass. Flash in, and you don't want to be challenging T7 at all. She'll take your head. She'll do so to Gina. Now, the three players in the mid side, will they be able to expect this? No, it doesn't seem so. Lel player, Naomi's only good for one, but Lel player's been so good in the mid side. She's been integral so far, but look at his trigger discipline. That silencer as well makes it so hard to locate as well. But they've seen it. Now they know D7 up against this. Oh, that's so clean from her. Missy now in a one on two. Lel player holds it down, and it's the dynamic duo of Lel player and D7 once more. And Portugal continue on. They're not letting Netherlands take the lead. 
And it's all down to just D7 and Lelper just stepping up absolutely big time for the Portuguese squad. Yeah, I asked the question in D7's absence, who was going to step up? Well, D7 didn't go missing at all, and Lel player joined the party at the top of the scoreboard. 32 kills between these two members, and that's just in the first 12 rounds of play here. They forced out another eco here for the Netherlands side. They'll likely have eight rounds, and D7's just going to funnel them backwards with that Molotov actually fall back entirely off of this one nevertheless she finds a headshot b is open in the meantime and this round is all but done lovely molotovs as well to just force the netherlands exactly where portugal want them to be it's been a really good tea side really refreshing it has been i'm drawing parallels with d7 and broland from a few days ago just dropping so many kills on the server right now. And kind of she can go wherever she wants and she'll get kills. It kind of reminds me of that. That's why D7 looks for some more. You can see here she's just already rearing, ready to take that kill. As, uh, now they've already ensured a lead at the end of the half. A good T-side foundation by Portugal, honestly. And, you know, this is not even the end of it just yet. They still have two rounds to play for. Yeah, or to play for. This could be a, a catastrophic half for the Netherlands. Or they could take it back to eight to seven, and we could see a really close map kind of strike here in, of, in our third and final of this series. Orps on both teams here coming into the closing rounds of this first half. Missy's going to put hers to good use. Two closing kills. Gina's going to double it down as well. In the Netherlands, they're not going to lie down in this one. They're not. And then. They've recovered this one. That could set themselves up for success in the final round of the half. As Missy secures it in the end. All five players staying alive. So no problem for them going into this final round. We'll see the buyout here from Portugal. D7 with plenty of cash from all her kills. But the rest of the squad kind of struggling. Yeah, that, that, that's kind of been the case, right? Um, as soon as D7 and Lel player aren't able to find the frags, like was the case in the previous round, uh, nobody's been able to fill that void. It's it's almost like a two versus five here in the server right now. Everybody else just playing very supportive, sidelining roles. Back to the A site for the 15th round here for Portugal. Difference between a 9-6 and an 8-7 is just astronomical. We often talk about the differences between... Uh, these different score lines smoked off towards the ramp but how quick is gina get the gonna get this information here that that's the key question that i'm looking towards missy another opening kill with the awp that's been a real changing moment here in the first half as soon as she's got this orp out it's fired through for success molotovs everywhere and missy looking to double dip with the deagle but she's losing players all around Molotov's doing damage in the meantime. Still in towards ramp though. That bomb is still there. So, seems like the position of D7 is really weird. She's kind of alone on an island right now. She looks towards this section. I think they're waiting for Netherlands to kind of over peak and kind of just be a little bit too eager for the information. And I feel like the right call for them is just to stay put. But you never just know because D7 can activate whenever. That's the problem. And time is starting to tick away. So they'll have to make a move now or never. Maybe they're waiting for a rotate back to the B bomb site, but that's not gonna be not that's not gonna be the case. It's gonna be Missy holding it down. That's the bomb Ooh. dropped right into the hands here of D7 though, so not too bad. But there's no players in towards CT, so this bomb going down will be safe. But they're not they're not sure of that. So they're gonna have to tap. Missy take it down. Lel player holding it in the end. <laughs> she gets to Portugal taking it. Nine to six score at the end of the half. A pretty good T-side out for Portugal. Netherlands might be a bit scared. I mean, 37 kills from those top two players there. Missy trying her best in these last couple of rounds with the AWP. Even switching to the AK-47 for a third, but not good enough. It's going to be Portugal with the lead. Not too commanding, but the pistol round could change that. If they're able to win this particular round, it would be a massive app for them. In the context of this tournament, third mapper always feels that the stakes are higher, like people make more mistakes. But with 
D7 just not slowing down. 23 kills in one half is pretty outrageous. Yep, and these dualies, as per usual, trying to ring through, but not ringing true in this round. Trying to push forward. Mayshine's just trying to stop them from pushing out. She's even in the market window. They don't seem to know this, and this might be uh, very surprising for the CTs. But through the smoke, Kiara gets that kill. This B-side has been uh, pretty good for the pistol rounds here on Mirage. And Mayshine through the smoke again. D7 getting that frag back, but up against four more. I don't think she's going to be able to get out of there, and she won't indeed. Netherlands, come and start with a bang as they take the pistol round. We've talked about this plenty of times, the difference between six and nine cent to fives, and that pistol round could be uh, what it takes here, and basically just tying up the scoreline, essentially, because the buys from the next two rounds probably aren't going to be the greatest from Portugal. We've got to remember that the Netherlands have some heavy hitters as well. Like we've talked about Naomi and Kiora uh, so many times throughout this tournament, but if they step up to another level, then I don't know if anybody in the server can really uh, take that away from them. We have seen quite a lot of missed flashes, <laughs> missed smokes. We should get a compilation of all of the missed smokes throughout this tournament. That would be a, a good little highlight reel. Rely on. They're walking into a stack. Oh, and T7 actually just holding fire. Oh, they're not going to check. Could have been even more dangerous. Final pistol or fall. Netherlands, they are going to survive the stack scare. Up to eight. Up to eight. Indeed, only a single round separating them. Pretty good stuff. Out from the Netherlands, of course, now the guns are out for Portugal as they took that eco, that low bite. No op in the picture just yet, but uh, as per usual, Portugal don't really need it uh, as of now, especially when they're up against the MAC-10s. Probably better to have that op out of the picture so that it doesn't run them down and target them. Uh, but Molotovs early on to take early control. You know, Netherlands have been blocked access even to the ramp opening. So that makes them a little bit more paranoid, but it's not going to stop them from pushing on. Nation's already pushed up in mid. Trying to find her way on forward, but it doesn't seem like Portugal gonna really show much face here in this round. Lel player is gonna be the first on the engagement as well. Actually tosses a perfect flashbang. Lucky that Kiora doesn't get blinded by it and is able to respond and turn around. They're gonna walk all the way past Zanath and actually turn around in the meantime. Gina presses forward with the aggression and that was a little too far. She was on 23 HP. Really hard to take that aggressive angle, but another flashbang takes another one out of commission and Naomi doubles down on the pressure. Bomb barely had to go down as all of the damage was dealt early 9-9 nine, nine netherlands that's a massive round for them that is massive as well because portugal did decide to take that eco so the guns were out as soon as possible and now they're back in the eco cycle this should be another round here for the netherlands finding double digits finding that lead and now could be on their way using that momentum to propel themselves forward to taking this victory but it's still early in the second half and portugal definitely have something to say With the Mac 10. Should be an easy one. It feels like we've been talking about Portugal uh, basically this entire map, right? Like they've been controlling the aggression. They've been they, they've got these sort of two stars on their team who have had a pretty light lights out half. Uh but but the Netherlands, they've been chipping away in the meantime. Up to double digits. They've actually taken a lead in this map. And as a unit, as a five, they've been the better team, like, like I've got to say. Uh, especially on this T side, it's looked really cohesive. Um, back to back, just like running over this A bomb site. And Portugal, whether it's with rifles or with pistols, haven't really seemed to stand a chance in this, in this specific half. It's going to be 10 on the board for Team Netherlands. Yeah, pretty uh, easy run out from them, as we said. That's just an eco that they're up against. Sana now, whipping out that op. This is going to be, I would say, the first real, real challenge out from Netherlands because this time around, both of them have full weapons on board, even dropping away the Mac 10 that has been saved over. So 
Both teams are on a level playing field. We'll see what they're going to be able to bring to the table into this round. It's going to be a very interesting one indeed. Smokes into window. Nades on into the ramp side. Aggressing forward and... Nothing much more to say here. There's just going to be a sort of pincer in the mid side. Maybe looking to catch off any aggressive maneuvers out from Portugal in mid, but... As per usual, they're really not showing anything here. It's really just D7 and short and Xana holding a crossfire in, conne in connector. So, so that both these positions are completely on lockdown. But Netherlands have been able to dismantle it. And uh, well, Naomi already tagged up by that AWP. Just got to be careful now. Accelerating into B. It's Kiora to open up with the first kill and Missy's gonna finish it off with the second as well. I say finish it off because that is the B defense dismantled. C4 can go down and the Netherlands are showing no signs of slowing down. They've just been absolutely ruthless. Every single time they've got a tactic, uh, they've basically just executed it flawlessly. They haven't slowed down in the slightest. Every single player um, playing a real key part of the system that they've got in place. And Portugal just haven't been able to slow them down for a second. Ruthlessly hunting for these rifles now. There is an AWP in play. And that location will be revealed upon the firing of one shot from Palace. Naomi has it l hunkered down, expecting a repeat. And given the angle of Xanath, that could absolutely happen here. So this patience could pay off. Just depends if... Oh, she gets greedy. Lucky timing. Naomi would have had a number at any other moment. Gina does take one kill, but trading one for three in the uh, late round engagement might not be um, too worth it for Portugal. Maybe they should have um, played more pass positions there. Remembering yeah. that the money is just not going to be the issue for, for the Netherlands uh, for quite some time. They've been winning. Back to the pause for Portugal to discuss this matter. They've fallen short completely. This is five rounds on the spin and pretty fast as well out from the Netherlands. This is not like slow played rounds. They've kind of just did their mid take, head to wherever they wanted to go and they've won out rounds here. So they've really taken a storm on the T side. It feels like a lot of the women's division today it, it most of it has been the T sides rather than the C T sides. We've been seeing really good, you know, T sides rather than C T sides. Really interesting to see because usually we don't see that. Not at all. Five way from victory here are Team Netherlands, and Missy has really sort of like added her her name to the to the ring here. Um, very quiet player at the start of Mirage, but really stepping up with a lot of openings as of having that uh, T-sided AWP. And you're always talking about Naomi when you're talking about Team Netherlands. Um, just easily the most impactful player on this team over the last two days. Does get taken out of commission, so the, the better two players on the server are gone in the first 30 seconds. Very quiet. Portugal playing a lot of attention to mid because that's what Netherlands have been doing most often. But they've doubled back down in ramp. Execute smokes out. Portugal are in for a treat here. Dali. They want S just to put the cap on that smoke. Is able well to exploit that pretty nicely. Messi go with that AWP again. Do some work, but Ashinki in off round in general. Hayden now picking up an A1S. 3 on 2, an advantage for Netherlands once more. As they've gotten the bomb down, and Missy looking to peek through with that AWP, but nothing much more is happening. They're playing so quietly right now. They haven't made a choice. They haven't made a move just yet. But here it comes out from Portugal. It'll be very difficult to recover if they lose this round, and I think they realize that Missy has taken Lel player. It's turned around, and Kiara is there to surprise her as she turns back once more. That's the round done. Netherlands take the round. So now they've made a lot more breathing room, 12 to 9, and it's only going to increase here with the money on Portugal not looking great at all. When you don't find an opening in these retakes, it can be 
really difficult to unseat these T's out of there. Really deep positions. You just see the AWP doing damage again as well. Missy being a constant threat inside of the ramp, not even having to engage onto the mainland of that bomb site. Looking at a 13 to 9 scoreline, very likely here as these AK 47s are tearing Ooh. through again. Gina with two. Both lovely, fast headshots. She sprung her step right out of the ramp. There's much more where that came from, I can promise you that. She's going to plant the bomb. Yeah. And there goes Gina and Kiara getting those two kills and Hayda now. Again, like I said, the pistols from Portugal have to be whipped out in this one. 13 is looming over on the board. And if they lose the next round, that will just be curtains. Because right now it's 13 for Netherlands. Another one. Breaking that economy once more. And then it's 15 before you know it. We've seen this so often. We saw it in the last series. The Israel versus uh, uh, Serbia game. We might just see it once more. She's not going to be even able to save anything at all. Albeit not much. But yeah, there it is. 13 to 9. Netherlands encroaching upon the 16 that they need. Uh, to advance forward here in this qualifier. We've got to throw into consideration that Portugal were 5-0 ahead at the start of yeah. this game. Uh, since then, they just haven't really had any momentum at all. And that's uh, despite D7 in La Player um, having continued form. Um, they, they've gone quiet in the last four or five rounds, not having nearly the same impact. That was the question that I asked at halftime. Nobody has been able to fill that void. The Netherlands slow it down for what they know is a rifle round. This is an important one because it might mean the entire best of three. Rationale from Portugal trying to bring a new piece of life here, but <laughs> she's pushed on forward and she just reloaded literally right in front of them. It was only a matter of time before they peeked through. No one even to help out her as well, but Dolly in this position. Does take down Lane Shinks and well, there's more kills out from the CTs. This is better. This is better out from Portugal. Crossfire is established. It's too difficult for Netherlands to find anything in that case. And they finally find their first round in the second half. It's been a real long while. It certainly has. The CT side hasn't had any glimmers of hope. Netherlands will respond back with a buy though. It's four AK 47s. Missy always with that AWP. How are they going to respond? Remember that Portugal are constantly at breaking point in this series. They they basically need to chain rounds together here and essentially finish off this map with five in a row, four, five, six in a row. Otherwise, this could, could fall apart basically instantaneously. And the double AWP is the, the change that they're relying on to do so. Ada, oh, Molotov, really risky to advance forward. That was a fast flick, though to eliminate another before we go into a potential retake scenario as both orps are finding success it's all across the map and i don't think that main's going to be able to do all too much with three hp against four players on this one the homing missile tracks her down it's portugal with another one but that orp both of them in fact just finding unbelievable success everywhere oh it was a very dicey round it was Trying to shift hands plenty of times, but Portugal is able to pull it through. And uh, yeah, we're going to have a buy into this round again. No problem. Two Mac 10s though for Netherlands. Might be on the verge of breaking here and, and uh, Portugal could have a chance here to recover. Flashes over smokes as well. Looking to stop. There's only one player into the B side. This is the right call completely from the Netherlands. And Mac 10 though looking for one. They might have called this clear though. Now spotting one in the market side. Ada activating for oh. two and a third. Found the nade. Finding one back in Missy. AK-47 to do the damage and find the kill. And that Molotov denies that bomb. It's so difficult. Manchings and Ma with the Mac 10 just holding this one. But this could be a long range angle and up against the up. I wouldn't favor against it. Nobody responding from Portugal. They're going to go slowly into this site. And the AWP actually makes the mistake first. It's the MAC-10 to close things out. That is absolutely unreasonable. <laughs> oh my god. I cannot believe that. I said as well right before you heard me. Just, you wouldn't favor against it. I don't think anyone really would have. Especially with that being such a common position. They had the advantage. Not a single trade coming through. It's the MAC-10. And that could be just... The final straw for Portugal. 
lose this and they lose the entire series, they lose their chances of qualifying to the LAN, Netherlands will be really happy with that. And on the other end of the spectrum, Portugal will be seething. Yeah, they've got to be screeching. 14 to 11, and that's just one of the more outrageous clutches that we've seen all day. Essentially a one versus three in that scenario. Teammate stranded. And she's able to do it all on her own with the Mac 10. Taking point, as you mentioned, and mid to B. That's the approach. There's only one defender. Everybody else has been isolated. Dali burns alive. And D7, who was the heavy hitter earlier, cannot hold B again. It all crumbles. It will be map point, Netherlands. And they've got four opportunities to close out this series. An immediate save. They know exactly what the circumstances are for Portugal. They know exactly that losing this basically means their death. It's even going to be a struggle, even being able to save this. It really doesn't look great at all. And she doesn't even get to hit that op shot as well, so they know her position. It's going to be even more difficult to try and save things. You have a player in jungle. Oh, that's a beautiful flick, and Ada gets that kill as well. But what could she do from here? She's on low HP as well, and that's that op out of the picture. Ada now trying her damnedest to save. But I don't even know if she's going to be able to as well. There's two players here. First found and she's trying her hardest. Oh, she'll be able to get away. Yeah, that's at least one rifle. Going for the AWP would have been the next level of risk there. Uh, but let's do a money check. And it's not good whatsoever for Portugal. They'll do one of their own over the next 30 seconds in the shape of this tactical timeout. Dropping that M4A1S to replace it with another. Ada, the only person who can realistically afford to buy a full rifle. We'll see a couple of them here all across the server. Four chances to finish. Oh, four chances to close out the series. Advance forward to the semi-finals. This uh, women's division has been very interesting over the past two days. This has been really one of the better started. maps that we've seen in the female division as well. It right? has been, yeah, because we have just been seeing a lot of 16 ones. Uh, this is where, you know, the top teams really get to, you know, see each other because we do see, uh, I feel like on the upper echelons of this tournament, we do see the teams being more at a level sort of playing field. So that's why we're wow. seeing a lot closer of a series this time around because they've kind of filtered out the teams that were losing 16-1. But here we are, round number 27. Could be the final round here for Portugal here in the IESF. So you see Europe regional qualifiers for the women's series. This is the A division for Europe. And Main Shinx has gotten that first kill. There's a player right behind. Naomi has gotten that one as well. But Sana trying to hold it down. The advantage stays. It's now a one on three. What a fast round this has been. It's only taken wow. 30 seconds, Squid. This one's over. Lal player, they actually had the stack in place, but it's not enough if you don't hit your shots. Stuck behind the ticket booth, a one versus three to keep this series going. And they've got all of the information. Missy's just absolutely guaranteed and confirmed that. So the flashes go overhead. And this bomb can go to either bomb site realistically, as they've got a locked in place. Missy's going to take another swing out. And finishes off the map with a nice little orb shot there. The Netherlands take this series. And what a, a, a convincing third map as well, I've got to say. Portugal take a, a fast start. They go 5-0. Uh, nevertheless, it's uh, the Netherlands, which is actually more difficult to say than you'd imagine, uh, taking this best of three. Yeah, considering that they did trade map picks at one point, you know, I thought that Netherlands were actually going to take things 2-0 to zero because they won the first map, Vertigo, which was Portugal's map pick, and they move on to Overpass, which Netherlands have seemingly, seemingly been really good on. So I thought they were able to take it, but it seems like Portugal took it like 16-11, to 11, I believe. And that third map, it was a good start off for Portugal, but they were completely missing from there on out, yeah. even though D7 was still shining. Yeah, we talked about D7 and Lal player, like when they went missing uh, later on in the half, who would actually be able to step up on uh, that Portuguese side. Um, and, and nobody was was necessarily the answer. And when you are playing against um, a really strong, sturdy team like Team Netherlands, uh, it, it can be really difficult to fire on all cylinders. It's not as easy as just load into the server and get 25 frags every single game. Um, 
that, um, l let's do a little wrap up of our day, right? Um, so we saw four uh, matches, obviously those two female uh, division matches earlier. We didn't really get much of an opportunity to talk about that Israel matchup though. So for anybody who has been uh, tuned in for the last couple of hours, um, what what were your key takeaways of that uh, of that Israel matchup earlier? Israel again, I just have to say it again. The firepower just. Uh... They're up against the tactics. It was really close, but the tactics ultimately won it out because also towards the end, it wasn't only the tactics that were shining through from Serbia, it was also the firepower. We saw Troy getting activated, getting the Deagle kills and, and whatnot. It was pretty nice out from him. There's nothing much more to say because I feel like at the end of the day, it was kind of just a, a bit of a battle. They were kind of on a level playing field. You had Israel who were individually brilliant and you had Serbia, who was recently on a bit of a downfall in their current, you know, state of events in I Nation as a team. So that's all I can take away from that game. We only got to see, you know, we, we got to see most of the series, but yeah, it was really good out from both teams. I feel like both teams could have easily taken it. Yeah, absolutely the case. Uh, four games done, and we have no more to be played today. But see us right here, same time, same place tomorrow with more Counter-Strike action. One purpose. One dream. One rhythm. One step closer to glory. Enemy spotted. They say history remembers the winner. So who will be the ones writing the future? The halls of power call for their kings. The ones who won't back down. who believed. The ones who knew that over 100 nations can't be wrong. Join the fight between August 24th and September 3rd as Yash becomes the world's esports capital. In the heart of Yash, Romania, the world's top gamers have gathered for the ultimate showdown. ISF brings heart-stopping matches across a variety of gaming genres in an electrifying experience that celebrates the passion and dedication of esports athletes from around the globe. This is more than just a tournament. This is where champions are born, legends are made, and anything is possible. Get ready to witness the ultimate display of skill, strategy, and heart. The IESF World Esports Championship. It's about to take your breath away. Do you think you've got what it takes? The challenge will be tougher than ever. In 2023, International Esports has a new home. Over 100 nations fighting for the championship in a celebration of everything that makes esports great. Who will rise up to the challenge? Who will be the world champion?